better be a gun in your pocket. I beg your forgiveness, Don Gambini. But as I was saying, Godfather, my Uncle Cheech is a good man. Always been a good earner for you, and if you could only show him some mercy. Jimmy, you come to me on a good day. I received news today that my beautiful daughter Tina is to wed. On this day, I am a happy man, filled with much love. Does this mean you'll give my Uncle Cheech another chance? Nah, that ship has sailed. But what it means is that you may bring your family to the wedding. Especially that daughter of yours, that Teresa. What a piece of ass! So like I said, sometimes I can't help but wonder if it all ain't my own damn fault. Cause that's why we wound up in witness protection here in Vagina- Rejoiner? Saskatchewan. But if you think I'm gonna beat myself up over it, forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. I'm just 15. Why do I have to learn to drive now? Because driving is what men do. My father taught me how to drive a getaway car. His father taught him how to drive a getaway car, and his father was run over by a getaway car. Is this supposed to convince me? Petey, there's nothing better in the world than driving. Well, drinking. Drinking and driving. But not together. You don't drink and drive, you stupids! You know, I wasn't gonna bring this up, but since you're into this whole bonding thing, my school's having a father-son recycle drive this Friday. Will you come with me? Listen, Petey, I'm pretty sure I have something on Friday. I just haven't made up what it is yet. Now come on, make like we're being chased by the cops! All right, all right, give me the keys. <laughs> keys. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do now is called fleeing the scene of a crime. Drive! 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 The nuclear-powered engine. Not my best idea. What do we do? This is a very delicate situation, son. Just follow my lead. Ow! Ow! My neck! My neck! Oh my god, Pop. That's Richard Wheaton, one of the richest men in the world. Really? In that case... My neck, my back, my knee! You're Richard Wheat, then. Yes, I'm afraid I am. Computer genius, inventor, world-renowned wildlife photographer? I'm also a licensed manicurist. Few people know that. I'm Petey McDougal. This is such an honor. I saw you compete at the Winter X Games. You were awesome. I guess. If we live in a world where silver medals are considered awesome... Where I come from, it's still third place. Uh... This is Jimmy, my parent and or guardian. Easy. I just been in a terrible wreck. You hit me. Okay, we'll call it even. Actually, I should thank you. I was about to go into production with that nuclear engine. Well, nice meeting you. Pop, the least you could do is give the man a ride. No, I can do less. I live just up the hill. Oh, all right, come on. This guy just takes and takes. Your cuticles look very healthy, Jimmy. You can just say the barn door is open, but thanks. Okay, over just a smidge. Little more. I want his thingy pointing to the front door. It's classy, but also informational. Okay, I need a word. Well, if it ain't my special agent McCool. <laughs> Look how handsome you look in your shiny red uniform all pressed and clean and, oh, have you been working out? Where do you get guns like these? <laughs> My gun was issued at headquarters. I know that's not what you meant, but I felt it prudent to change the subject. And I'm here to tell you that you cannot keep this statue on your lawn. Why not? This is some fancy shit. For one, a Canadian family would never possess such a thing, and its medium-sized genitalia is a neighborhood distraction. Medium? Hello? Oi, oh Boy, can you imagine having a jablon like that? And no freaking arms to get at it? I mean, come on, McCool, guy to guy. If you were him, 
and you couldn't give it a little tug now and then. You'd want to kill yourself. But you couldn't, because you got no arms. I'm leaving now, Uncle Cheech, and I shall trust you can understand why I won't shake your hand. Resident, resident, Bill, resident... Oh, yay! Victoria's Secret Catalog! Cookie, you cannot throw away your neighbor's mail. That is an indictable offense. Cheese and whiskers, this is someone's baby bonus check. What kind of check now? A baby bonus check, Gina. It's Canada's gift to the parents of all children. Go on, Chief. It was instituted after World War II to reduce financial stress on soldiers' families. Australia has the same baby bonus policy, but theirs is racist to ensure white control of the country, and so not really the same at all. And who's eligible for this baby bonus? All parents of children under seven. My mother got the baby bonus for me, and she always said, I don't need money for this child. I would pay to have a child this good. And we'd laugh, and she would hold me. And then we'd make pancakes and cry because Daddy loved box wine and pornography. But I say too much. For Canada! And the fact that we are not Australia! Most of the art is my own, of course. I paint what I feel and feel what I paint. So, you feel like a clown riding a blue wolf? Sometimes, Jimmy, sometimes. I see you enjoy tennis. No, those are snowshoes, one of my many passions. I once spent an entire winter lost in the forests of Manitoba, with nothing but those snowshoes and a People magazine. The magazine meant nothing, of course, but those shoes, those shoes saved my life. Science was your first love, though, right, Mr. Wheat, then? Same as me? Yes, Petey, same as you. Well, we should get going, Petey. We got that thing. What thing? You know, the thing, the old thingy thing thing. What are you talking about? I think if I'm reading your father correctly, he wants to leave because he is very, very bored. Yes, thank you. That thing. Come on, Pop, can't we just stay a little longer? I want to see the science lab. You do have a science lab, right? <laughs> Why, they'd take away my nerd card if I didn't. You have a nerd card? Oh, come on, Petey, I gotta get back. Maybe Mr. Wheaton could give me a ride home. Is that all right with you, Mr. Wheaton? Sure, if it's okay with your father. Let me think about this. Get out of my bedroom! There's something you don't say very often. Have you ever thought about being a mother? I've had some scares, why? How would you like to rip off the government and get something for nothing? Sounds like something I might be interested in. It's called the baby bonus. God, I'm not gonna have a baby. Have you seen what having a baby does to a female body? I mean, I love mom, but look at her. You don't have to have a baby. All you have to do is pretend to be my mother and we get a government check every two weeks. What do you mean pretend? Like, acting? Yeah. Like a movie star. I could do that. But I won't do nudity unless it's intrinsic to the character and tastefully done. So I'm thinking a 60-40 split. I get 65 because I came up with it. So uh, you good with 30? How'd it go with Petey's driving? The kid's hopeless. I gotta ask you something, Cook. Be honest. Is he mine? Jimmy, sometimes I'm not even sure he's mine. So where is he? I left him out at some jillionaire's house in the country. Petey ran him off the road, so we drove him to his mansion, and it had all kinds of stuff the kid liked. Are you out of your mind? You left a teenage boy with some strange man you know nothing about who has toys and gadgets to lure young boys to his compound? Well, when you put it like that, it sounds bad. Mom! Dad! I can drive! It's so easy! Watch! I hope you don't mind that I gave him a quick lesson. How the hell did you learn so fast? Well, why didn't you just tell me that the spark plug ignites the air-fuel mixture so that combustion can occur, and that the intake and exhaust valves open at just the right moment for the engine to fire? <laughs> Man, what else didn't you tell me? Uh, always check your mirrors? Let's drive some more, okay? Of course, son, I'd love to. Let me just get my... He's a better father than I am. 
He's also taller and richer than you are. I swear to God that just slipped. Great breakfast, Cookie. Sure is. They say breakfast is the most important meal of the morning. Mr. Wheaton says a man could survive on a grain of sand for two weeks if he had to. Yeah, if he doesn't mind love handles. Anyway, Ma, we gotta run. I'm taking Gina to the mall. Aw, that fills my heart. Two sisters spending the day together shopping. Since we moved here, I never get to see my sainted sister. That painted hoe. And I miss her so. Here she goes. Time for the waterworks. Boo-hoo-hoo. -hoo. You will not disrespect your grandmother that way. You're not my mother. You're my sister. Don't talk back to me, young lady. You know, Mr. Wheaton and his sister have a variety show in England. Jeez, Petey, can we talk about something else for a change? How's about football? Sure. Did you know Mr. Wheaton's great-grandfather invented football? Every time someone throws a pass, his family gets six dollars. You're killing me, Petey. On and on about this guy. It's not like the man can fly. Just invented it. It runs on beetle dung. I've got one for you, Petey. That's the gayest thing I ever seen in my life. And I watch Glee. OMG. It says here we could go to prison for committing fraud. That's fraud. And only if you get caught. I can't go to prison, Gina. Those guys would go crazy for me. It would be a woman's prison. I'm nuts. Even worse, I'd have to chop off my hair and buy a flannel. Take it easy. No one's going to jail because you are a great actress. Right, right, right. I forgot. Okay, let me get into character. Teresa McDougal. Here we go. Say it. Oh, for the love of God. Action! I am Teresa McDougal. This is my daughter, Gina. We are residents of Canada and have never collected the baby bonus because... I was working in the Peace Corporation, helping to feed the indigo people of Del Taco. I'm deaf as a stone, dear. I just assigned the numbers. Over there. Now you know why it says, do not write on this part of the form. Mama! <laughs> Jimmy, are you okay? It looks like there was a hit in here. There wasn't, was there? Nah, come on, Cook. What do you think I am, an animal? I only whack people in the garage. So what's going on? You only make sauce when you're upset. Ah, oh, Cookie, I'm like an open book to you. It's like you open a book and go, geez, there's Jimmy in a book. What is it, big man? Okay, it's just that Petey's hanging out with his new fancy friend and I feel like I've been replaced. You ain't been replaced, you big dope. Petey looks up to you. If you want your boy back, you take him back. Good news, Pop. I invited Mr. Wheaton to the father-son recycle drive. He said yes, so you're off the hook. Aren't you happy? No, I am not happy, Petey. You are my only son, and I will not allow you to go without me. But I already invited him. Then uninvite him. I can't. Then I will. It's time for me to stand up like a man. I will be your escort to the father-son dance. It's not a dance! Then why did I buy this corsage? <gasps> you comfortable? Can I get you anything? Hmm. There seems to be some confusion in your file. What's your name, sweetheart? Teresa McDougal. Where were you born? Don't mess with us, baby cakes. Your so-called daughter's being questioned in the other room, and she's singing like a canary. So I'll ask you one last time. Where were you born? Canada. All right, good enough. Let's go get your check. So you know for next time, you can do this online. Look, you seem like a nice guy, but Petey is my son, which makes me his father. Which means I'm the one who should take him to the father-son whatchamacallit. Look, I don't want to step on anyone's toes, but recycling is one of my pet projects. I invented the blue bin. Few people know that. Why don't we both take him? No son of mine is showing up with two daddies at something as important as a whatchamacallit. Well, I already told him yes. I can't say no now. You can if I tell you to. 
You will if I tell you to, and I'm telling you to. No, I don't think so, Jimmy. I don't think you know who you're dealing with. Since you brought it up, you do look kind of familiar. Okay. I didn't want to have to do this. Oh my god! You're Jimmy Falcone! All right, you could take the kid. I am not Jimmy Falcone. I don't even know who that is. Of course you are. Come here, I want to show you something. I've always been a mafia nut. I totally followed your trial. So I'm dying to know, when you whacked Sammy the Sparrow, did you really use a lead pipe? No, it was an axe handle. And I am not Jimmy Falcone. And was your Uncle Cheech really the wheel man on the Altamonte Foods heist? Nah, it was Nicky the Nail. It was supposed to be Cheech, but he was holed up in a hotel in Jersey with a school teacher he met. Funny story, really. I mean, I am not Jimmy Falcone! I can't believe I didn't recognize you right away. All right, fine, you got me. What do you want? I want us to be friends, Jimmy. Yeah, for f sake. What do you think would happen if we was made, Cheech? I thought we was made. No, I know we're made men. I mean, what if we was made by somebody here in Vagina? I don't care who done it, Jimmy. Just so long as we was made. I hope this is good, Jimmy. I was polishing my knob. Look how shiny it is. Now, what seems to be the problem? Listen, I'm just wondering, hypochondriacally speaking, what would happen if we was made? What are you talking about? You see what I mean? It's hard to follow. I'm just wondering what you feds would do if somebody recognized us. Would you, I don't know, waste him so that the person that was made wouldn't have to do it himself? No, nothing would happen to the person who recognized you, but we would immediately move you and your family north. I thought this was north. There's a more north? So north you'll sh your pants just for the heat. But why do you ask? Have you been spotted? No, not at all. Uh, the thing is, there's this father-son dance coming up at the high school, and I'm wondering if you wanted to take Petey. Why, Jimmy? So you can stay home and watch porn and drink cheap wine? Well, I won't be part of it. For Canada, where poop is your friend and also your blanket. We did it! We totally burned Johnny Canuck! Oh, I, I feel kind of bad now that I know his name. This is gonna buy a lot of candy. All right, but only one piece a night and you must brush immediately after. Will you knock it off? What? I'm still in character. We're home now. You're not my mother. You never had a baby. I knew this day would come. Gina, it's natural to be curious about where babies come from. Who said I'm curious? When a man and a woman love each other, they have a lot of intercourse. A lot. Hey, I am not hearing where babies come from from you. I don't want to get too technical because I'm not a doctor. But when a man's peeper gets hard... Goodbye! You get back here, young lady. I am still pretending to be your mother. And if that's not enough, may I remind you, it's my name on the check. Nothing is worth this. You can have it all. And scene. Petey, I thought it over, and you can go to the father-son whatchamacallit with wheat then. Seriously, Pop? Oh man, you're the best! I do what I can, son. Wait then, it's me, Jimmy. I think you are right about us being friends. What do you say we go snowshoeing? Out in a tundra, where no one can see us or hear us for miles. So after the Campanelli boys got through with them, we had to start calling them Johnny Two Legs. <laughs> Amazing. Tell me another one. All right, here's one. A few years back, we was robbing a safe of Frankie, three to the right, eight to the left, seven to the right. Nobody could figure out the combination. So we blew it up! Wow, this is awesome. <laughs> you know, I'm starting to wonder if I know too much. I know your name, the crimes you've committed, where you're in hiding. If this were a movie, you'd have to whack me! Yeah, if this was a movie. Oh, crap. Oh, please, no! But you gotta understand, I so don't want to do this. I never had me a fan before. Please, Jimmy. I won't tell anyone, I promise. I don't want to die. I have a family. Well, I don't, but I'm cloning one in the lab. 
Don't do it, Pop. He's my only friend in Canada. He's my only friend anywhere. You gotta do it, Jimmy. He made you. And by that, I mean he recognized you. Want me to do it, Pop? Get your ass home and clean this kitchen, you son of a bitch. Daddy! Please, Pop, let him go. I'll never ask you for anything again. Just do this for me, your firstborn male, please. Sincerely yours, Petey. All right, Wheat Thin. You caught yourself a break. Let's head back. Thank you, thank you. And I meant it when I said I'll never tell anyone. Jimmy, I have homes all over the world. Paris, Beijing, Rome. I hang out with world leaders and movie stars. I don't want them to know I live in Regina. You know, my family invented ice fishing. Saskatchewan, la 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 how you doing? I'm Cookie McDougal. I used to be Cookie Falcone, wife of Mafia Big Shot, Jimmy Falcone. We was living the good life back then, but I didn't know what was going on. And I didn't want to know, because I knew what was going on. Anyway, Jimmy's Uncle Cheech was giving away mob secrets, so it was only a matter of time before he was six feet under. And I've never been one to wait till the last minute. <laughs> he was such a good man. <laughs> I'm going to miss him so much. Don't put red flowers beside red flowers. What's the matter with you? Poor, poor Cheech. I'll never forget his little laugh. What are you doing? You can't put food next to a dead body. Get it out of here. Oh, Cheech, Cheech, Cheech. Wait, get back here. Give me a crab cake. Oh, it's dry. Cook, I got news. I know, Jimmy. It wasn't your fault. You did everything you could, but Don Gambini is an unbending man. He bent when he hit the pavement, I'll tell you that. These crab cakes are dry. Hey, who died? Holy crap! Cheech, you're alive! I'm so happy! Jimmy, you got the Don to call off the hit? Well, yes and no. Mostly no. See, I threw the Don out a window, everyone wants to whack me, so we're moving to Canada. Ah! And that's how we wound up living here in Regina... Regina. Saskatchewan. But if you think living here is gonna change us, you can go f*** yourself. Forget about it. She meant to say forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it! Oh, forget about it! <laughs> Welcome, my son. How you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. Jimmy Falcone? Jimmy Falcone? <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're not on the list. You're so not on the list. Maybe this'll change your mind. Jimmy, you've done terrible things in your life. Murder, assault, trying to bribe your way into heaven. Okay, try Jimmy McDougal. I don't think so. <coughs> Are you all right? Do you need some water? We'll give you water. Sparkling or holy? <coughs> Wow, that could have been terrible. What happened? You got a wiener stuck in your throat. I tried giving you mouth to mouth, but I just kept pushing it further in. So I gave you the behind lick. Cheech, I was at the gates of heaven, and they wouldn't let me in. They said I'd done terrible things with my life. Who the hell are they to judge? I don't know, Cheech. It seemed so real. Like I was actually there. Let me ask you something, Jimmy. You ever wear a jacket you haven't worn in a while, and you find a $100 bill in the pocket? I don't know, I guess. Well, that did not happen to me, but... 
I did find Donny the Irishman's ear and a yo-yo in my pocket. Get the hell out of here. A yo-yo? Yep. Hey, an alley. I better take a leak. You never know how far to the next one. You would like to buy some marijuana, please? All right, let's see the money. You just took our money. You calling me a thief? Let's beat the crap out of him. What's taking him so long? Cheech, come on, let's go! Thanks, mister! You saved our lives! What am I gonna do? Not save your lives? They got a special place in heaven for people like you. Thanks again! <sighs> Jimmy, you ever been in an alley that didn't smell? Hey, what happened here? I saved some kids from getting their asses kicked. I done something good. I done good too. I drowned a spider. Look at that. All that reefer going up in smoke. Hey, we're like those two stoners from the movies, Cheech and Jimmy. I guess we ought to tie these guys up. You got a rope? Yeah, in my Boy Scout survival bag. They let you in? They told me the cutoff was 35. I know. I used the yo-yo. Oh, man. Look at that. Another ear. And it's also a left. Whose jacket is this? Okay. First of all, we have to tenderize the meat. How do we do that? You try. Now what? We order a pizza. And a therapist. PD was watching MTV. I want to watch the news. I want to watch real teen grandmas. Those shows are stupid. Nuh-uh. I want to find out if Amber's going to deliver today or if she's still grounded. I stand corrected. I got to say, it felt really good helping those drug-buying frat boys. It was almost heroic. Just think how you'd feel if you'd done it on purpose. PD put on Teletoon. The Coyote and the Running Birds show is on. I bet this time the bird gets eaten. And last night in downtown Regina, a vigilante broke up a drug deal. A vigilante? How cool is that? Hey, that looks like... A good job by some good citizen. Police claim the dealers were tied up with a yo-yo. So let's go to the man on the street, vigilante. Epic or not epic? Epic! Because a vigilante right here in Regina... That's going to bring tourists, because they know they'll be safe. It's also the Cabbage Festival. So double epic! Correct! Not epic. You go to hell! Epic! He's protecting our children, keeping drugs off the street. That's epic. Keeping drugs off the street, not epic. Vigilante, epic! And he did it with a yo-yo. He's the yo-yo vigilante. I just came up with that. Now over to Brick Fitman with sports. Epic! It's not even game day, and fans have come out in droves to support the Yo-Yo Vigilante. Give me a B! B! Give me an I! I! Give me a J! J! Who wants Yo-Yo? Get your Yo-Yos. Who wants Yo-Yo? Ow, my eye! My teeth! My baby! V-I-J-J-I-L-A-T-T-E! Was that You believe this, Cheech? The whole town's talking about us. They love us. Unbelievable. Just for beating up a bunch of bikers. I used to beat up people all the time. Nobody loved me. They called me the assailant. Or that guy. I didn't like that. They would point and say, that guy. Would it have killed them to have learned my name? I got a feeling this could be a chance for me, Cheech. I mean, maybe there's a reason I nearly choked on a weenie. Maybe I can be a real hero. What about me? Can I be your, uh, what do you call it, boy toy? You mean boy wonder? I don't know. What was Robin? Boy toy. Okay, not that. How are we gonna do this, Jimmy? What if we don't see no more bad guys? Oh, we'll see them. Or better yet, they'll see us. Oh my, I am so drunk! Why would I leave my fancy mansion with so much money and expensive jewelry for someone to rob from me in my defenseless drunken state? I am far 
too drunk to ever fight back if someone tried to take my wads of cold, hard, untraceable cash. Why or oh why would I come to a seedy bar such as this? It's like I'm asking for it. It's as if I'm saying, please, rob me. Take heed, stranger. We don't want nobody to taking advantage of your defenselessness condition. They might steal all that fine jewelry so loosely hanging from your neck. I think I will go outside to the alley, kind sir. I feel the need to throw up from the large amounts of alcohol that I have consumed. Barf. Barf. Hey, rich guy. <laughs> You've been yo-yoed, punk. Sounds like trouble. Let's roll. Hey, Jimmy, we're like that cop team, Starsky and Cheech. assure you that this is not acceptable behavior by any citizen of Regina. We are the Mounties, and we will catch this. Yo-Yo Vigilante. He will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Why do you want to prosecute him? He's doing your job better than you. Because the law clearly states... Why can't the Mounties arrest these crooks before the Vigilante? Well, I don't think the Yo-Yo... Yo, yo. What do you got against the yo-yo? Is there a drug problem in Regina? Why have yo-yos been banned from schools? How often do you mount your horse? Finally! Regina has something Saskatoon doesn't. We have the only vigilante hero in the great province of Saskatchewan. What do you think, Jimmy? Epic or not epic? I bet he's just a regular guy who puts on his pants one sleeve at a time. I wish I was more like him. Prowling the streets at night, making my own rules, getting kisses from women I'm not related to. So you like this guy, huh? You think he's gonna get into heaven? He's already in heaven, Jimmy. This is Regina. No, Toby. This is heaven's nutsack. But it deserves to be safe. I heard he's 19, 6'4", blonde hair, and has his own car. A lady at the market told the cashier that her cousin saw him, and he's actually 38, gives foot massages, and cries when it rains. No, he's 19, and he's perfect for me. No, he's 38, cares how your day was, and never misses the ball. Now go to your room. Hey, what are you all talking about? What everybody in town is talking about. The yo-yo vigilante. I so want to make out with him. You put that thought out of your mind right now, little lady. That's sick. I mean, the man's a criminal. That's where I'm torn on this whole deal. On the one hand, he's busting crooks, which makes him a gavone. On the other hand, he's breaking the law, which I respect. I would just like to meet him for one night. He said stop saying that. Mwah. You're daddy's little girl. To the yo cave. I know you're the yo-yo vigilante. Petey, I admit to being a yo-yo dieter. I just can't shake those last 80 pounds. But a vigilante, that's crazy talk. Oh, is it? All right, you caught us. But it just sort of happened. We didn't plan it. We were a little drunk. It was an accident, but your mother and I still love you. Oh, wait, wrong speech. All right, how'd you know? Every sound in this house travels through those vents and into my room. Yeah? Well, if you think you heard Gloria from a car wash in here the other night, you did not. So you admit you're a vigilante. You rat us out, and I'll come at you with the full force of a 68-year-old man. Rat you out? Oh, contraire. I want to be the Q to your James Bond, the Morgan Freeman to your Batman, the Elton to your John. I want you to use my crime-fighting stuff. Check this one out. It's a modified stud finder that identifies the guilty and the criminally insane. Hey, it works. This is my masterpiece, laser farting gum. It's perfect if you're being chased. Try one. What does it do? Give me a fink. I like it. Plus, there'll never be any doubt who dealt it. 
The Mountie wants to see us right away. Hang on, I haven't shown you my best one. The Holographic Lady. How does that fight crime? Who cares? I'm sorry to drag you out at this time of night, but it's about the Yo-Yo Vigilante. I think I read something about that. Some handsome hero running around town, stopping bad guys and thumbing his nose at you feds. He's no hero. It's against the law to take the law into your own hands, and I aim to stop him. Go stop him. What's it got to do with us? I need your experience. As you may know, the legendary Take Me Diamond is on display at the Regina Museum of Stuff. And I want you to steal it. Now you're talking my language. Not really steal it, of course. I want you to break into the museum and attempt to steal it. When the vigilante arrives to stop you, I will swoop in and arrest him. You see, gentlemen, sometimes it takes a criminal to catch a criminal. Oh, man, you had to go and get it up. What's in it for us, McCool? A chance to feel good about doing the right thing, Jimmy. Something I believe you really, really want. You can't tell me what I want, what I really, really want. All right, but you owe us. See you there at midnight. Midnight it is. For Canada! And getting antiquated lyrics stuck in your head! Come find me, my hero. What the? What are you doing, young lady? Mom! You get in the house. That's so unfair. I hate you! And get me some batteries. There's some in my nightstand next to my... Never mind, I'll get it. All right, I'll be right over there. When I give the signal, you move in on the diamond. That's when the vigilante will surely make his move. I hope we catch those guys, Jimmy. How are we gonna catch those guys? We are those guys! Right, well, if I catch you, I'm gonna let you go. You're my nephew, for Christ's sake. No one's catching anybody. It's really simple. All we gotta do is sit here until morning, because nobody's showing up. Hey, look, it's Gina. Shut up. McCool can't know Gina busted in. McCool, look. There's a hot girl in a bikini down the hall. She's getting away. My goodness. The vigilante is a woman. Of course. That's why we couldn't find her. We were only looking for a man. How sexist of us. How un-Canadian. How despicable. And look at that ass. Madam, you're under arrest. Gina, what the hell are you doing? What's it look like I'm doing? I'm taking that diamond. What the hell are you doing here? What are you going to do with a giant diamond? I'm going to fence it. Duh. No. I'm gonna wind up fencing it for you, cause you don't know any fences. It'll be just like the time you got the hamster and I wound up feeding it, cleaning its cage, walking it. Then when you didn't want it anymore, I'm the one who had to drive it out to a farm in the country. But Pop... Get home. But... Now! Man, when I grow up, I'm gonna let my children steal whatever they want. She's gonna make a damn fine mom someday. Oh no, McCool's coming back. Okay, quick. What happened? The vigilantes got us. Where were you? We could have been hurt. Yeah, ow. It's the damnedest thing. The bikini lady just disappeared. Then I got a call from my captain saying they've captured the vigilante. What? It was your boss from the tourism bureau. He confessed. A Toby something. I did it! It was me! I'm the vigilante! <coughs> and visit Regina. What the hell is that idiot kid doing? I don't know. Me neither. Whoa, sweet. For once, I'm not the dumber guy. This is bad, Cheech. How could they have arrested Toby? Not only is he not the yo-yo vigilante, he's the nicest guy in the world. That kind of hurts my feelings, Jimmy. It's like the whole world has gone topsy-curvy. I try to do good so that I can redeem myself and a nice guy goes to jail because of it. They'll eat that kid alive in there. Cheech, our next act of vigilantism is busting Toby out of prison. It's so exciting to be bad again. Or good. Whichever this is. So, a new plan unfolds. Oh, for the love of it. Go outside, you little freak. Give me your wallet. All right, all right, here. Scream for help or I'll shoot. Help! Here, go home, you're useless. Teresa, what the hell are you doing? Nothing. Just meeting guys. You're trying to meet the vigilante. I told you he's too old for you. Teresa Maria Falcone, is that a gun? It's just a water pistol. See? Son of a bitch! It's a real gun! No wonder it kept leaking. Give me that thing. 
You get in the house. You're grounded. God, that's like so unfair. Shake it off, Cookie. Shake it off. It's just a gunshot wound. You've had worse. Help! Help! I've been shot! I need a vigilante! Nothing. What do we do now? Now, we chew. Lock and load. There's a ton of guys in here. How are we gonna find ours? The modified stud muffin finder. Do you wanna buy some memorabilia? I got OJ jerseys. I got bubblegum cards. Gloves. They're hard to get on, but they come off easy. How about a knife? Where'd I put that thing? Damn, I can never find that knife. Did you know he was a football player before he was a criminal? Hey, come here. Come on, come closer. Let me put this gun in your mouth, and I'll write you a song. Come on. Just for fun. I've been drinking. What could go wrong? Jimmy, don't look. But I think that guy's wearing a wig. We'll never find Toby with this thing. Everyone in here is a criminal, except the guy we're looking for. Then we reverse the polarities. Star Trek? The view. Hey, you're the two fellows who got me put in here. I didn't do anything. I was just jogging with my metrosexual man bag. You think I haven't used that one? I invented I didn't do it. His story checks out. And all I was trying to do was give you back your stupid monocle. Here! His story, too. Yeah, and I'm in here for trying to save a dog from Michael Vick's car. I don't get it. Everyone I put away was innocent. I finally try to do some good, and it all goes bad. And why am I in my underwear? Jimmy, look. It's the fish man of Alcatraz. Swim! Swim like the wind! We gotta find all the people we arrested and set them free! Not me, Jimmy! <laughs> I'm already free! This is where I belong! These are my people! And now I beat you alive! <laughs> and then Toby eats us. Man, can you imagine if that happened? Jimmy, you are so high. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up! Don't make me laugh! <laughs> Stop! So what do you think? Should we tie these guys up? Are you out of your mind? Then the whole story could come true. We gotta get out of here before we do something good by mistake. What about heaven? Some people are put on this earth to do good, Cheech. Let's get out of here before any of them come and arrest us. That sure was a crazy story, Jimmy. But let me tell you something. I am the demon golf lock. Knock it off already. La 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 how you doing? There's two words that strike terror in the heart of any wise guy. They represent the end of freedom and the start of a life sentence. I'm pregnant! <laughs> My life was over. You can be a good father or you can be a good fella, but you can't be both. Still, I wanted it all, so I made it work. Cry into a minimum. Anyone moves, you let me know. Oh, oh. They moved. I don't remember.
remember that? The FBI does. I spent two years on the most wanted list for that one. Anyway, after that, I decided to keep work and kids separate. After I showed you how it's done. No, because jobs come and go. But families forever. Yeah, like herpes. Ah, uh, herpes ain't forever. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Jimmy. Oh, Cookie. Oh, Jimmy. Oh, Cookie. Oh, God! Would you guys shut up? Just think of other people and finish already. Go back to sleep, Teresa! How can I with the golden age of porn knocking down my wall? We better be real quiet. <laughs> Mm. Yo. Oh, oh. Uh. You sound like a walrus and a seal fighting over a fish. Keep it down, Sea World. Let's go find somewhere more private. Where's my robe? I just came to say goodnight. Uh. <laughs> I'm still turned on. <laughs> Keytel Records. That's a harvest moon if ever I saw one. For Christ's sake, McCool, what do you want? Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt this nostalgic reenactment of prom night, Jimmy. I'll come back. Ah, forget it, McCool. The moment's passed. What do you need? For starters, Cookie, I can't help but notice your airbags are deployed. Here, take my jacket. A colleague of mine is going away on assignment, and her house sitter backed out at the last minute. Thank God you came to us. Really? No, you jackass. Who cares about your friend? I'll do it. I can't get any sleep with the walking dead here moaning all night. Yes, I got an eyeful of that outside and subsequently won't eat for a week, but I think this is a job for your brother. That is so unfair. Just because Petey's a boy, you think he's more compliment than me. The word is competent. Oh, so now I'm stupid because I'm a girl? Certainly not. I would never discriminate on the basis of gender. And even though I didn't, I will offer you the job. Just to be safe. That's the Canadian way! Yes! For Canada! Where Equal Opportunity just got a girl an unpaid internship! Fifty bucks says she burns the joint down in an hour. Give me forty, I'll do it right now. Teresa, you have three priorities whilst house-sitting for my colleague. Money up front, no kissing, back doors extra? I'm sorry, what? Nothing. You must keep the house spotless and feed the dogs regularly. <laughs> <laughs> They're like friends who never judge. And then there's Siegfried. Who's Siegfried? Siegfried is a dwarf alligator, my friend's pride and joy. <laughs> Beware, he likes to bite. How am I supposed to pick it up? Very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> That gator is the coolest thing i ever seen. I'm staying here, too. As am I. As am I? No wonder bullies tape your ass shut. I don't know if everyone staying over is a good idea. It's a great idea, Cook. We'll get everybody out of the house. Besides, Teresa can totally take care of that creepy lizard. This creepy lizard can take care of himself. Now, who wants to cook me dinner? You hear that silence? It's glorious. No kids hounding us. Let's take advantage of this peace and quiet while we can. Yeah, why hop in the sack right away? We got all night. Yeah, we're empty nesters. I'm gonna go take a long, hot bubble bath. Good idea, babe. I'm gonna catch up on my re...
Jimmy. What? You got condoms, big boy? Yeah, yeah, right here. I even got the glow in the dark ones. Are you nuts? We need those. I want you right now, Jimmy. And you don't gotta worry about being premature, because I don't mind. Really? I can just... Wait a sec, I know what this is. You want another baby! What? Don't be silly. A baby? That's bananas. I just want to make a baby with my husband. I mean, make love to a baby. I mean, make a love baby. I... <sighs> Fine. If you don't want to, maybe it's for the breasts. I mean, breast milk. I mean, oh, forget it. You want to have another baby? Are you nuts? We got four <laughs> kids already. We got three. I'm counting Cheech. Come on. Having a kid now would be like shanking a guy in the shower two days before parole. Boom! Another 20-year stretch. I'm putting my foot down. Both foots. No more kids. Okay, fine. The man has spoken. I guess I'll just polish this little spot here on the coffee table. Oh, it's so dirty, Jimmy. Uh, uh. Ow! My neck! Sit down. I'll give you a massage. All right, but no trying to seduce me, Kabish. I know what you were doing there with the magic swirling ass. Oh, that feels good. Oh, yeah. Your hands are so soft. Hey, that's not fair. Cut it out. Look at this mess. You're really living up to people's low expectations here. Way I see it, before we leave, we make Petey clean everything up. And people call you that dumb one. Let's make some work for him. <laughs> hey, that looks like fun. <laughs> I just took Ziggy for a three-hour walk to the end of the driveway. Alligators are kind of boring. He don't look too good. Anybody feed him? I filled his bowl with tofu. Tofu? He's a connoisseur. He needs meat. Here you go, little fella. Ha! You're gonna have to move faster than that, ugly. You probably shouldn't do that. Nah, he loves it, right? Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! That's what you get for teasing him. Let him go! Don't hurt him! Oh my god, Cheech! Oh no, Ziggy! Didn't you feed the dogs? Again, tofu. Cool. Ha! He missed. <laughs> Lucky I got away. Cookie's knuckles got a kung fu grip. <laughs> Big boy. Ah! No! It's mine! Until I squeeze it out of you, then it's mine. All mine! <laughs> the kid's gotta come home. Cookie's gone baby crazy. What happened? You teased the gator? You know me so well. What are you so worked up about? You don't want a baby, just don't have sex with Cookie. Yeah, you're right. But, uh... What is it? Uh, it's just we haven't, you know, done it in a couple of weeks, and I, uh... Ah, you got what the medical professionals call blue ball. <gasps> Let me tell you a little secret I learned in prison. Okay, stop talking. No, oh, that's only to get cigarettes. I'm talking about beating it like it owes you money. I can't do that in the house. Cook's like a bloodhound. She'll smell the baby better a mile away and confiscate it. It's like a seven cents. We all know what a six one is. Ew, who was that? <laughs> it was Petey. I know your brand, mister. Oh, I once broke wind in Reno and she called to rag me out. So, she's got a nose for farts and man milk. You don't gotta yank it in the house. There's lots of other places. Bus shelters. 
Department store change rooms. Back pew to church. I get it. I'll figure it out. Good. In the meantime, I'll talk some sense into Cookie. You go find some place to have a nice little masturbate. <gasps> oh, don't look at me, lady. He's the one about to abuse himself like a circus monkey. <laughs> Cookie, look at his crap. Kids cost a fortune, and what do you get for it? Stinky diapers and a lot of back talk. I get that from you already. Besides, babies are wonderful. You can't beat that baby smell. Their little feet, all the sweet sounds they make. They do make cute little sounds. And that nice, warm feeling when they snuggle on you. Ooh, I love that snuggly feeling. Reminds me of my old soulmate, Rapey Joe. The way they gaze up at you, knowing that you're their entire universe, and they love you like no one has ever loved you before. Now I want a baby. Aren't you sterile? You mean senile. And yes, Dolores, I will have a donut. All right, I'm out. Looking for dogs is beneath me. Galak suckers. Not so fast. The dogs will wander back, but we need a new Siegfried. No, we don't. Who cares, Teresa? I pushed for this job. If I screw it up, I'm gonna look like an idiot. Yeah, gonna. I am not dealing with Ma saying, you see, Petey should have been the house sitter. F him! I'm right here! It's just an expression, Petey. Anyway, I need you both to get on board and help me find an alligator. Why would you need to find an alligator, Teresa? Uh, cause Cheech really took to Siggy and wants one for himself. I always pegged Cheech for an animal lover. Although on some level I imagined that literally. Of course, alligators are tricky to find in Regina. You can ask my colleague about it when she returns home tomorrow. Tomorrow? <laughs> Her assignment was cut short. She can't wait to feel the leathery embrace of Siegfried again. And she'll be thrilled he'll have a chum for future play dates. Good luck in your search. All right, I'm back in. Aw, thanks, Gina. I don't want to miss everyone going ballistic when you screw this up. <laughs> Cheech, how'd it go talking to Cook? Not good. <clears throat> how about you? Did you manage to take your hand out for a liquid lunch? <clears throat> no, and I'm dying here. Tell Cookie to lay off the dirty texts. I gotta go. I'm feeling lightheaded. <clears throat> Did you get my picture? Because I'm sending you about 200 more. Cook, please, stop. <clears throat> That's it! I can't take this no more! Regina Tourism! Let me tell you what I want to do to you, big boy. First, I'm gonna... Oh, my! All right, Jimbo, man up and do this. What kind of heartless world is this where a guy can't find a place to have a tender moment with himself? That'll do. Well, Tree, I guess I'm gonna tap you with my sap. <laughs> my alone! <laughs> okay, God! I get it! It's a sin! Fucking lay off, will ya? All right, citizens, disperse. There's nothing to see here. Brian Adams bleeding fingers. What are you doing up there? Trying to avoid sex with my wife? Get down, Jimmy. Who? <laughs> what? Uh, nothing. So what's all this about avoiding sex with Cookie? I don't want her getting pregnant. That's all you gotta know. I see. Well, why not get a vasectomy? How is converting to Jewism gonna help? No, that's circumcision. A vasectomy is different. You want me to cut the whole thing off? Like a Ken doll? No, it's when your vas deferens get clipped and clamped. Well, it's probably easier if I show you. Yeah, I'm good. I'm surprised you don't know about this. Did you step in something, Jimmy? 
Nope. And all I know about that stuff is it's the devil's work. No, it's not. And if you want to have worry-free relations with Cookie, this way is 100% effective. Are you sure you don't smell something ripe? For Canada, where God does it ever stink! Oh, this'll drive Jimmy wild. God! My back is killing me. Careful, lady, that same outfit got me into this mess in the first place. But you're so blessed. Blessed? That's cute. You got kids? I'm almost pregnant with my fourth. Whoopee. I'm almost gonna kill myself. But isn't it wonderful having that little miracle growing inside you? There's your miracle, lady. Is that you or me? I can't feel anything but my hemorrhoids burning like a ghost pepper butt plug. But you're both about to receive the most amazing gift. A child to hold and love and imprint all your failures on. Some freaking gift. I poop whenever I sneeze. All right, Jimmy. You can do this. One little snip and... <laughs> <laughs> my boys. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy my bulls a farewell drink. This one oh, looks like a snappy little bastard. So how do we get it? Easy. We lower Gina down by her legs and she grabs it. I'm not going in there. But you're the smallest. You're the ugliest. If your face gets ripped off, no one will know the difference. Come here! Gina, stop! Stop it, you two! If we want to catch an alligator, we're gonna need some bait. <laughs> so, which of these lizards swallowed the diamond? The small one, Cheech. But keep your eye on the big one. Got it. He's the muscle. <laughs> you fellas would look good on my feet. Whoa! I take it back. <laughs> Just like Coney Island! the bottle. What are you doing here? Hey, Cook. I needed a drink. I was at the vasectomy clinic. You got a vasectomy? But Father O'Malley told us that's how the terrorists win. Relax. I didn't do it. Look, if it's between having another kid or having some doctor shove scissors into my nutsack... <laughs> what I mean is I love you, Cook. If you want a baby, I won't stand in your way. In fact, I'll lie on top of you. Hey! Hey, there's the chick who wants to shove a bowling ball at her hoo-ha. Yeah? Well, at least I don't poop my pants. Yeah, if she wanted to, she could shove two bowling balls out of... Stop helping, Jimmy. It's a shame we gotta cut this cute little fellow open. I already told ya! There's no diamond! I faced death for that rock. It's real to me. Get back! Oh, crap. They got a taste for lizard meat. All right, uh, toss in the data. Never. Ow, oh, son of a bitch. We'll turn Petey's room into a nursery. He'll go in Cheech's room, and Cheech moves into the garage. Come on, have a heart. Make Petey move into the garage. Or, or the bus shelter down the street. Oh, Jesus Christ. It's what we all want. Look! <laughs> You'll never take my baby. Never! Take my baby! <gasps> Sit! That's better. Stay away from my kids, you bitches! They're females, right? You're taking care of them and you don't even. Ah! Oh, it is on, you motherfucking dogs! Look at you, kids! Your mother had to get rabies shots in her guts because of you. And this is how you thank her? Don't worry about it. I'm just glad they're home. Teresa, I'm very cross with you. Rosa's house was left in an abysmal state. For some reason, the dogs won't come out from under the porch, and Siegfried is missing. What? We put that gator back. Yo, Cook, the kid's latching, but I'm not producing. Do I breastfeed on the left side or on the right? Cheech, give Siegfried back to me this instant. What's with your face? You get crap in your eyes or something? No, why do you ask? Wanna sneak upstairs and see if we can flag down a stork? Huh? I was being cute. I meant let's go put a load of baby in you. We're right here. We can hear ya. <sighs> I think maybe I'm okay, Jimmy. I'm better off counting the two blessings I already got. 
There's three of us. Shut up, Petey. You sure? Yeah, baby. I know you came around to the idea. I hope you're not too disappointed. Yeah! All right! <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh, baby! La 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 how you doing? You know me as the card carrying ex capo from the New York mob. Let the record show, I'm also a hopeless romantic. I met my wife the same way as a lot of people at work. See, Bobby Peltz was behind on his protection money, so we went over there to discuss payment options. I never let emotions get in the way of my job. Until that night. She was the classiest fraud I ever laid eyes on. The face of an angel and a killer butt. I mean that figurally and literally. From that moment, I was head over here. I quartered her through the arraignment, trial, and sentence. And on visiting day, she agreed to be my wife. Yes! Yes! Now that we're in chilly vagina, we still know how to keep it hot. Wait a sec. How'd you sneak the engagement ring into prison? He stuck it up his wazoo. Oh! What? It was romantic. And kind of hot. The ring, I mean. On account of it having been crammed so far up his... Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Cook, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Aw, remember our wedding day? You look so handsome, strangling the DJ. Happiest day of my life. What about when we had the kids? That's the day happiness died. Thank God we sent him to... Where'd we send him? Summer camp. You know, to get in touch with nature and crap. I'd like to get in touch with your nature, if you know what I mean. <gasps> what the hell is this? You keep an album of your stinking gumars with the family photos? Cookie, I can explain! Actually, I got no idea how this got here. Oh, you guys found my memory journal. <laughs> yeah. Those were the days, huh, Jimmy? Remember them two broads? Twins, Jimmy. Double your fun. And their Suki blows good. And I still don't think that was a real name. Jimmy, I know floozies on the side were part of the old life. But I don't need them shoved in my face. And here's Patty Pontoons. Boy, did she ever have big feet. Good night, Jimmy. Uh-oh. You made her quiet angry. The kind where you think she forgot. And then, bam, your nuts are in a vice. Baby, wait. These memories ain't even mine. I don't know what you did, Jimmy. But, uh, think next time, okay? <laughs> Confused. Where's the spa at this crummy freaking resort? There is no spa at summer camp, Counselor McDougal. Counselor? But I've never even been to law school. I object. Okay, to review our whistle signals. <whistles> Means rabid cougar. <whistles> Means escaped maniac with a chainsaw. Oh. Now, who's ready for a hike through Cougar Canyon to the abandoned mental hospital? We're all gonna die. Could you kids take off your boots so my ride's not so bumpy? All right, time for some real fun. You hungry? How about a shish kebab? <laughs> yeah.
You missed! No, I didn't. The raccoon's kids were in there. <laughs> nice shot. Name's Carmine. Gina, what's a wise guy like you doing out here in the weeds? Two months for pissing off a juvie judge back home. I guess you can't escape from the wilderness. You're telling me. This place blows. So, let's mug someone. Screw that. Let's mug everyone. <laughs> Good. After screwing up my weekend, you should move out. No, oh, I booked you and Cookie a romantic getaway. Spared no expense. Got you lots of points on your credit card, for which you are welcome. That's not going to work. She's so mad, she's selling a wedding dress on eBay. Look, I've been married six times. I know women. Take her to this place in the country. Make her feel special. She'll melt like butter. <laughs> hey, remember Butter Picaro? Nothing melted in her mouth, huh? Cook, I'm sorry. Let me make it right and take you away for the weekend. Why don't you take one of your bimbos? Maybe Butter Picaro's available. Oh, Butter was always available. Jimmy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, shut up, Cheech. Look, I just... I don't know how you idiots forgot that... Ah! Ah! Means hornet's nest surrounded by poison ivy! What? I said it's a loony for number one and a deuce for a deuce. Or five bucks for both. Yo, Carmine, give me a sec. I gotta go make fun of my brother. Hmm. <laughs> Only you can come to summer camp and catch the leprosy. Gina, what's that boy's name? What are you, a cop? It's Carmine. <gasps> I think that's Carmine Gambini. As in his father was Don Gambini? As in dad killed him, Gambini, and that's why we're in witness protection, Gambini? You been drinking from the rusty fountain? Cause that's two bucks. I'm telling you, that's him. We were at his christening. I christened thee, Carmine. <clears throat> Come on, just cause he's from New York and his pop worked in sanitation and fell from the 19th floor window. Oh my God, how did I not see this? You have to stay away from him. What if you let it slip that Pop killed his father? I don't let things slip. What am I, a cheech? You can't go near Carmine, okay? Stay away from him, he's trouble. Carmine equals trouble. Petey, if you're on your period, be careful. There's bears out here. Dinner at five, dress code in effect. Enjoy your stay. Hear that? A dress code. Only the best for my cookie. Don't pin your hopes on any undress code when we get upstairs. Uh. You were informed of the dress code, were you not, sir? Of course I was. What, are you blind? You believe this prick? I guess he just knows a sleaze bag when he sees one, Jimmy. Can we stop? Let's not mess this up by being mad about the past. Let's just enjoy tonight. What do you say, baby? <gasps> oh, you sick motherfucker! I am amazed at the size of your freaking balls. Thank you. To bring me to a swingers party. I had no idea, I swear. Come on, we're getting out of here. Oh, no, we're not. You want to swing? You got it. I'm going to powder my nose. Try not to get anyone pregnant. And order me the tube steak. <clears throat> Cheech residents. You humongous idiot. Hey, Jimmy, how's the weekend? How the hell did you find this pervert parade? Ad in a magazine, where else? What did the ad say? Uh, couples only, like you two. What else? Loving environment? Again, tailor-made for you crazy kids. Okay, did you read the top of the ad? Uh, yeah. Midsummer bang a palooza. So you two all made up? Hello? The other counselors are gonna feel pretty stupid at their makeout party when they realize they forgot dish duty. 
<sighs> I'm so lonely. <gasps> oh, hey, Camper. I heard you talking about me to Gina. Oh. oh. Want to hear a joke? Knock, knock. Who, who's there? Orange. Orange who? Aren't you lucky this ain't a bag full of hammers? Ow! I'm sorry! I'm sorry about your dad! What about my dad? You know how my dad killed your dad? That's why you're beating me, right? No, I'm beating you because you told your sister not to hang out with me. So, this isn't about your father? Well, it is now. some snacks for the makeout party. <gasps> Ew, is that pee? Some of it is. Ahem, <clears throat> your lack of nudity is making the other patrons uncomfortable. Well, we wouldn't want that, would we? I can be just as adventurous as your little New York skanks. I'm going to the s and Grotto to spank me an accountant. That's it. I'm calling McCool. Special Agent Straight McCool. McCool? <gasps> Please, tell me you're here to watch us. <laughs> Only if that's what you're into. Oh, God, don't come over. Well, I was nervous my first time here as well. You can always use the safe word, kumquat. Last year it was harder, which we really should have thought through. Isn't this stuff illegal? Cause it ought to be. Not at all. Swinging is perfectly legal, consensual, and quite frankly, beautiful. Beautiful? There's a skid mark on this chair. Don't panic, Jimmy. You're free to walk out at any time. Though I recommend staying for Randy Mouthfeel, the erotic hypnotist. Oh, the things he makes people do. There's Cookie. I'll go say hello. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You thought taking me to the Royal Pork Hotel would make up for that photographic walk down Mamory Lane? There's nothing to make up for! That was the old life! Well, the old life was a two-time in scumbag! You know, I never heard you complain about it when you were sitting pretty in Brooklyn with a big house, fancy cars, and piles of money. How dare you! <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> well, looky here. You folks done blew yourself a foursome. There's a whole lot of that going around tonight. Hop on in. We'll run you to the gas station. So you can introduce us to Cousin Leatherface? Forget it. We'll just stroll back to the hotel for some kinky karaoke. <laughs> bunch of natural-born stool pigeons. He beat it out of me. Then he got angry. Quiet angry. The most dangerous angry of all. You think they forgot? Then BAM! It's sunny at the toll booth. What's nice weather at a toll booth got to do with anger? You never saw The Godfather, did ya? No! It's one of the many things I'll never get to do after Carmine rats us out to the mob. I'm too young to die. I'll never know true love or learn advanced Klingon. You know there's a connection there. Leave this to me. We'll have an old-fashioned sit-down. Oh, thank God. That's for squealing. Go! And that's for never seeing the Godfather. Hey, this ain't no gas station. Well, now it is. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell's going on here? Well, chubby man and red lady, these here are my brother, cousin, father, sons. So, it's a deliverance reunion. Cookie, in these situations, scatterguns trump wisecracks. Let me handle this. What do you want? Cash? Credit cards? Our skin to make a suit? We're from a tight-knit community in the black prairies of northern Saskatchewan. And y'all got something we need. 
You ain't getting nothing from me, Hills Have Eyes. Yeah, you stay away from my wife. I'll go bang a whore. I'm still mad at you. Oh, shucks, ma'am. I don't know what you're thinking, but we don't want nothing from you. We want your brother. He's my husband. Well, excuse us, Mrs. Highfalutin. Look at me. My husband ain't my brother. I ain't got no blood disorder. My head's a regular shape. whoop a dee doo Shut up, will ya? Uh, boys, just show them we mean business. <laughs> Easy, Mick, you're too excited. Well, feller, you can either help us out, or you can eat a buckshot salad. I never thought I'd say these words to a gang of horny hillbillies, but please be gentle. Hang on, hang on. You idiots drove all the way from the Black Prairies to get it on with this sack of crap? Hey. What? No, ma'am. You see, as of late, we noticed something real wrong with our youngins. We reckon there's been too many cousins and siblings and whatnot making babies. <laughs> and bottom line is, our chitlins ain't right. Yikes! Stands to reason we need a new swimmer in the old gene pool. I don't think you hoot nannies understand how this works. I can't birth no babies. We know. We ain't stupid. Ours is a matriarchal society, and the women folk demand to be babyfied forthwith. Now, the standards of beauty in the Black Prairies might not be what y'all are used to. I love it. After years of hot stripper body bimbos, you're gonna have to bump uglies with a bunch of barnyard fuglies. Ha! Ah. <whistles> All right, ladies, he's ready. Come on in. Close your f***ing mouth, Jimmy. Having to sit down in a boat was a good idea, because you're not allowed to stand. Safety first. So, you know who we are. And you know what I gotta do. And you know what I gotta do about what you gotta do. And you know what I gotta do about what you gotta do about what I gotta... Oh, Jesus, sit-downs are boring. What a fight? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> I better intervene and call an adult. Gop, gop! He's more chicken than I am. Three full whistles and two semis means stop fighting! Come on, you guys! I know they ain't pretty. Just close your eyes and think of something sexy, like a sibling or barnyard animal. It'll all be over before you can say webbed feet. Find yourself another stud, Toothless. Uh, Jimmy? You're gonna get us both killed. I'm giving you permission. For the record, ma'am, we'll only hurt him. You will integrate into our community. Come on, you've done it a thousand times with Cheech and your crew. Wait, you know what I mean. Sorry, ain't happening. Oh, I see. Big stomach Jimmy's got to prove a point. You're going to feel real superior when they turn your skeleton into a side table. <sighs> now, now, ladies, be patient. We've been outmaneuvered in this round of the chess game of reproduction. So, you going to let us go? No, ma'am. We're going to have to resort to science. Bring in the doodad! <laughs> 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 Do that don't sound good. Oh, it don't feel good neither. <laughs> Stop it, you two! You can't settle an old mafia vendetta with violence! Ow! I like ya, but I can't trust you not to rat us out. Wait, do you like like me? Shut up! Why would I rat you out? I hate the mob. Yeah, right. And I'm gonna be prom queen. I mean it. When your pop killed my old man, the mob left us high and dry. That's the mob for ya. 
Wait a minute, what am I doing? He's six years old! I can totally take him! Gina, tag out! Ouch! Oof! Bad idea! Terrible idea! Gina, tag me out! <laughs> Look, the mob screwed me. I'd never help those jerks. But, but I gotta avenge my old man. I know, but you're not touching my old man. He's a kafal, but he's all right. Fine, but somebody's gotta die. Not Petey. Too easy. That would just make me sad. How about my uncle? Technically, he's the reason for all of this. You don't got a problem with me coming after... Cheech? Nah. But I'm not gonna hand him to you on a platter. You gotta earn it. Of course. There's no free lunch. If you can find out where the feds put us, be my guest. But is it worth all that trouble? It is if I get to see you again. Hey, keep it down! We got people trying to make out in here. Okay, I'm just gonna come right out and ask, what the hell is making out exactly? Don't look at me. I don't know what those f***ing animals do in there. This here's the suck nozzle. The claw's painful, but essential. Where the hell'd you get that thing, anyway? eBay. I'm also been on a nice wedding dress from Jimmy Eats Ball 69. Jimmy, don't put yourself through this. Just nail those broads, will ya? Do it for me! No, Cook! I never cheated on you, and I ain't about to start now. If it means my brazool gets chewed up by that thing, so be it. For Christ's sake, cut the act! It's no act! All the broads back home are for show. Part of my job is capo. I take them to dinner and drop them off after. No messing. Really? Since the day we met, Cook, it's only been you. Oh, Jimmy. All right, let's do this. Wait! I got a better idea. Step right in, ladies, and don't forget to sign up for Kinky Karaoke. Sorry, gentlemen, the swinging community has a strict no unaccompanied men policy. Oh, I wanted to see the sex restaurant. For Canada, a country so freaky our national animal is the beaver. We still got a room here. Want to hit the sheets? <laughs> nah, let's steal a car and go home. I hate the fucking country. La 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 Going. Actually, who cares? Shut up and let me talk. To me, crime is like any other business, except with more killing and less resumes. Yet both use an equal amount of paper clips. It don't matter if you're a banker or a good fella. You still gotta climb the corporate ladder. Jimmy, give me a ride to the track. I'm feeling lucky. Ah! And can I borrow your pants? Unless you're Cheech. He always had a different career philosophy. I'm telling you, Jimmy, the key to success is aiming for the middle. You mean like a gut shot? I mean your career. If you're on the bottom, you're always going to get stepped on. Ain't that right, Mario? Did you have to wear cleats? I can't find my regular face stepping shoes. Anyhow, if you aim for the top, you got a long way to fall. Like that time I tried doing it on a Ferris wheel? That was a fall from Grace. <laughs> Remember Grace, Jimmy? With the cans? Later, I saw what Cheech meant. <laughs> How'd it go? See? Gambini'd still be alive if he just aimed a little lower in life. Or if Jimmy aimed for the wall instead of the window. You do understand, Mr. Middleman, that you're the reason I had to kill him. Understanding is for overachievers. Well, you aimed us to the middle of nowhere, you stinking mook! <laughs> you stupid! If you think I'd kill Gambini all over again to save Cheech's half-assed ass, <laughs> forget about it.
Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Only four weeks left of summer break. You can do this, Cookie. You can totally do this. Yo, Ma, we're out of pork rinds. So what? Get up off your butts and go buy some more. But we want to find out if this broad says yes to the dress. Y'all got anything more see-through? What a day. I'm running out of ways to look busy at work. Nice example, Jimmy. No wonder the kids laze around all day. Take it easy. Lazing around is what summer break is for. Now, how about some pork rinds for Daddy? We ate them all. You kids bum around all day on my sofa, watching my TV, eating my pork rinds, and you can't even bother to tell your mother to go and buy more? That's it! You're all getting summer jobs! Hey, where'd they go? You! Get your resume together! <laughs> I can't get a job. I've been fired from everyone I've ever had. Welcome to the meat pit. Before you order, here's a video of where your hamburger came from. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for fries with your massacre? The only place I'm fit to work is in a science lab, or perhaps some sort of theoretical think tank. So, if you'll excuse me. Not so fast. You're coming with me, Steve No Jobs. Congratulations, Petey. You had the best and only application in our summer hiring spree. Agnes, bring Nemo around. You're going to be pointing out all the exciting Regina landmarks as our summer tour bus barker. Go put all them acting classes to work, kid. Teresa took the acting classes. Don't you know me at all? Whoopee! Summer's officially begun. You're a tour buff, McCool? Ah, uh, there's nothing like being regaled with Regina's tantalizing history in an open-top bus whilst the wind tickles your scalp. Welcome to showbiz, Petey. No stop, so here's a travel mug to pee in. <laughs> If you look to your left, you'll see one of Regina's most, um, prestigious grain elevators. Imagine the grain that's been elevated here. And this one is... red. Sexy. And now we will end with a dip in Regina's historical municipal outdoor pool. <laughs> that's the whole tour? Two grain elevators in a swimming pool? Look, everyone, there's a jellyfish in the pool. No, that's a tampon. So, how was the job hunt? Oh, it was, uh, brutal. Yeah, yeah, we had to fill out applications in, like, triplication. <laughs> Do I smell fake butter topping? Are those popcorn crumbs? Aha! Movie tickets. You weren't out looking for jobs. You were out seeing Paranormal Activity 10, same shit, different house. It was a scary documentary. That wasn't real, Teresa. You're such a sucker. Oh, there's tons of suckers out there who want to connect with the spirit world. Uh, here we go. Back in my Madam Scamia days, I fleeced marks every which way from Sunday. Just I got an idea how we can make money off of that paranormal crap. Ew, no way I'm touching ghost poo. How are you not in summer school right now? I slip my homework in with Petey's. He does it without even noticing. Does anyone know how many pounds of grain one of these elevators can hold? Anyone? Would you keep it down? Thank you, sir. He was talking to you. Oh. I could say just about anything and it wouldn't matter. This park on your right is where a real Bigfoot was seen drunk, snacking on a number of small dogs. And uh, this wheat field is known as Area 55 huh? because a UFO crashed here back in the 50s. The aliens were buried, and the next year, the crop was blue. Next up, we're heading to Regina's most deadly deciduous, otherwise known as the Murder Tree. Ooh, can we have a picnic there? Sure, but it might make a picnic of you. <gasps> Sorry, folks, this 
tour is full, but there will be another one tomorrow. Wowzers! Petey's really turned the tour around. People actually care what my know-it-all kid has to say? We can finally crack open the I Heart Regina shirts and wear them without people laughing at us. Ah! Ah! It's like being attacked by a thousand velvet brushes! Mademoiselle Konya, at your service. Oh, thank God. It started yesterday, just after your pamphlet conveniently appeared in our mailbox. Please, help us. Silence! Spirits, announce yourselves. <laughs> ah! Ah! The spirit is really pissed about something you did in your past. Oh, God. Is this about the elderly man I ran over in college and blamed on my boyfriend who then committed suicide in prison? Uh, yes. And it'll be 300 bucks to bust this ghost. Double it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant 600. Great news, everyone. This has all been a terrible dream. Regina tourism numbers are through the roof thanks to the initiative of one particular employee. Premier O'Shea has commissioned yours truly to announce a promotion for the aforementioned go-getter. I owe it all to the Executive Success Self-Awareness Rodeo at Lake Waskasu. Introducing the new staff supervisor of Regina Tourism, Petey McDougal! Huh? Petey? I knew I should have signed up for the self-esteem booster derby! Stupid Toby! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Now that you're running the office, Petey, you may want some help running the tours. Boo! Someone with a deep passion for Regina history and 96 vacation days saved up. Hint, hint. No, no! I'm still running the tours. I wouldn't want you exposing my lies. I mean, wasting your time. You might be my boss, but you're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, look! It's time for me to avoid confrontation. <laughs> Agnes, you ready for another bus tour? Look at you! Rising to the top of Regina tourism. For once, my pride in you outweighs my shame. Thanks, but the other employees seem a bit disgruntled. Could you smooth things over for me? Sure thing. And you know what's great about you being my boss? I don't have to go in sick no more. I can just shout from the couch. <laughs> You're funny. Thanks, Pop. Who's joking? Yo, Topes, I know my family taking over the business comes as a shock. Very perceptive. Percepticon. Give the kid a chance, will ya? You were once the guy on top. It's not his fault you blew it. Well, now that I'm not the boss anymore, I guess I can finally let my hair down. Schnapps, it's Peach. To Petey. Whatever. Look at all this money. I can finally buy myself a unicorn. Those things are extremely rare. You ain't buying nothing. We gotta keep Ma in the dark about this or she'll try and horn in. So keep your yap shut. I won't say nothing, as long as you cut me in. The only thing I'll be cutting is your tongue out. Oh, cookie. All right, fine, but you better pull your weight. I'm already carrying one useless moron on this caper. Yeah! Oh, cookie. I said all right, what are you doing? Nothing. It's time for my bed. Petey! We were just talking about your best son, who's my boss I ever had. <laughs> Is this what you meant by getting Toby on my side? You're drunk! You're drunk! <laughs> it smells like peaches, beans, and insubordination in here. Knock, knock. Who's there? How? <laughs> I'm writing you both up for drinking on the job. That's an Article 48. And breaking wind in front of a superior. That is a 22. We were just toasting to celebrate your promotion. Tell it to the naughty corner, McDougal. I ain't sitting in no naughty corner. And since when do we have a naughty corner? Shut it. Things better change around here or the staff will. <laughs> uh... 
Agnes! I just article 26 in your purse! I'm sorry, Pop, but I had to make an example of someone. You humiliated me in front of everybody. Go to your room. You're grounded. You can't ground me. I'm your boss. At work, you are the boss. At home, I'm the boss. Oh, yeah? Well, just you wait till we get to work tomorrow. Yeah? You just wait till we get home from work tomorrow. Which will be around midnight because you'll be working late. Boost. I'm already paying for myself. Ow! You can make scarier noises than that. You sound like Pop putting on his shoes. I'm stuck. Get me out of here. Go on. Bring back our little butterball. <laughs> Easy. You're going to pull my arm off. This is ruining my hair. <clears throat> what the hell are you doing in here? I got scared out there alone. I hear this house is haunted. Just back out so we can start the scam. <laughs> I'm stuck. <laughs> I'm calling the psychic. Happy birthday, former subordinate. Jesus, that thing's more fireball than cake. How old are you? What's this? An office birthday party? Why wasn't I invited? I like cake. I like singing. You know what? Regina tourism includes everyone in birthday celebrations. Everyone or no one. <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. I gotta live with him. That must be about as fun as a chapped ass on a long bike ride. Let me tell you something about Boss Man. He once created an app named Roxy to call his phone every day so people would think he had a girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Big Shot's too good for blow-up dolls. And get this, he still sleeps with plastic sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped wetting the bed in my 20s. Oh, it gets better. Whenever he watches scary movies, he has to sleep in our bed. <laughs> You're fired! What? Oh, hey, Roxy. Now's not a good time. Can I call you back, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Cook! We're out of pork rinds! So go to the store and get some! But I want to see if she says yes to the dress! The dad's a cheapo and I think he's about to have a stroke. Huh? There he goes. What a day. Someone pooped in my desk. Guess I owe Toby five bucks. Can you turn on the news, please? And get your feet off the couch. But my big fat Alaskan gypsy lumberjack wedding is on next. When you work all day, you can watch whatever moronic show you want. That's not fair! Petey, for Christ's sake, just hire your father back. Why would I hire a guy who thinks the photocopier is an ass camera? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go back even if you paid me. And by the way, I'm still getting paid. Of course you are. It's a Canadian government job. How do you drink this stuff? Where's Mademoiselle Kanya? I left her a message hours ago. I'm calling again. I told you we shouldn't have left our phones in the car. The last thing we need is you texting some meathead boy toy while we're working. Don't be stupid. Big Mike can't read. Ah, oh, I'm starving. Help! Get us out of here! Shut up! Why should he? Aside from losing a little weight, there's no plus side to being trapped in here. Help! Old houses have so much character. If these walls could talk... Well, they're talking now, Dan! Happy! You hear that? <clears throat> you had your freaking phone the whole time? I was saving the battery for selfies. Quick, the battery's dying. 
Brian. Who are you calling? I'm calling Ma to come and get us. Crook, before you do anything, bring us a jumbo cheese and answer me. Agnes, I need us to pull together as a team, okay? There is no I in team. But you can spell me with part of it and Ta with the other part. Great news, Petey. Premier O'Shea wants the tours bumped up to 12 a day. What? I suppose this means a few Regina After Dark tours. Sounds positively tantalizing. For Canada! We're lusting over a moonlit grain elevator is about to become a thing! Is he kidding? You guys are really gonna have to pull up your socks. Wait! Where are you going? To the liquor store to pull up her socks, you dick! Jeez, kid, you look terrible. Don't start. I'm not in the mood. Look, I'm not saying this as a disgruntled former employee that you totally screwed over. I'm saying this as your pop. You gotta quit. I can't. I just can't. Sure you can. You walk into your own office, you drop a deuce on the desk, and you strut out like a man. What's so hot about- Because I lied! I made up fake Regina history, so the tour would be more exciting. You bullcrap the whole thing? I'm impressed. If my lies are exposed, I'll be a laughing stock. I'm just gonna have to run the tour for the rest of my life. You're being a little dramatic. I'm glad to see them acting lessons paid off. That was Teresa! <sighs> Goodbye Ivy League PhD scholarship, hello basement apartment and TV dinners in my dirty underwear. That reminds me, where's Cheech? Look. I'm proud of you, son. You rose to the top on lies, and you'll do anything to protect the scam. Just like a true falcon. But... No. Oh, poor kid. Seriously, though, where the hell's Cheech? Where the hell's everybody? Ah, oh, yes. The spirits are present, and they are... Stalling! Poor things don't know they crossed over. Probably died because they cut the wrong person out of a job. Can you get rid of them? Yes. But you must leave this place, so I have a clear channel with the little shits. I mean spirits. You know, I should leave you three up there to rot for not cutting me in on this. It was them, Cook. I begged. I pleaded. But they wouldn't have you. Nice impression of Pop, you rat. I've been running spirit scams longer than all of you. Fine, sorry. Now get us out of here and we'll give you... 30%. 70. 50. Have a nice afterlife. Wait! Don't go! 80% we got a deal. Deal. Cheech! Get ready to cross over to the other side! <laughs> you hit Cheech in the face! Rumor has it... <gasps> Ooh, that's where the wheat pirates buried their treasure before sailing back to Alberta. What is it, Pop? Too bad the bus didn't start, huh, son? You're welcome. What are you talking about? I cut the starter cable so you wouldn't have to do the tour. No bus, no tour. Bingo, bango, you're off the hook. I'm driving the bus right now with a bunch of tourists. In fact, I just drove through a red light. Pop, you cut the brake line. Well, I cut something and would appreciate a thank you. I can't stop, I can't stop. That's the floor where they shot Titanic. Gordon Life, I gotta hop it on that bench. That silence full of candy. There's a bunch of zombies in that house. Ooh, zombies. You're headed right for the lake! It's okay, Pop! This is an amphibious bus! I don't know what that means! It's a bus and a boat! <laughs> yeah, right! Y'all right, kid? Better than the boss. Ah! Oh my god! Zombies! <sighs> so hungry. Best tour ever! I suppose the lesson here is that one should never lie to get ahead in a work situation. Nah, the lesson is you should always have a full guy to blame in case you get caught. 
No, it's that you should never cut your mother out of a good scam. Would you guys shut up? We can't hear the TV. Pick a fucking dress already. They're all the same. This dress is so tight. Can you help me take it off? Oh! Oh! What the hell are we watching? Say yes. Oh, God, yes, yes to the dress. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. But it's so beautiful. La 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 you doing? Back where I grew up, you had three career options. Cop, priest, a gangster. My old man was a wise guy, so that's what I was. Who doesn't want to grow up to be their pop? Unless he's a priest. Then you got bigger problems. Or a cop. In which case, fuck you. What the hell's that? I hit something? Jimmy, what are you doing back here? Impersonating a spare tire. What's it look like? I want to learn the family business from Pop. You're too young for this kid. Go hit your ride home. At his age? Are you nuts? That ain't safe. Here, take this with you. I wanted Pop to let me stay, but he was being such a prick. I mean, it's not like I was some kind of moron or anything. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. We're out here to whack Polly anyway. <laughs> You made your bones, kid. You murdered a man and bonded with your father over it? Technically, it was manslaughter. And I'm just saying, it was a nice moment. Not for Paulie, it wasn't. Gut shots take forever to kill you. Bastard lingered for days. Now listen to him, Pop. I think bonding over some Jagoff with more holes in him than Swiss cheese would be great. Let's start with Cheech. <laughs> This kid, <laughs> what a card. <laughs> but if you think people up here in Mother Canada don't got any daddy issues, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. I hope taking me to the antique fair wasn't too traumatic for you fellas. At first, I wanted to blow my brains out, but then I got numb from boredom. Now that I've been antiquing, it's okay for me to admit that I like show tunes, right? Because I love show tunes. Look at that animal running right beside us, running really, really fast. What show is that from? It ain't. Look. Oh, I got 400 horsepowers here, and she's keeping up with me. Yeah, but the horses in the engine are teeny tiny. For Christ's sake, slow down, Jimmy. What for? Oh, that. This wouldn't have happened if Cheech bungeed it to the roof like I said. If I knew what bungee meant, I'd have done it. But I don't, so I didn't. We're gonna get rich racing this horse we bought. I'm gonna name it in honor of Cookie. Really? Yep, I'm calling this filly Cookie's fucking wardrobe. Cause that's all we heard about on the ride home. That's sweet, Jimmy. But are you sure it's a filly? I checked, right up to my elbow. Sorry I missed antiquing in Moose Jaw Cookie. Uh, sweet Canadian pickers. What a lovely wardrobe. And who's this? <laughs> This is Cookie's fucking wardrobe. Yes, I realize it's Cookie's, Jimmy, but what of this horse? It's Cookie's fucking wardrobe. We've established who owns the wardrobe. No need for... Oh, I see. Her name is Cookie's Fluffra wardrobe. That's terrible. Beats calling a horse. Is that so? I'll have you know that I and horse both happen to think that horse is a perfectly utilitarian moniker. You can't name something what it is. That's stupid. What am I going to do? 
Go inside and say hello to my two girls, daughter and antichrist? Hey, look, it's my son! Massive disappointment! Hey! It looks as good as new, which means you screwed up. It's supposed to look old, like an antique. Hey, nice cupboard, Ma. It's not a cupboard, Ignoramus. It's an armoire. Don't talk to my daughter that way. Oh, my God, do you realize what you just did? I gave him a dirty look. That was no mere dirty look. You have the Malocchio. But I don't want to be a real boy. It's the Sicilian evil eye. The power to curse anyone who crosses you with medium to serious misfortune. Does this mean I have to do stuff? I, I don't want to do stuff. It's a gift that runs in our family, but skips a generation. I always thought Gina'd be the one to get it. Ha! In your face, Gina! Teresa, the Malocchio is nothing to be trifled with. You got a lot to learn, young lady. I know. Like what the hell trifled with means? You're both nuts. There's no such thing as the Malocchio. It's a silly superstition. Don't you diss my magic curse and stink eye. Ooh, I'm real scared. <laughs> ha! Am I throwing this race or what? Ah, you don't gotta throw nothing. This animal runs like my bowels on taco night. Yo, Cheech, looks like we're not allowed to race. Cookie's fucking wardrobe is pregnant. Don't look at me, I pulled out. Sorry, it's my go-to when I hear someone's with child. The dipshit duo blows it again. I'll be in the lounge. Do not join me! I had a lot of money riding on this animal. How'd she get knocked up? My cool, that's how. I bet that horse of his did it. I can't say I blame her. Horse is hung like a McCool. Jimmy, we gotta get what's coming to us. And we'll do it like our Sicilian ancestors did. In paternity court. Jimmy, this is preposterous. Relax, McCool. We're suing the RCMP, not you personally. Yes, you are. The department says I'm responsible for horse's actions. Geez, that changes things. You saved me a trip downtown. Thanks. I want the truth. Read back that testimony. I want the truth. <laughs> I really shouldn't. I have a race coming up. Oh, come on, baby. You know I love you. Oh, okay. <gasps> but use a condom. I thought you were on the pill. I am, but it don't protect you from the clock. Hey, I'm clean. I just got out of a long-term relationship. Sounds like someone likes to commit. Get on with it! <clears throat> I gotta prove you're actually knocked up. Uh, think about running water. You know, I object over rule. Sorry, I thought about running water. <laughs> anyway, I rest my case. Oye, oye, court is now in session. What the hell is this? The judge is here, we can start for real. But I got a surprise witness. He did the same thing to me. <laughs> Where'd you get that? Betting on the ponies. Yeah? Well, how about giving your big sister a cut? No way! The hobos who laid the bets for me ain't getting a cut. Why should you? Oh, you better think twice before you mess with me, you gypsy wannabe. You think twice. I mo Cacino, the lunch lady, and she fell into a pot of soup. She get burned? Nah, it was cafeteria soup. It's lukewarm at best. But she did have to go home and change. You ain't getting shit. Put that in your soup. Hey, I think the effects of the curse wear off after a couple of days. Court again, Agent McCool. I'm sorry, Your Honor. When you were a boy, your mother was in here suing your father, Staunch McCool, for alimony. Alimony that remains unpaid to this day, Your Honor. I see. So, we've got Cookie's f***ing wardrobe versus horse. What's your horse's name? Horse. Yes, the horse. What is its name? Horse. You're trying my patience, Special Agent. His name is Horse, Your Honor. Well, no wonder he's impregnating fillies willy-nilly. Give the animal!
demo the dignity of a proper name, sir! It is a proper name, and that is not the concern of this nosy, nosy court! Straight McCool! I find you in contempt! Furthermore, I find in favor of the plaintiff, Agent McCool is ordered to pay all damages! What? We won! Without even saying a word! Makes you think, huh? How different would my life be if I just kept my mouth shut? Yo, toots! Nice cans! Ma'am, I'm sorry, that was very disrespectful. What I meant was, nice cans, your honor. <sighs> According to this, I owe you tens of thousands of dollars. I'd hate for this to ruin our friendship. Yeah, that would be terrible. Now pay up or I'll break your knees. How am I supposed to raise that much money on a civil servant's salary? Your pop, he's out there living the high life, totally crushing the whole dead be dead thing. Where did you get these? Oh, I got my ways, McCool. Petey found them on the internet? Yes. He's at the Banff Springs Hotel. Let's get him. He pays you, you pay us, everybody's happy. Except you. All right, I'll do it. Frankly, I relish the opportunity to righteously confront my no-account deadbeat father. I can't face him! Don't make me go! I'm scared, Jimmy, please! I just can't do it! I'll be in our room stress-eating minibar peanuts! You believe this guy? What a baby! No kidding. Look at him running off like a yellow-bellied scaredy cat. Ah! 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 <laughs> My hiding spot. Get out! No! Someone criticized Teresa at lunch and she turned the cafeteria into the prom scene from Carrie. Oh, let's end this. We'll drive a stake through her heart. That's for vampires. Don't you know anything about the supernatural? Ugh, if you went to Catholic school, you'd know this stuff. You're hiding from Teresa, too? Sure. She's and people left and right like a drunken gunslinger. But I got a plan. I'm sick of being pushed around by that power-crazed little psycho. <sighs> oh, hi, baby. How's my favorite girl? Hey, sis, you look so good. Ah, crap, I can't do this. Just zap me right now. <laughs> Beat sucking your bony butt, I'll tell you that much. Baccarat! What for Dominic do? Gentlemen, welcome. Join us. The game's poker, but these fops think it's Baccarat. They don't speak English, nor do they understand cards. It's like taking candy from several sleazy babies. Excuse me, are you Stunch McCool? The one and only, good sir. I need to talk to you about something from your past. My past, eh? In that case, I'll pour you a drink. What's your poison? Cognac? Absinthe? Lithuanian discount? Cola? Hmm, that discount cola's pretty good. He's getting away. I got an idea. All right, let's get him. We gotta ditch some weight to go faster. Oh! Ah! The air's so thin up here, I can hardly move. I got this. Did the Marquis of Catalonia send you because I slept with his sister? What? No! Is this about the gun smuggling to the Congo? Please, do you expect those child soldiers to arm themselves? No! Straight McCool sent me because you slept with his mom. This is the riot of my life! Coincidentally, that's exactly what I said to Straight's mother. All right, kid. I'm taking away your allowance, I'm grounding you, and I shredded your driver's license. Ma, what the hell are you doing? I'm teaching Teresa values. Give me that stuff back, or I'm gonna super triple Pinocchio ya! You haven't got the balls. Ew, yeah, no, I don't have balls. But that's got nothing to do with this. <laughs> ha! Malocchio'd by your own Malocchio. Eh, that sounds lame. Hoist by your own petard. Not as lame as that. What's gonna happen to me? No! 
I've gone full frizz! Someone wants to meet you, McCool. Ask him for the money. Hello, Straight. Been a long time. How dare you try to shake my hand? Mother had to take in sewing and moonlight as a dominatrix because of your neglect. And you never came to my birthday parties. I offered to pay, but she refused. Said my money was dirty and ill-gotten from card hustling and shady deals. Not to mention the counterfeit My Little Pony merchandise. That's a lie, damn you! I'm no monster! Why didn't you answer my letters? Did your mother burn them without showing them to you? How would I know? I don't see the resemblance, do you? If it's money you want straight, I'll gladly wire it from my bank in Geneva. But in the meantime, let's make up for all the lost years and get to know each other. <gasps> Son. Wire from Geneva, all this line in a book, as if McCool would fall for that. No, oh, Papa! No, oh, straight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Are you nuts inviting this guy to stay with you? He's a con man! Let he who is without sin cast the first stone. What is that, the Beatles? The Bible, Jimmy! Oh, must have skimmed that part. Jimmy's right. I've been a deadbeat, and I said all the same things that he's saying to you. Just not as fancy. But he's my father. He'd never lie to me. Come straight. Let's do all the things I missed when you were growing up. Start with giving him lots of money. Oh, we're changing his diapers. I hear that's real nice. Why are you dressed like a female gym teacher? I tried washing my clothes. The washer caught fire and burned him. This stupid curse is the worst. <laughs> ah! Are you kidding me? How'd this get in here? The Malocchio works in mysterious ways. Help me, Ma. I want to be rid of this. All right, but it's going to be tough. First, I need your picture. Wait, I should do my hair. <laughs> Staunch, where's the money? Patience, Jimmy, it's on the way. Isn't it, Dad? Indeed. I spoke to my bank manager, Hans, and he assured me that... Hans? That name sounds as made up as all your excuses. So you doubt my word, good sir, and I use good sir sarcastically. I'll write straight a check for the full amount. <sighs> I bet that ain't worth the paper it's printed on. Actually, it's gold flake paper. Very expensive. Oh, real nice, Dad. This is from my Cayman Island account. It'll take a day or two to clear. Oh, Christ, another dodge. Jimmy, until this check clears, I don't want to see you, understood? Unless there's witness protection business, or if you need anything, or if you just need a chat. But outside of that, you are persona non grata while my father is visiting. Good day, sir. OK, I'm ready. What do we do? Sit, my child. Here's the thing about the Malocchio. The curse wears off after a while, but there's always the danger of being recursed. One could say it's a recursive curse. Or one could shut up and let Mama talk. Sorry. Anyway, Teresa, I can't take the evil eye away from you, but I can do this. Gina? Did you put those pictures online? Not yet, we didn't. But if you ever give anyone in this house the Malocchio again... Your social life goes kablooey. Uh-uh-uh. Okay, you win. I'll learn to control it. For the record, recursive means occurring repeatedly. And since we're on the subject of a curse that can reoccur, recursive is a doubly amusing wordplay because... No one can! PD. All right, we gotta prove once and for all that McCool's pop is a no good grifter, and we'll do it by breaking into his house. <laughs> Actually, let's just use the door. Canucks always leave them unlocked. Ah, oh, Jimmy! It's breaking and entering, not entering. <laughs> Stupid. 
Alpha Stoikos quadruple jump! What are you two doing? We got him, McCool, and we got him red-handed. I told you my red hands were from eating pistachios. Looky here. Credit cards, and not a single one with his name on it. Passports from different countries, different aliases. And a bag of mustaches. I'll bet this one ain't even real. Ow! It's real, you twit! He's a flim-flam man. We just can't figure out if he's flimming ya or flamming ya. I assure you, my intent is neither to flim nor to flam. Then why do you got McCool's banking information written down here? For the money I owe him! But, but I didn't give you that information. I found your bank book. I had every intention of ripping you off! Don't listen to them, son! They're idiots! They couldn't find tar to tar and feather me, so they used maple syrup. Jimmy kept drinking it. Then Cheech tried to get feathers out of a phone pillow for an hour! Straight, I am not a good man. In fact, if I didn't escape from Morocco when I did, I wouldn't still be a man at all. But I never lied to you. Not my own flesh and blood. But he did break your window. <laughs> The baby horse is crowning! I can't believe I ran my own father out of town on a rail. Literally, the 315 to BC. You did the right thing. Sooner or later, he would have ripped you off and ripped out your heart. Which would not be as gross as what I'm looking at right now. I was blinded by the need for a father figure. But who needs that when one has such good friends? You still owe me the money. <sighs> I know, Jimmy. I know. Oh, I finally gave horse a name, didn't I? Tiefenbaker. <laughs> Excuse me a moment. Special Agent Straight McCool. Here it comes. Ew. Ew. Ah. Um, that's not a horse, that's a mule. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, Jesus Christ. What? Mules happen when horses do it with a donkey. Cookie's fucking wardrobe was knocked up when we bought her. Good news, you're off the hook. Thief and Baker ain't the father. No, splendid. Because if I did have to pay you, I have the money. My father's check cleared. Oh? He was telling the truth, Jimmy. My long-lost father was telling the truth the whole time. How do you like that? I was so sure he was a dirtbag. Well, I guess we better sue the guy who sold us a pregnant horse. Perfect! I'll go get my lawyer wig. Yo, McCool, can I count on you as a witness? For Canada, where apparently a jackass can ride a jackass! <laughs> hey, Jimmy, can I go next? La 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 how you doing? I'm the FBI informant and shell of a man formerly known as Jimmy Falcone. One thing I don't miss about the old life is how nobody did nothing without an interior motive. Oh, Frankie brought cake. Really? What's the occasion? What? I need an occasion to do something nice? Mm. To my brother-in-law. Before or after the sugar high, you lazy bastard. Thanks for helping me move, Joe. No problem. Just help me get these on the truck. And it didn't matter how small the favor. They always expected something in return. Really, Joe? You moved like one box. Thanks for driving us to the airport, Bruno. Here, swallow these. You'll need a laxative when you land. Your brother-in-law says, hey. <coughs> I'm gonna need that laxative. Here in the great bland north, people are nice for no reason at all. It gives me the creeps. I still haven't figured out their angle, but if you think I'll ever get used to Canadian polititude, you can f <laughs> Hey, the drugs came out. Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. 
Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. And the answer to what sexual position are you is missionary. <laughs> Stupid online quiz. I thought for sure I'd get Belgian wishbone. That was there when I got here. And I need a new computer. No problem, Jimmy. So last night I was at home thinking about you. Long and hard. <laughs> it occurred to me what a breath of fresh air you've been to this office. And I wanted to show my appreciation. So, what do you want? Nothing, Jimmy. Want me to whack somebody? Oh, gosh, no. Move some merchandise? Not at all. Then what is it? It's just a cake, Jimmy. I also wanted to give you a hug, but provincial guidelines forbid it. So I got you a hug mug instead. I don't know what to say. I'm... I'm very confused. Oh, look, your uncle is here. Hey, Slugger. <laughs> Look at you! <laughs> I love this kid. What a face! Now get out of here, champ. Who's that schmuck? What are you doing here, Cheech? My printer's on the fritz. Paper jam? Nah, I shot it. No one tells Cheech Falcone to load cyan cartridge. I gotta print some pictures of cats asking for cheeseburgers. No, you don't. How else am I supposed to share them with my friends? Get with the future, Jimmy. A, you're not stealing my printer. B, you got no friends. And C, get the f out of my office. You didn't say there was going to be a test. I'm out of here. Vagina tourism. Yo, this thing prints in color, right? <laughs> God damn it! What did I say? You printer stealing motherfucker! I had to rip your fucking head off and shove it straight up your fucking wazoo! Okay, Jimmy. Thanks. Ah, uh, Jimmy, we should talk about that anger <laughs> right after I change my pants. Sorry I had to knock with my boot. You can knock boots here anytime, McCool. <laughs> it appears Gina somehow got a hold of my uh, handcuffs and I need the keys. Well, looky here. Our big Mounties in handcuffs. <laughs> Ooh, I wonder if he's ticklish. Will you stop? <laughs> oh, this is highly irregular. <laughs> Ladies, stop. <laughs> you want those keys? You're gonna have to give us something, McCool. Yeah, dance! Certainly not. <laughs> 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 For crying out loud. Here, let him go. You're taking all the fun out of illegal confinement. Gina Madonna Falcone, you're confined to your room for the rest of the day for this little stunt. <laughs> I could do that standing on my head. That's gonna give you a bald spot. I'm not actually standing on my head, genius. Cookie, have you ever thought of enrolling Gina in the Scared Straight program? Is that when hardened criminals yell and intimidate kids? Because that's dinner at our house. Early prevention is crucial for wayward youth. In my spare time, I volunteer with at-risk children who... Yeah, yeah, scared straight, you're a saint. I get it. Now, what are you gonna give me for these keys? I'm confused, Toby. You never get mad. What do you know about anger management? <laughs> oh, Jimmy. I'm angry in ways that defy logic and international convention. But I manage my anger issues. I don't got angry issues. My uncle was just driving me nuts. Can I go? You can't blame family for pushing your buttons. That's called deflecting. Guess who's getting a gold star? Boop! You try living with a nut job like Cheech. He doesn't just push buttons. He craps on them and doesn't flush. I have a family member who's hard to deal with, Jimmy. Why don't you come to my house for dinner and see how I deal with my hard member? Oh, can I come too? Any more questions? Why do I have to go to prison? You got your damn keys back, didn't you? Yes, but I had to promise your mother a summer of yard work in my Daisy Dukes. In any case, this is the intake where they check convicts for contraband. You missed a few things. 
scored down his impenetrable lyrics. What do you need with all these weapons? How else am I supposed to make someone my bitch? <laughs> what was that for? She was reaching for the rubber gloves. I know what that means. All right, now, take me to jail. Where are you going? Out for dinner. Great. I'll get my coat. Keep your coat. I'm going alone. But I'm starving. There's never any food around here. Aw, oh, leftovers again. <sighs> what are you gonna do? I'm here now. All right, fine. But be on your best behavior. That's my boss's house. Church rules, okay? Right. The pants stay on. I know Cheech wasn't invited, but he tagged along anyhow. See what I mean about this guy? This is why you're here. To see how I deal with my own Uncle Cheech. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Good one. Who are these dicks? <clears throat> uh, this is Jimmy and his Uncle Cheech. Guys, this is my mom, Greta. Hey, jerks. Check this out. Come on. How about now? What I have for lunch? Guess I'll get dinner on the table. Oh, my thong's chafing. I'll be right back. Jesus, what a monster. Toby didn't even flinch. That's impressive. No, Jimmy. That's impressive. An ugly statue of a goose? That ugly statue is the Gibraltar goose. It's worth a fortune. People have been cutting each other's throats to get their hands on it forever. I had it once but it slipped through my fingers. I killed my best friend, double-crossed my mother, and betrayed the woman I love. But I finally got you. This time, Coney Island. Oh, roller coaster! I tried to get it back, but I was out of subway tokens. This here, Goose, is the stuff dreams are made out of, Jimmy. Well, don't get any ideas about stealing it. What's eating you? Toby's trying to help me. You're not robbing him. Rob him? I don't even know who he is. <clears throat> Give me the, the hand. Let go of the... I said hands off! Jimmy, stop abusing Uncle Cheech. This is not how you deal with anger. It's hummus, for Christ's sake. I had hummus. <laughs> the barista gave me cinnamon sprinkles instead of chocolate. I spoke very sharply to her manager. <laughs> I'm a monster! I just want to cut myself over and over and... Hold that thought, Agnes. I want to focus on someone who really <laughs> needs help. Jimmy, is there anything you'd like to talk about? Why, yes, there is. I move that these meetings be catered. Someone's deflecting again. What was it Cheech did last night that made you want to... What was it? Skull bang him straight to hell. Whatever he did, <sighs> I have learned that I can't be responsible for his behaviors, only for mine own. Question for the group. Who's getting a gold star today? Not Agnes, I'll goddamn tell you that. Boop. And speaking of Cheech, did you know he asked my mom out on a date? And she said, fuck yes, end quote. Isn't that great, Jimmy? We'll practically be brothers. Call off the date, Cheech. No can do. I really like this broad. Give me a break. You're just using her. Keep your hands off that freaking goose, capiche? You got it all wrong, Jimbo. I want to woo this dame, show her a good time, make her feel good, then rob her blind? Nah. Bang her in the back seat of the car, in her butt. Oh, and I'm borrowing the SUV. Think you're tough? I eat tough for breakfast. Sometimes a smoothie. I'm doing 10 years for robbery. Got caught because my tank was empty. Worst part is, I was robbing a gas station. Isn't it ironic? Get out of my head, Alanis! What a mook. What'd you say to me? You're a mook of the phone, a stronzer. Don't you speak English? Robbing a gas station? Get some fucking class. Banks are where it's at. You strap a bomb to your chest and pretend you're a victim. Empty the vault, or they splatter me all over this joint. You with me so far? Then hand off the money to the accomplice while the cops are busy with a bomb on your chest. 
You give the Fuzz a bogus description of the robbers so they don't know who the hell they're looking for. Then meet up with your friend, get the cash, and stick a knife in his back. Right, McCool? Sweet, blessed monarchy. Yo, this advice ain't free. Give me all your cigarettes. <laughs> oh, Jimmy, this is so romantic. I can't remember the last time you wined and dined me. Let's say we sneak into the bathroom for a little appetizer. <laughs> sure, get an appetizer. Who gives a sh**? Are you even listening to me? Why do you keep looking over there? <laughs> oh, God! You brought me here just so you could watch Cheech? So what? I can't sit by myself like some pathetic loser. Hey! Oh, where are you going? You're spying on your elderly uncle while he's on a date. You got some serious problems, Jimmy. Who's pathetic now? Still you. Yeah. <laughs> He's giving her the old Belgian wishbone. <laughs> Ooh, that's nasty. Moussaka! You hear that, Toby? He got it on the first try. Who's Toby? <laughs> What's your game here, Cheech? Ha! I could ask you the same thing. Toby, I can explain. No need, Jimmy. You're under a lot of strain coping with your feelings towards your uncle. Not to mention the ridiculous pressures at work. Actually works pretty easy. Oh, you're such a trooper. That's why you deserve that cake. Toby, listen. Cheech is going to rob your mother. Too late, Jimmy. He already stole her heart and some change from the bedside table. But don't worry, we're gonna get you the help you need. My name is Jimmy McDougal and- Uh, Jimmy? <sighs> My name is Jimmy McDougal and I am a peeping Tom. Uh, that's my seat. Finally, some action around here. But I can sit somewhere else if you're already eating. Oh, look, you are, aren't you? Sorry, I'll just go. <laughs> Lord Stanley's Cup! We've never had a riot before. Gina, hit the floor. I will come and get you. Don't bother. I'm just starting to have fun. But you're in danger. Ha! But cool! All right, Cheech. How you gonna steal the goose if it's already stole? Stolen. Damn it. What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, Jimmy? <gasps> are you spying on Cheech and my mother again? What? No, no, no not at all. <sighs> I think maybe you need another session at Peeping Tom's Anonymous. You got it all wrong. I'm just trying to stop Cheech from robbing your mother. Look, let me show you. God, no! I don't want to see it! Ah, crap, it's stuck. Jimmy, please, don't show it to me! It's very inappropriate! Come on, baby, come on. Here it comes, right there. Right there. <laughs> For the love of God, right Jimmy! There. Stop masturbating in front of me! Right there! <laughs> Peking Duck. Nailed it! <laughs> Why are we having a stapler safety meeting? Sounds made up and stupid. You know what they say. An ounce of prevention is worth 0.4 kilograms of cure. <laughs> oh, I can't lie to you, Jimmy. But you're gonna thank me after this. After what? Your intervention! Oh, Jesus Christ. These people are here because they love you. Except my mom. She's here because her finger's stuck in Cheech's zipper. I was giving him a diddle. Everyone has written a letter about how your problem has affected them. All we ask is that you hear us out. Yeah, come on, Jimmy. You're tearing this family apart or something. Don't you start with me, Cheech. Will you listen to what the people who love you have to say, Jimmy? You bet your ass he will. Wait a sec. Where's Gina? McCool took her to prison. That's about the only thing that makes any sense right now. All right. Cookie, you're first. <sighs> Sorry. This is hard for me. <clears throat> okay. Dear Jimmy, you owe me a dinner! Love, Cook. That was beautiful. 
Sometimes we have to listen to what isn't being said, Jimmy. Can I listen from the bar down the street? Okay, who's next? Dear Jimmy, you know when you got a whiz at night, but you don't want to turn the lights on because it hurts your eyes? Well, what if you put lights around the toilet seat? So, Cheech, what the hell are you doing? I'm reading my invention letter. Okay, Teresa. I didn't know we were reading these out loud. Be brave. This is a safe place. Sad face, angry face, thumbs down, dark clouds, Japanese goblin! What are you talking about? I wrote my letter in emojis. That is so dumb face. Dear father, this is the hardest thing I've ever had to write. You are more important to me than- Boring! You make me want to be a better man, you know that? All right, that is it! But I'm not finished my- Katie, I'm talking here! You want to know what my problem is? I'll tell you. The only reason Cheech is going out with Greta is so he can steal her goose. Don't you mean gobble her goose? Ew! I just pictured it! It's the Gibraltar goose! It's this famous old statue that's worth a lot of money. <gasps> Ain't that right, Cheech? You have always been my rock. Jimmy, you of all people should know how hard I've tried, how long I've searched for the one thing that has deluded me all these years. See? He's after the goose. I'm after love. And now that I finally got it, you want to take it away from me. My port in the storm. But now, I think you owe Uncle Cheech an apology. I got Cheech's apology right here. I'm not the one with the problem. It's you people. You're all crazy. Call me when you're having a real stateless safety meeting. Ever since I was a little boy, I long for... I think that went well, don't you, Uncle Cheech? Have we met? <laughs> <laughs> Canadian prisons are the kindest in the world. Why are they doing this? Stop, Stop rioting, rioting this, this instant. instant! Screw you! Someone's coming out with demands! I say this at the risk of being unsportsmanlike, but as soon as the bastard shows himself, make an example of him. Cancel that order! Stand down, stand down! Gilbert, lower the shotgun! Gina, thank goodness you're all right. Those cowards sending a child to do their dirty work. You want to hear the demands of what? Yes, but first, let's get you to safety. Never mind that. There's only one demand, McCool. Don't ever try to scare me straight again. That's why they're rioting? Yeah, they do whatever I tell them. Now, do we got a deal or what? Yes, fine, but how? All right, Jagoffs, back to your cells. No one mentions this at the staff meeting, understood? I'm looking at you, Gilbert. Drift in a sea of sorrow, and I want to. What's going on here? Oh, come on! See? I caught him red handed. She is trying to steal the goose. In fact, they all are! If I wasn't so damn mad, I'd be pretty proud right now. For the last time, I ain't here to steal no goose. I'm here for love. Greta, I want to say, Smith, will you make me the happiest man in vagina and become my wife? Oh, Cheech, yes. I can't wait for you, me, and Toby to start our new life together. Who's Toby? I'm Toby! Me! Me! How can you not know that by now? I co-signed your small business loan! I gave you a bath! I helped you design the toilet light! Oh, nice to meet you. I am Toby! Nice to meet you! I'm Toby! Toby! Got that? T-O-B-Y! Tell me! O-H-E double hockey sticks! What a kid at? <laughs> you never mentioned you had a kid. I was young. I needed money. But no one would buy the baby off me. Yo, back off. I can't be in a relationship without trust. I don't suppose you learned anything from this experience? Just how to turn a toothbrush into a knife and make a bomb out of coffee creamers. What am I going to do with you, Gina? I don't know, but after this debacle, 
I'm gonna have your badge. Because I placed you, a miner, inside a prison among hardened criminals and a riot broke out? No, because I lifted it just now while you were yakking. That's your cue to hop on your horse and yell something stupid, hotshot. <sighs> What's this for? I brung you a cake. I gotta have a reason. Look inside. I knew it! You were gonna steal it the whole time. Not at all. But that bitch lied to me. You lie to me, I steal your goose. General principles. So? What's it worth? Nothing. It's a Chinese knockoff. Hi, Chief. <laughs> it's Tracy, right? La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone. I used to be part of a crime family in New York, and like any father, I wanted to see if my son was cut out for the family business. But you can't just jump into extortion, racketeering, and murder. You gotta take baby steps. See that guy delivering papers on your block? Your turf? Don't you want a piece of that action? Go. There you go. Look out! He's supposed to beat the kid up and take his money. What's he doing? He's working, Jimmy. Makes me sick. Okay, so we find someone weaker. Build the kid's confidence. See that old deadbeat? He's behind on his payments. Take care of him. My first assault was an old guy, too. Look at him. This is humiliating. Ow! What the hell?! What's this about you grooming Petey to take over the family business? What? No! I can't believe you picked him over me! It's not like that! Fine! One day, I'm gonna start my own crew, and I will bury you, fat man! Anyhow, I realized Petey wasn't cut out for gangster. No sh Sherlock. But hey, now that I live in Regina and work in an office, maybe my son will finally follow in my footsteps. Actually, Pop, I'm gonna be a physicist. Yeah, right. Like you could ever be a gym teacher. <laughs> <laughs> Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Drive, Jimmy, drive! What's it look like I'm doing? Giving birth? Oh, I can't see! Ow! Ow! Okay, there's definitely a wall on your right side. Screw it! Now go on foot! <laughs> go on without me, Jimmy. Leave me to die. Oh, come on! You can't... I just need a case of beer! I can't believe you left me back there to die. We didn't make it. It's closed. Kill me now, Jimmy, please. Hey, McCool, when I agreed to move to Canada, nobody told me the government controls the liquor. They also control gambling, medical marijuana, and heroin injection sites. No matter what your vice, Canada's got you covered. Why can't I get a freaking bottle of booze after 9 p.m.? Jimmy, the days of drive through liquor at alcoholic enabling prices are behind you. Mother Canada is here to save you from yourself. For Canada, where no one has fun after 9 p.m. Hey! Except in Quebec. Yeah. Oh, cheer up. One night without a few drinks ain't gonna kill ya. That ain't the point. Nobody tells me when I can and can't enjoy a drink. Well, looks like Mother Canada just did, ya big baby. Screw this, I got an idea. Back in Prohibition days, how did people get booze? Mama used to blow sailors for a bottle of gin. Which way to the docks? Uh, for the last 
time, I didn't take your cheap gold-plated earrings that are only worth six bucks at the pawn shop. It's not that. It's my report card. I'm acing all my classes, straight Ds. Except I got this one F. You're failing P.E.? <laughs> Who the hell failed? Jim! I thought P.E. was a bathroom break. Anyway, if I fail, I fail the 11th grade. Coach says the only the only way I can pass it to sign up for an intramural sport. You ask me? The only sport we're signing up for is hockey. It's got speed, blades, and fighting. I don't know. You're right. Look at the bright side. After you fail, you and P in the same grade. Yeah, you can be lab partners. Sharing a locker, eating lunch at the nerd table. Stop it, stop it! I'll play hockey! Ah, but it's gonna suck to have three periods. You boys do realize the liquor store's open again. We don't need them no more. Mother Canada can blow me. Well, don't come crying to me if drinking that crap makes you go blind. Jimmy, if we do go blind, can I get a monkey? Hey, this beer ain't half bad. Half bad? It's whole good. What a relief. Now we don't gotta throw all this out. <laughs> Oh, for crying out loud, I am getting sick of you two sitting around drinking beer all day. You want to be bums? Go do it in the garage. We can't, because the garage is full of beer. Oh! Ow. Ow. Well, could you at least quit using our living room as your own personal clubhouse? Why are you getting on our case, Cook? We ain't hurting no one. Oh, no? What about the example you're setting for the kids? Nah, they know better than to sit around drinking like degenerates. What are you looking at, old man? You wanna fight? I'll fucking fight ya! I don't know why I didn't think of this place sooner. It's right next door and no one's lived here for months. It's gonna be perfect. Our own personal clubhouse. I always wanted to have a man cave. It wasn't, you know, an actual cave. Okay, let's work on the fundamentals. You mean skating and teamwork? Nah, forget all that. First off, both ends of your stick come in handy. <laughs> See? It's easy to make that one look accidental if you're keeping up appearances. Now later, when you're not, this is called shirting. You do this on the street, you get five months. In here, you get five minutes. God, I love this game. <laughs> Once we get power, we should put in a big screen TV and a jukebox. And a bubble machine, Jimmy. Nothing says man cave like a bubble machine. I thought this place was empty. It's supposed to be. Come on. Hey, maybe it's one of them polter ghosts. You mean Geist. What the hell's a Geist a ghost? <laughs> ah, there's nothing here. <laughs> How's it going, eh? Who the hell are you? And what are you doing in our clubhouse? I'm Mike, that's Ricky, and this here's Kenny. Thanks for giving me one of my beers. It's ghost beer now, Jimmy. Let it go. Something tells me you're not the new owners. Well, no. We smelled fresh brew, door was open, The Matt said welcome. Would've been kind of rude not to come in, you know? Well, you guys are still trespassing. <sighs> come on, fellas. Let's go find a snowbank where we can drink in peace until the cops come. <laughs> Don't worry, Kenny. We'll find a warm place to drink this amazing beer. <laughs> really? You guys like it? Like it? It's the best. It's even better than what you get at the beer store. And I bet around here, we wouldn't have to worry about being cut off because we're all intoxicated. Or because they're closed. I know what that's like. You know what? Make yourself at home, boys. Cheers, fellas. Welcome to our club, where men are free to do whatever they want to do. What the hell are you doing, Cheech? I'm taking a dump on the floor. <clears throat> Freedom! <laughs> okay, we'll keep the party going till you guys get back, okay? <laughs> nice bunch of guys. Hey, McCool, what are you doing here? I felt bad about denying you and Cheetah's alcoholic tendencies the other night, so I'm here to show you that we Canadians still know how to have a good time. 
but not a long time. I have to work tomorrow. Sorry, but cool. We're drunk out. We've been partying with our neighbors all night. Great Giddy Lee! <laughs> Those are hosers! What the hell's a hoser? Allow me to enlighten you with this National Film Board of Canada educational film. The great Canadian hoser evolved under the harshest of winter conditions, but Homo hoserectus has proven himself a survivor. This meek creature got his name from having to flood or hose the ice after losing each hockey game. The hoser's inability to attract breeding partners has resulted in a steep decline in its population. Their struggle for survival is compounded by encroaching subcultures of emos, metrosexuals, and white people who like hip-hop. Today, sightings of this plaid-shirted nincompoop of the North are increasingly rare. For more information on the hoser, contact the Heritage Protection Council of Canada or visit your local beer store. Gentlemen, we are in the presence of a wonder of nature. <laughs> oh, yeah! That was excellent! It's too cold! My ankles hurt! I can't do hockey! Yes, you can! Just pretend the other team's a bunch of crazy broads at a shoe sale. Now get in there and take what's yours! I do. Not bad. Next time, don't hold back. Okay, this game is called Brewski Roulette. One of these beers is loaded, so you randomly pick one and open it near your face. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you been hosed, you hoser. <laughs> Now, oh! No, 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 this next game is choice. Okay, so like you take a nickel, eh? You put her between your cheeks, okay, and you get a clench on, right? And you just like, you know, give her. Whoa! <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you play bum darts. We have much to learn from your people. <clears throat> I think it went up. Oh. That's cheating! Ow! Two minutes for spearing. That's it! You're a growing girl! We'll be next door, eh? Again? That's the third night this week. I know, eh? But for the first time since we moved here, I met some fellas I can really relate to. Look at yourself. You can't walk two steps without breaking into a sweat. You smell like the floor of a saloon. And if you say A one more time without meaning the first letter of the alphabet, I'll twist your nuts off. I can still go, right? <laughs> Come on, Cookie. I'm just going over there for a quick round of bum dots. Jesus, it's worse than I thought. No, it's not what you think. It's just a fun little game. Jimmy, think back to the old life. When you were hanging around the club with your friends, did you guys ever play games that involved your butts? <sighs> now you put it like that, it sounds all kinds of wrong. Warm up the TV. I'm staying in. But first, I got to throw out all our nickels. <laughs> Oh, hello. You must be one of Teresa's many, many boyfriends. Petey, it's me. Have we met before? I can't quite place you. Well, better get back to the books. Nice meeting you. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> What's happening to me? <laughs> Just ignore them and they'll go away. What's the opposite of ignore? Because that's what I'm about to do. What are you idiots doing? 
I'm trying to watch TV with my wife, and you're breaking my windows. We just want you to come over, Jimmy. Kenny got fireworks. We're gonna set them off in the house. Normally, I'd bust your head open, but you get a pass because you're mentally challenged. Ooh, take off your dress, lady, and come party with some real men, eh? All right, I'm warning you now, and you only get one. <laughs> That's it! Yeah! Oh, Jimmy, I can't allow you to assault these gentlemen. What the hell are you doing? I reported the hoser sighting to the Heritage Protection Council of Canada, and they have proclaimed this land to be a national preserve, a protected domain for the endangered hoser peoples. Are you freaking serious? I'm as serious as an Adam Agoyan film. Oh, I think he just called Jimmy a gonad. They're here to stay, Jimmy, and you, I'm afraid, are trespassing. What? Jimmy, check out these birthday candles from Rome that Kenny gave me, and it ain't even my birthday. Ooh, that smarts. Yeah. Ow! Uh, Jesus, another one. Yeah. Oh. I think that's the last one. Come on, those Romans know how to party. Uh-uh-uh! <sighs> Look at these freeloaders living off the government like a bunch of war widows. Those stinking widows get all the breaks. <laughs> What the hell? Hi, Pop. Petey, what are you doing up there? I'm observing the neighbors for an anthropology paper. Hosers in the mist. I've collected fascinating data on their nesting patterns. I'm hoping to analyze a sample of their droppings. Some of them droppings are mine. How long you been up there? This is day six. You're hiding up a tree, spying on three men. Is that something I need to know about you, kid? No, but could you empty my pee jug? Whoa! Cool. Tell these morons to turn their music down. I wish I could, Jimmy, but Canadian classic rock from the 80s is their cultural birthright. Would you tell an Indian not to bang a drum? A Quebecer not to eat poutine? An Albertan not to marry his cousin? Oh, my parents were cousins. No, wait. Siblings. Hey, Jimmy! I got someone who wants to say hi! <laughs> yeah, this is awesome. Looking good, Mike. All right, if we can't touch these guys, we're just gonna have to drive them out. You want me to get the car? No, I want you to turn on the hose. Let the ice-related injuries begin. <gasps> Ow! Uh, Cheech, give me a hand here. Yeah, sure, Jimmy, I'll do- Whoa! Ah! Whoa! Ow! Hey! Wow! Woo! Ow. <laughs> oh, wow, Jimmy. How the hell are you staying on your feet? The old beer cap on the boot. What a noble people. They use every part of the beer. All right, we're gonna cut their power, because if I gotta listen to Raise a Little Hell by Trooper one more time, I'm going on a shooting spree. <laughs> what the? <laughs> Bastards. Time to play hardball. Nothing drives people out like good old toxic waste. That's probably what drove my third wife away. Yeah, Cheech, toxic waste. In your Brooklyn apartment. Beauty, eh? It's like the Northern Lights landed. You get the beer, I'll get the Kim Mitchell. That's it! One of us has got to go. So here's the deal. One game of Brewski Roulette. Mano Ahozo. If I win, you guys move away and never come back. Oh, you're on, eh? But if we win, we get your house. My house? All right, fine. Either way, I get you mooks out of my life. See you tomorrow. Tomorrow, and don't get cold feet. Oh, we will. I can't even feel my feet. What are you doing? You should be suiting up for the big game. I'm not playing. I'm out. I already got my PE credit. Are you kidding? You got a beautiful thing in your grasp, and I ain't letting you throw away my big chance. Your chance? How is this about you? Shut up and put on your skates, Frankenstein. If you like hockey so much, why don't you play? Because they won't let me. I don't want to give you the gory details, because there's a lot of them. But I got banned from hockey forever. Apparently, the only blades you can use are the ones in your skates. Oh, Gina, I had no idea. Why would you? You're as dumb.
dumb as a post. But you sure do shine on that ice. What a waste. Maybe I got one more game in me. You do? For you, I do. It's just the Moose Jaw Milkmaids, bunch of farmer's daughters, all creaming for you. You're the best, sis. All right, cut it out. You're being scratchy me. According to the official rules of Brewski Roulette, scratched in the bar at Jerry's Tavern in Thunder Bay, three beers in the case are loaded. First one to spray two beers in his face loses, eh? Sounds legit. Jimmy, no! Have you lost your freaking mind? You're betting our house on a stupid drinking game? I won't let you do it. Ooh, shh! Shut up, you drunken mooch. Cookies are right. They're baiting you, Jimmy. You can't win. Hosers always think three beers ahead. I gotta do this. I can't live this way no more. Also, I'm kind of thirsty. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> uh. Ha! Nice one, Jimmy. <laughs> oh. Okay. No, just, uh... False alarm. <laughs> it's down to four beers. Two beers, Jimmy. Two. Shut up, my cools. Pack her up, eh? You've been hosed. Not so fast. I wanted to study the effects of imported beer on hoser physiology. Everyone knows a genuine hoser's body will reject any beer that isn't brewed in Canada. You've been drinking American beer. You hosers are posers. So what? Uh, bet's a bet, eh? And we won. That may be the case, but you will no longer enjoy the protective embrace of the Heritage Protection Council of Canada. Hosers are endangered, but goofball louts like you are a dime a dozen. You boys are on your own. Good day, eh? Well, Jimmy, looks like you better start packing. That was pathetic. I can't believe you lost! Who knew the Moose Jaw Milkmaids would be so freaking tough? Oh, look at that hot chick, eh? I'd sure like to slip a puck past her goalie. What did you say? Ah, oh, finally disposed of that toxic waste, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, that's it, toxic waste. <laughs> Saskatchewan, la 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 it was the day I had four root canals. Wise guys ain't big on dental work, but Cookie made me go. Mm. Word came down from Gambini. Cheech has got to die. Mm. Mm. But I forgot where he lives. I know, I'm a terrible friend. Now where is he so I can go kill him? Mm. 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 What'd he say? Quit stalling, Jimmy. I promise I'll make it quick and painless for him. Okay, only one of those is true. What language is that? Stroke victim? I was trying to plead for Cheech's life and explain that I'd just been to the dentist, but I couldn't get a word out. Ah, so this is where he is. There's a good boy, Jimmy. They didn't find Cheech, but they came away with something. <laughs> Uh, 
And that's why four out of five gangsters never go to the dentist. But if you think Canadian healthcare covers dental, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the couple with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. <laughs> then Mario says, Witch head, I got a suitcase full of them. <laughs> <laughs> I knew as much. As I settled in for an evening of whittling in CBC Radio, I heard a report of two rowdies causing a ruckus. Surprise, surprise, it's you two. We ain't drunk enough to cause no ruckus. <laughs> now we're ruckus. McCool, you know what your problem is? You don't know how to have fun. I certainly do. Why, just last week, I snowshoed across a barren, unforgiving tundra to go ice fish. Oh, very funny. Face it, you're boring. Boring, eh? We'll see about that. Bucky, fix me three prancing mounties. <gasps> What's that, a girly drink? Certainly not. Each ingredient of the prancing mountie is culled from Canada's finest fermenters and distillers. Plus seven ounces of 180 proof Jamaican rum. Yeah, girly drink. To Canada, where 0 .08 isn't the limit, it's the minimum. Uh, oh, what happened last night? Where the hell am I? This place looks familiar. <laughs> Jimmy, how much did we drink? I don't know, it's a blur. I had a horrifying nightmare in which, for some reason, we left Regina and... <gasps> Holy sh balls! Joni Mitchell's paved paradise! We're in New York! Why are we in New York? You tell me! You're the detective! This is clearly some kind of fever dream brought on by last night's debauchery. Here's what I'll do. I'm going to will myself unconscious, and when I awaken, everything will be back to normal. McCool, that's nuts! You can't... Morning, Jimbo. We really tied one on last night, huh? You made coffee? Do you know where we are? We're in New York. What are you, stupid? I had this nightmare that we were in some frozen crap hole in Canada. And our name was, get this, McGillicuddy. McDougal. <gasps> Oh my god, it's the Mountie from my dream! Wait, no, this is the dream! Or is it? What does that mean? This is the end of my career! I can't call for help, what would I say? I thought I'd take the Falcone boys to New York to reconnect them with the people who want them dead? <laughs> oh, lovely, that's probably work wondering where I am. So don't answer it! This is my work phone, I have to! No, you don't. <laughs> Special Agent Straight McCool. Oh, hello, Cookie. Thank God you answered. Jimmy went out for a beer last night and didn't come home. I'm so worried. What if something happened? I don't know what I'd do without him. Don't worry, Cookie. He's, uh, with me. He had a little too much fun last night. Oh, I'm so relieved. Now tell that useless fat f not to come staggering home until he sobered his ass up. Because I am not dealing with a giant, sweaty man-baby all day. Oh, and Cheech is also with me. Don't care. Jimmy, is this your old house? Yeah, it is. But how'd you know? <gasps> I added the last part. They always leave me out. Why do I have to help clean out the garage? I didn't do anything wrong. Mom found cigarette butts outside, so until the culprit comes forward, we're all paying for it. Only time I touch smokes is when I buy them more for reserve and sell them at the high school. Gina, that's wrong. If a 300% markup is wrong, I don't want to be right. Who's this guy with mom? And why does he look like me? 
Maybe it's your twin brother. That's impossible. This guy's at least 20 years older than me. Besides, this is what happened to Petey's twin. Yum, 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 yum. Why would they make a flip book of that? Probably so you could do this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Eee, talk about shame eating. It would appear the parts of your house that haven't been vandalized and or used as a toilet have been converted into a veterinary clinic. That's because this is a mob doctor's office. Mob doctors are usually greedy, money-grubbing veterinarians. No kidding. 50 Gs for a baboon heart, and I can barely climb stairs. Uh, I think the doctor is in. <gasps> Did you do this, Cheech? I didn't touch the guy. I leave him bloody, not naked. Well, I didn't do it. <clears throat> I have no idea what happened, but the good doctor is wearing my handcuffs. And a boy, McCool! Yes, we can congratulate my decline into degeneracy later, but right now we need to focus on getting out of here before... Doc, it's Leo! Open the door! Tutty got shot in the ass. Again! Oh, crap! It's the Gambini crew! Dino, kick it in! Good day, gentlemen! Who are you? Where's the regular doc? I'm his, uh, brother? His brother, huh? And who are these guys? Uh, these are my interns. They're, uh, deaf and mute, so they won't be able to say a single word. Not a single word. Now, let's, uh, get the patient into the, um, examining room. Jimmy, what's wrong with you? We're deaf and mute. Close your eyes. <clears throat> Is the garage cleaned out yet, Smokey? <gasps> what the hell are you doing with that? I want to know who that is. That's... that's none of your business. Forget your saw it and do not bring it up in front of your father, you hear me? But who is he? Who is who? The man in the picture! What picture? I don't see any picture. There's no picture. Damn it, my ring came off. <laughs> What you made me do, you nosy bastard! Shouldn't you clean any uh, potential obstructions around the abrasion collar of the contusion so we don't get necrotic fasciitis? I... I'm sorry, what? Shave his ass so head don't get in the hole! Oh, of course! You two, prep the patient. You're quite knowledgeable. I grew up around here. I've seen more shots in the ass than a Catholic altar boy. Look at these clowns. Shaving asses for a living. Come on, Dino. Let's go smoke. <laughs> Who's he calling a clown? Hey, I thought you was mute. Now he's the deaf one. Oh, so you are the mute? Exactly. Got it. Wait a minute. We could argue all day about who's mute and who's deaf, but we really should be focusing on your ass, Tutti. You, focus that razor on this man's ass. <sighs> Thanks, Cheech. No problem, Jimmy. You killed Gambini for me. It's the least I could do. <gasps> Jimmy! Guys, get in here! It's Jimmy Falcone! And Cheech, who do I gotta blow to get remembered around here? <laughs> Relax, gentlemen. Tutti had a reaction to the anesthetic. He's fine now. Well, what was all that about Jimmy Falcone? He's probably just upset about being in the man's former house. Wait a sec. How'd you know this was Jimmy's house? Well, no one breaks into a random residence and paints Kill Jimmy Falcone on the wall. Just hearing that stinking rat's name makes me want to kill him and kill anyone he's with. And then kill a bunch of other people on account of being so keyed up. Come on, Dino. Let's go punch something. <laughs> Quit flopping around. I'm sorry to have to do this. <laughs> nice shot, Mago. I'll see if I can find us a way out of here. Cheech, put some stitches in Tootie's behind, will you? Why? What kind of pretend doctor would I be if I allowed the crotic fasciitis? Maron, look at all these drugs. Pick me! Pick me! Pick me! Don't worry, fellas. I'm gonna pick all of you. Yay! I found something. It's a long shot, but it might work. Follow me. 
Did you sew up the hole in his keister? Yeah, both of them. But there was only one. Oh. Who are you? How do you know my mom? And what was your major at Harvard? You're my father! And that's what I'd look like with boobs. This is never gonna work! What's the matter with you, McCool? It's all I could come up with, Jimmy. I'm a little stressed out, so cut me some slack! Okay, sorry. Where'd you find this get-up, anyway? Just inside the door of an escape tunnel in the basement. <gasps> Calgary Stampede! Let's go back! Where you going, Doc? Say, that's a nice animal. Wait a sec. I don't remember seeing no horse inside. Dino, shut up. What's the matter with you? He's a vet, you moron. See, this is why you still live in your mother's basement. Leo, you son of a bitch! Where the hell have you been? Ah, crap, it's Marie. <laughs> remember Marie? There's a piece of work. F***ing shoot me now, Jimmy. What are you doing out here with these moves? I bet you forgot our anniversary. Didn't ya? Oh, baby, of course not. I was uh, just talking to the doc here about your big surprise. I, uh, no, you weren't. Sure, I was. I was explaining how if you didn't help me out, I'd put you and your fancy fucking horse in the East River in small packages. Oh, yes, that. This better be good. Great! I'm back in New York and I don't even get to see it! Oh! Smells like New York back here! Oh! So you're the one who was smoking, Teresa! You saw nothing. I guess it makes sense. Everyone in this family is a big fat liar. Who you calling fat? And who you calling a liar? Wait, no, I'll give you that one. Now I know why I don't fit in. Because the man in that picture is my real father. But you and Papa are so alike. <laughs> I can't even finish that. Maybe this needle dick is your father. Does that make Petey a bastard? Yeah, so nothing's changed. Mark all you want. I'm going to Harvard to find my dad. Ah, the guy graduated from Harvard. It's not like he lives there. Yeah, the only people who live at their schools are janitors and Harry Potters. I know, it's just a starting point in my search for my- Is somebody smoking? It's Petey! I knew it! Going to Harvard, bye! Ah, uh, this is the slowest goddamn horse in New York! Somebody give him some hay or something! <gasps> Yo, Doc, what gives? Jesus, H. Diefenbaker, did we steal a plane? Uh, you're killing my anniversary here. Tell the horse to go faster, or someone's gonna be shaving your ass tonight. Help me out here! <sighs> what the hell's that? Horse stimulant from the vet's office. Jesus, Cheech, who finds random drugs and then just takes them? I do, Jimmy. It's called living. Yeah, well, don't get any big ideas. Ow! I don't feel nothing. I think that was a dud. <laughs> of a thoroughbred you got there, Doc. That gives me an idea. That horse better come up a winner, or it's the glue factory for him, the cement shoe store for you, and the supermarket for me. Killing makes me hungry. I think we can totally do this. I think we can totally do this. Every moment of my life has led me to doing this. Let's do this. <laughs> It's a beautiful morning in Belmont. The sun is shining. The horses are ready. And the great Canadian invasion was a folks alarm. I don't know what you did at the park, but do it again as soon as you hear the bell. We took a speed. <laughs> Lots of speed. I never thought I'd say this, but thank God for illegal drugs. In gate five, we've got saucy buckets. And in gate six, we have obviously a pantomime horse. That's the horse's name, folks, not a description. 
Man. It's a good name. The important thing is, did we have fun? And no, we did not. Damn it. I needed that money to buy my way out of this horrible life. What did you just say? I uh, said, uh, let's go put that stinking animal out of our misery. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. Ooh. So this is Harvard. I always wondered when you would realize the truth, my son. Father! <laughs> Come join my research team, Peter. I'm developing a pill that cures global warming. But how? It makes human flatulence refill holes in the ozone layer. You said flatulence. That's science for farts! Petey! Come home to Mama! I'll be your mama. Okay. Peter Frampton McDougal, get off this bus right now! I want to meet my real father. Keep this up and I'll see to it you meet Jesus. Whoa, now oh. come on! I always thought that if I died inside a horse, it would be more sexual. That's shaky Dino Bonzini. Guy can't shoot to save his life. Keep moving till he runs out of bullets. Hey, yo, Silver, keep still. Leo, you gotta see this. You kill him yet? How do you like that? The horse has got moves. That gives me an idea. So, this is just a horse dancing. For three hours? See what happens when you gloss over rehearsals? How could you think I'd have a kid with someone other than your father? Because I look so much like that guy. Ugh. He's your uncle. My brother, Polly, The brainiac. You have a brother? Why'd you keep him a secret from us? Your father put him through Harvard, but when he found out what Pop did for a living, Polly ratted him out on a two-bit gambling thing. Pop did a year in Attica. Oh, so obviously Polly's dead now. Jimmy let it slide as long as we never spoke of Polly again. You are definitely your father's son, mainly because you're both dopes. And because Polly got picked up exposing himself in the subway. What a sicko getting naked in public. Weren't you once a stripper? That was for money, which is socially acceptable. I told you the script needed work. We should have hired David Mamet. And have the horse saying f and sh all over the stage? No thanks. We gotta retool. Maybe do out of town previews? Bottom line is, the horse is done. I'm replacing him with Nathan Lane. Obviously a pantomime horse. Your time is up. It's gonna be horse steaks tonight, boys! So this is how it ends. To be fair, I knew we were dead after Rex Reed's review. McCool, where you been? Not trying to get tickets for this debacle, I'll tell you that. But thank the Northern Lights, you're still alive. We won't be for long if you don't get us out of here. Boys, I owe you an apology. This escapade was clearly the result of my trying to prove I was fun. We owe you an apology. You're a freaking wild man. Yeah, this is the best time I've had in years. Of course, I can't remember that many years, but still. Thank you, gentlemen. That means a lot coming from you. All right, let's mop up the circle, jerk, because we're in big trouble. Buck up, boys. We're going back to Canada. Yeah, in a pine box. No, the same way we came. On the backs of prancing Mounties. I'm scared, Jimmy. Me too. Who knows where we could wind up?
Uh. Wait, Bevan! Where you been, Pop? I got drunk, dressed as a horse, ran for my life. You know, weekend stuff. I did some stupid stuff, too. You know what they say, Petey? If you like my father, then you'll like my son. That's not at all what they say. Whatever. You're the one with the brains. <laughs> Do I smell smoke? It's probably Petey! What's wrong with you? Don't you know smoke it'll kill you? All right, see you later, Broadway. And not a word of this to anyone, Jimmy. For Canada! Well, la 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 Remember me? Back in the old life, I was a mob wife. When mob wives had to, we rolled up our sleeveless blouses and helped out with the family business. Like when Jimmy's crew got pinched after a museum job, because Cheech left a DNA sample all over Nefertiti's bust. All right, Gloria's collecting protection money, Mia's intimidating a witness, and Frenchie's cutting heroin with Parmesan cheese. Best smack in the city. So, what do we do? Chick flicks? This ain't girl's night out, ya lazy bum. Then Gloria hauls in Stinky LaRue, a notorious rat Jimmy wanted gone. But there was a problem. Ah, uh, I can't do it. I can't get blood all over this pantsuit. Don't look at me. I just had these nails done. I ain't washing no skull fragments out of my new roots. I was almost gonna let that scumbag go, but I had an idea. All right, f nuts. Before we do this, you're gonna sit here with us and watch a movie. Ooh, the vanilla lace tea cozy. 90 minutes of awkward English people stammering about their feelings. <laughs> Who wants popcorn? I don't know, Cook. Even for the mob, death by chick flick is a little cruel and unusual. But no one in the family ever read it again. Yeah, right. And we're in Regina on freaking holidays. If you think Canada's gonna make me any less cruel and unusual, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. How about this one? I already got to tell your brother to tuck in his shirt. I ain't telling you to tuck in your privates. My clothes express my individuality. Stop trying to census me. How about this? It says material girl with a hint of like a virgin. What the hell are you talking about? You know, Madonna. Lady Gaga's grandma? If we weren't in public, I'd smack you right in your stupid mouth. Teen troubles, Cookie? Oh, hey, Annabelle. You know how it is with teenagers. Can't live with them, can't drown them in the river. Well, we can't all be super parents. How do they fit, darling? Like I'm wearing miracles, mother! What's with Billy Elliot over there? That's my son, Donnie. He's testing a pair of dance pants for this year's Regina's Got Talent competition. Regina's Got Talent? It's a performing arts contest. No, I'm asking. Regina's Got Talent? Yes. And my Donnie's won three years in a row. Right, Superstar? Ain't you two a pair? More like a team. It's amazing what happens when you don't threaten your children with abuse. Hey, me and Teresa are a team, too. Well, Twinkie, your teammate just abandoned you. Teresa, get back here right now, or so help me, I'll hug you so hard. Why do you want me to sign up for a talent show, Ma? I thought about what you said in the store. You were right about expressing your individuality, and this is a great way to do it. So it's a wet t-shirt contest? You got a beautiful singing voice, Teresa, and I want you to share it with the world. <sighs> My nose is crying. I'm not used to you saying nice things about 
me? Well, get used to it, teammate, because you deserve it. Take it easy, Ma. Who knows what's in that blood? Jimmy, what are you doing here? Regina Tourism sponsors this event, so I gotta sit here and sign up all the wannabes and losers. Well, Teresa's signing up. Did I say losers? I meant shining stars of tomorrow. Stop! You guys are the best! You're talented too, Gina, but this contest ain't for you. Pop, I got no intention of entering Regina's Got Assholes. Well, that's good, because you can't. What do you mean, can't? Age limit's 10 and over. You're too young, so you can't. 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 Let it can't. go, Gina. Can't. There's some things can't. you can't do. Can't. But this ain't one of them. Can't. 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 Shut up! Now, McCool, just because my daughter's in this, I don't want you showing any favoritism. Unless you're open to that. In which case, I can make it worth your while. Do you know why I've been asked to judge this contest three years in a row, Jimmy? Because no one else will do it? And my integrity. I am unbribable. I'm always the bribe's maid, never the bribe. <laughs> <laughs> Toby for Jimmy. Toby for Jimmy. Hey, Toby, what's up? Toby for Jimmy. Come in, Jimmy. <sighs> Go for Jimmy. Oh, there you are. Aren't these headsets amazing? Anyway, I have terrible news. Turns out Dick Clark is dead. We need a new MC. Did someone say MC? Have you ever MC before, Uncle Cheech? I certainly have, young lady. If any of you's got any allergies, whip out your EpiPens, cause here comes Peanut Butter Cookie! Sorry I'm late. I had to finish the word parts for my first number. Number? It's like the one I sang at Uncle Luigi's thing, remember? He's shaking his ass just sharp as a knife. It's non-stop booty, just don't tell his wife. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it at Club Afterlife. Yeah. Yeah! Wait till they hear my new song, Labia of Love. Teresa, honey, the judges want to hear classics. Then I'll sing one of my classy ballads, like Angel with the Fake Tits. You cried when I sang it at Christina's communion. We all did, honey. But if you want to make it past the first round, you gotta keep things wholesome. Okay, I'll try. But let's not go overboard. Of course not! Now tape down your boobs and put on his nun's outfit. Now to help us forget the human pretzel practically licking his own balls, here's our next act, g Doll and Enviro Pete. Now remember, I'm not your sister, I'm a doll. You sure are. Thanks for encouraging me to do this. My unique brand of edutainment is just what the people need. Shut the f up. We're on. Hey, G Doll. Do you know why the ecosystem is in so much trouble? Because the owners of big factories are a bunch of dummies. Just like me. <sighs> Talk about an ecosystem. <laughs> Remember, everyone, think globally, act jokily. The ventriloquism's quite impressive, but the material's atrocious. Bring back the ball liquor! <laughs> it's only 60 pounds. Cause you'll have a great old time. Stay neutral, old chap. Stay neutral. Looks like Teresa might make it through to the next round. And it looks like you might be crapping your pants. Well, get ready to eat it. Next up, we got a three-time winner, a one-man dance armada. And a true patriot. Let's give a warm vagina welcome to Nani Westminster.
It's freaking amazing. Makes that nun's routine look like a bowl of piss. That nun was Teresa. Oh, sorry. This kid makes Teresa look like a bowl of piss. You want us to fix the talent contest? Not the whole contest, just that freaking Donny. He's unbeatable. Then I guess we'll have to beat some beatable into him. Anyone asks, I've been here all day. You have been here all day. Exactly. Cook, I'm not hurting a kid over a contest. Unless there's a cash prize. How much are we talking? It's a trophy and bragging rights. What am I, an amateur? And trust me, no one in that show's gonna do any bragging. Especially that boring nun. She's next on my list, Cook. That's Teresa! You wanna end this contest or not? Okay, forget it. I guess I'll just have to be a better mother and put way more pressure on Teresa. Everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Stay on the high note. The high note! I don't believe the lamb's following Mary. Convince me. Visualize your goals. Reactualify your happitude. You're just making those words up. Don't talk back to your life coach, Muffin Top. This is un, excuse my language, frickin' acceptable, mother. Why didn't you hire me a life coach? I, I never... Never wanted me to win? Obviously. Ugh, I'm getting flushed. Fan. Donnie, you have nothing to worry about. Too dry. Spritz. Oh, are you trying to drown me? Donnie, calm down. Teresa's good, but you're better. I guess I'm gonna have to handle this because you're more useless than a donated appendix. Oh, Donnie. Fly like a dove, it's a labia of love. Hey, we agreed. No original songs. But I'm almost done writing it. I just need something that rhymes with reach around. Do you want to win this thing or not? Original songs, eh? <gasps> that gives me an idea. Go get the car, Annabelle. In <laughs> five, six, seven, eight. God help you if I get to ten. We barely squeaked into this round, Gina, so we really have to nail it. Don't forget, be the message. Sure thing, Petey. Folks, if you need to use the crapper, now's a good time. Cause it'll smell better than this next stack. I hate this guy. Oh. By the way, I changed our name. Oh, it's nice you're getting involved. Please welcome Little G. That's fun. And Dick Bart. Gina. Uh, ahem, <clears throat> okay. Hey, little G, tell us what you know about fracking. That's when you dig a hole in the backyard and fart in it. <laughs> then this cracking loser shoves his head in and sniffs. <laughs> right to the kisser. Ha, 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 jokes aside, um, do you know the size of your carbon footprint, little G? Two inches, just like your dick. <laughs> Gina, cut it out. Yes, um... Carbon emissions should be on everyone's minds. Along with the polar ice caps. Yes, thank you. Do you know why the ice caps are melting? Because you jerk off in the shower? <laughs> Dick Bart's getting served! So, why did you ask me out, Donnie? I like you, Teresa. You're a good kid, and I want to give you some advice about the biz nasty. I got it directly from Al Pacino's acting coach's website. Wow, you are connected. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've slept my way around the entertainment block, sweetheart. Had my fair share of mouthies, VTs. VTs? Oh, vagina touches. <laughs> so naive. Donnie, have you ever actually been with a girl? Are you kidding? <laughs> Any more tangy poon for me and my G-spot's just gonna fall right off. What part of this is the advice? This part. If you want to stand out from the crowd, you need to do something original. You mean like an original song? Yes! Oh! But who has those, right? I, I do. I write my own songs. You do? And you're not singing them? Um, are you trying to lose? But I promised Ma I'd wait until I won. Waiting's for tables, baby. Speaking of which, who do I got a blow jam to get another shake around here? Ah! 
Brady, we always laugh at you, but who knew you had real comedy chops? When that creepy troll doll accused you of clear-cutting the cheese, oh, my ribs, Petey, my ribs. Gina, you should have seen this kid. He's a natural. Yeah, but his material's a little highbrow for Gina here. Now, let's not forget about the environmental message. I'm an edutainer, first and foremost. The reviewer says you've redefined the fart of self-deprecating humor with refreshing brilliance. Um, I heard the dummy's pretty hilarious, too. Yeah, but without Petey, there's no act. It's just a hideous little puppet. Ooh, creepiest thing I ever seen. What's the G stand for, anyway? Grotesque? I thought it was just, God help me. No, it stands for guys. Look what just fell out of my ass. <laughs> 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 Now that we eliminated all the riffraff, it's time to hit the snooze button for the opposite of entertainment, Teresa Maduga. It's super drama, Fraggle Rock spaghetti is delicious. Ah, oh, forget that crap. Regina, make some noise. Use your hands, come on. Ah, oh, ah, oh, yeah. This is a Teresa McDougal original Christmas jam. I don't know what's sadder, how hard you tried or how badly she's failing. So get your butts to the bonfire. This is a race. He's gonna bust some Christmas cheer all over your face. Snip my foreskin and color me Jewish because Christmas is dead to me. Relax, Ma. I made it through to the next round, didn't I? Only by the skinny of teeth, thanks to that humpy dog act getting disqualified. <laughs> Toby, for security! Toby, for security! Where are you, Jimmy? <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell told you to do your own song? Donnie, he told me to be original. Teresa Falcone, you got played. My song got played. And once I find a rhyme for Reach Around, I'ma be dropping another sound bomb, yo. Now the only way we'll beat Annabelle is if Donnie gets kneecapped. So that's why you made me enter this. To beat Donnie's mom? Who's playing who, Ma? I wasn't playing you. I was encouraging you. By making me dress like a nun and sing about baseball? You were a nun trying to keep orphans off drugs by getting them into sports. It's called a backstory, Teresa. You know what? You're in this for you, not for me. Teresa, wait! Ah, balls. You're welcome, Mother. Once again, I solved the problem. Now, can you handle getting me a smoothie, or is that too much for you, you dried up old cow? Oh, and I'm gonna need a new phone, because this one's broken! <laughs> I freaking hate other people's kids. Kickball change and a funky hips. Eye on the prize, eye on the prize. No, 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 no. Who's a bad boy? That's me. Who's a bad boy? That's me. How do girls pee? Who knows? Do the running man. Go, Donnie! Go, Donnie! It's about time. You best have my smoothie. Hey, who, who are you? No. No! Are you ready, little G? What do I know? I'm just a dummy. Dick Bob! Say, little G, I bet you have something funny to say about me and the terrible effects of nanopollution. <laughs> little G? <laughs> Do you have a frog in your throat? <laughs> Speaking of which, uh, frogs in mountainous areas are most affected by climate change. What do you think about that, little G? Make the troll talk! Come on, say something! Yeah, make the gargoyle emasculate you! <laughs> I'm a gargoyle? This from a guy with a baboon's ass for a face! <laughs> Does old McDonald know you left the farm, you f***ing donkey? <laughs> hey, McCool, a shot says pardon me? Pardon me? <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you did. Hey, everyone, the gremlin called me a shark. <laughs> Stop the show. 
Look who I found out by the dumpster. Uh, Tony! I've been knee-banged. Calm down, everyone. I'm a police officer. I'll get to the bottom of this. Donnie, tell us who banged you. I was out back, waiting forever for my mother to bring me my smoothie when someone ran up and hit me right in my knee. <gasps> my dancing knee! <gasps> Did you recognize the assailant? He was wearing a mask. You mean she was wearing a mask? <gasps> how could you, Ma? Yeah, how could you? I had dibs. Me? I had nothing to do with this admittedly fortunate turn of events. Oh, right. So when you said the only way I'd win is if Donnie got kneecapped, you were being psychic. Oh, my God, Ma, are you psychic? She's a witch! Is someone going to call an ambulance? Cookie, I'm afraid I'm going to have to inquire as to your wear up. <laughs> Shart. So good. <clears throat> anyway, where were you when this happened? I was nowhere near Donnie. I was backstage working on Teresa's song. I even found the rhyme you were looking for. Just reach around and make a happy sound, huh? Why did you finish my song for me? Donnie may have been playing you, but he was right. You gotta be yourself. Stop upstaging me! It's my time to shine! Mine! None of this would have happened were it not for the incompetent shrew who birthed me. Donnie, don't. Shut your kale hole. If you'd have been there on time with my smoothie, you could have taken the hit for me. But you didn't. Why? Because you're a selfish, greedy, evil... <laughs> Fine! It was me! And I would have got away with it if I'd just hit him again in front of everyone. Damn it! <coughs> Kneecapping your own kid? That shit is cold. I'll tell you what's cold. Diva Donnie making me walk beside the car on the way home from his singing lessons in the dead of winter because I was taking up too much oxygen. Oh, I could go on! He's a monster! Mother, how could you? Oh, shut up, you fucking drama queen. You know, we may not have the best relationship, but at least we're not these clowns. I love you. I love you too, Bob. Aw, now you got my nose crying. Not so fast, madam. A real crime has been committed. I have no choice but to arrest... Oh, the results are in. This year's winner of Regina's Got Talent is... Dick Fart and Little G! What? Who's Little Dick and G Fart? <laughs> you said I was too young to enter, but I did, and I won! Take that, you mother... Porky's Revenge! It's alive! Run! Run for your lives! <laughs> but Canada, where even the most heroic must sometimes flee in terror! <laughs> oh, so everyone gets a shot but Cheech? It's my oh. turn, kid. <laughs> La 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 Greetings! You know me as Petey McDougal, Canadian nerd. You also know me as Petey Falcone, New York dork. Like other misfits of my ilk, I never really felt like I fit in. Hello. Congratulations! This was especially apparent in our old life among the family. Yo, Petey, try this lasagna. It's like angels singing in your mouth. No thanks, I'm lactose intolerant, and pasta's not good for my gluten sensitivity. You know what makes me sensitive? Jagoffs with no manners. Eat the fucking food, you mook. Hey, kid. Have some wine. I won't tell you, folks. Actually, it was their idea. You need to loosen up. Cheech, I've seen what alcohol does to people, namely you. And it won't work. Have to live a little, kid. <laughs> what are you doing? The bride gave birth to a boy this morning. We're celebrating. Smoke up, kid. It's bad luck if you don't. Really? Hell if I know. <laughs> I was gonna steal that, dumbass! Now that 
that we are in Canada, I finally feel like I fit in. And I'm sure in time, the rest of my family will learn to love it here as much as I do. Forget about it! Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they heard that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Ah, keep jerking it, Jetsy. Oh, almost there. Mm. That's it. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Relax, Cookie. It's not what you think. I'm sure there's a logical... Slide it in and out. Slowly. Okay. You went to a Catholic school. This kind of thing happens all the time. And... Oh, God, listen to yourself. <laughs> you pricked me. Spit that out. You do not want to swallow it. Jesus Christ on a bike! Ta-da! What do you think? Cheech, we're trying to keep a low profile here, so you go and swipe a boat? Swipe? Give me some credit. I got it at the police auction. Let's start the bidding at 500. Who'll give me five? So! <laughs> it was a steal, Jimmy. Except I paid for it. We live on the prairies. What are we gonna sail on? Seas of wheat? There's a lake near here. We'll go fishing like the old days. Except without the dead wise guys clogging up the water. Cheech, I'm married. I can't just take off whenever I want. I was married. I took off all the time. And how'd that work out for you? I'm gonna die alone. I gotta clear this kind of stuff with Cookie. I gotta drop reminders, sweet talker, negotiate terms. Peace in the Middle East to take less diplomacy. Hey, Cook, we're going fishing. Great idea! Absolutely! Go fishing! Get out of here! Far away from Petey! Huh? Never mind. Just go. <sighs> oh, no, wait! There is something we need to talk about. Love you, Ben! So, I think your brother might be... gay. And if he is, I want to make sure neither of you gives him a hard time about it. What do you take us for? He's our brother! I know we bust his balls, but we got his back. Apparently, so does Chetsy. <laughs> Teresa, what did I say? Ma, I'm just playing. Well, stop! I'm having a hard time with this. Get over it. You want to wind up like Mrs. Scavuzzo? She rejected her boy because he was gay. Died alone. Cats ate a face. You want that, Ma? You want a cat eating your face? Because I know a guy. But I don't know what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> you can act like a mom! And never buy a cat. You're right. I can do this. I'm going to be the best damn mother of a gay you ever saw. You know he's not, right? Oh, God, of course. He's not cool enough to be gay. If he was, at least he'd have a personality. <laughs> this is fun. What, are we bonding now? Shut up! I tell you, Cheech, you can't beat the peace and quiet of a fishing trip. Uh, you want some of this? Who's a big fish now? Say hi to your mother for me. Big lead fish dick. I got your catch and release right here, you fucking mutt. You broke my heart, you scaly prick. I'm out. Me too. So relaxing. Now them fishes are sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> <laughs> Young Petey is a homosexual. Splendid. I'm glad you called me, Cookie. Good. Because I don't know how to tell him he has my support. Can you help me out? I can do better than help you, Cookie. I can refer you to a qualified colleague. And no, I'm not deflecting your request because it makes me uncomfortable. Here in Canada, we pride ourselves on our pride. By the by, how's Jimmy taking this? Oh, God. Jimmy doesn't know anything yet. He's gone fishing with Cheech. Fishing? I got no idea what Jimmy will do when he finds out. Did he mention being angry with me? Because I've told him I'm an avid fisherman. But he loves Petey, so who knows? I'm sorry, what? Just checking for texts from Jimmy. No, nothing here. Do you think it would be weird if I just showed up? 
Showed up where? At the fishing trip. I thought we were talking about Petey. Oh, right. I'll get my colleague to come see you. For Canada, where friends are supposed to tell friends about fishing trips. <laughs> Don't move. Who? Don't move, I said. What the hell? Look at me. Look at me. I am the captain now. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't look at you. You look at me. 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 Don't look at me. Look at him. Look at me. Look at me. Don't say look at me. Just look at me. Look at me. Look at you being a... Look at me. Look at me. Hey, look at me. Oh. Enough. I am Giddy. This is Johnny. We own this boat now. Understand? Hey, I own this boat, pal. You want it? Make me an offer. I'll shoot your fat friend and dump him over the side. Hey, Jimmy, quiet. I'm negotiating here. All right, say you shoot fatso. What's in it for me? So, are you sure this isn't going to be too intense for you? Maybe, but it's something I need to do. Well, why don't we just ease into it, then? Take it nice and slow. Uh, what's going on with the hand down there? Uh, foreplay? Isn't this what you wanted? No! I need advice about helping my son come out of the closet. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought this was a booty call. McCool kept talking about... I think he said fishing. He's all upset my husband went without him. Oh. It was hard to understand McCool. He was so distraught. Oh, this is embarrassing. Don't worry about it. And a little disappointing. Oh, why? Well, you're gorgeous. Oh, <laughs> stop. So, about your son. <laughs> gorgeous? How? Just curious. But, uh, what would you do to a gal like me? Give me a, for instance. <laughs> Whoa, that is something. So, where do these scissors I keep hearing about come into it? <gasps> you guys are not going to believe this. But I think Mom might be gay. <laughs> and the hits just keep coming. Petey, this is huge. Who'd have thought Ma was a Lebanese? Can you imagine what it must have been like for her in the old neighborhood? Carrying the desire that dare not speak its name? Yeah, they weren't big on that back home. And they hated people who said stuff like, dare not speak its name. So what are we gonna do? Give her the love and acceptance she deserves. Duh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, don't come right out and tell her we know. I mean, she might not be ready for that. Good idea. I'm gonna show her I'm behind her 100%. <laughs> I ain't had this much fun since I switched your birth control pills with breast mints! <gasps> That's why I've been so minty down there. Why is there nothing on this boat but beer and grappa? Cause Jimmy says cocaine and boating don't mix. This is pointless. We need money. For a jolly pirate crew, you guys ain't too jolly. Jolly pirates? We did it to survive a brutal civil war. We fled to Canada for a better life. But now we are being deported. We need money for an immigration lawyer fast. Problem is, your crew's too small. You need a few more hands on deck. Please! Where could I possibly find experienced hijackers in Regina Beach? You thinking what I'm thinking? Honestly, I don't even know if I'm thinking what I'm thinking. You ever hear voices, Jimmy? Ma, there's a secret living in this house. An elephant in the room, if you will. I know, Petey. A big, gay elephant. <laughs> that elephant needs to know they're loved and supported. I couldn't agree more. What about Papa Elephant? We'll tell Papa Elephant when the gay elephant is good and ready. And when the time comes, that elephant is not going to be alone. No, that elephant isn't. 
I'm glad we cleared this up. It's good to get things out in the open. It sure is. I feel sorry for families that don't know how to communicate. <sighs> Ahoy there, Cappy! Alas, you land lovers! What are you doing? This is not some dress-up game. Ah, come on. Who doesn't want to be a pirate? You boys need our help, and you know it. <sighs> Fine. We're desperate, and you Canadians are very helpful. By the way, real pirates don't dress like that. But I already cut off my hands. What'd you do that for? A pirate's gotta have a hook. Quickly, where is the hat now? We must put it on ice immediately. Here it is. Mm. All right, all hands on deck. Oh, sorry, Cheech. I've come to terms with my choice. Uh, Mom? Yes, Petey? There's this pride rally downtown this afternoon, and... It'd be an honor to be beside my boy. Now that the elephant's out of the closet, let's parade it through the streets. Gay. And the little Dutch boy wasn't poking his finger in your dyke. What the hell were you doing? I told you, it was nothing. That was not nothing, young man. Spit it out. Ugh, fine. But I think it'd be easier if I showed you. If he comes back in a dress, I'm gonna sh The Elven Spellcaster, a seventh level mage. I don't understand a word you just said. I'm a LARPer. What is that, Swedish for loser? No, it's live action role playing, LARP. We dress up in costumes. Oh, it's, it's like when you dress up as a French maid or put on a leather gimp suit, right? No, that's good wholesome fun. I got no freaking idea what this is. Oh. <sighs> Problem is, you've been picking the wrong targets, Getty. What you want is an RV. Them things are packed with a king's ransom match right now. What about your uncle's hand? We need to go to a hospital. Ah, that'll be fine. He's had so many beers, he can't feel nothing. Ah, that's better. There's a galleon on the port bow. Or is it stopping? Which one's left? I used to know this. Get pirate insurance, I said. You never know, I said. But would you listen? I'm going to watch TV. And I don't care if it drains the battery. Ah, prepare to be boarded, you scurvy dogs. Place the mizzen what sits on the wibble wobble. Oh, where'd he get those? It's standard now on all American-made RVs. God bless the NRA. Dave, the pirates are here. I still don't get it. Is LARP a sport? Not exactly. Do you win prizes? No, we get experience points. Then we use those to level up and... Shut up! I stopped listening after no. None of this makes sense. Patience. All will be revealed. Roar! A minotaur! Back, foul creature! Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Ooh. Lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! Fireball! Fireball! Ow! Watch it! That was really close to my eye! Roar! Back down! Double damage! And confetti death blow! So, Ma, what'd you think? I think I'm gonna confetti death blow my f***ing brains out. That was the most mortifying thing I've ever seen. Why can't you pick up a nice drug habit like a normal kid? What happened to supporting me no matter what? That was when you were gay, not when you were a fairy. I'm an elf. I wish I was a fairy. 
That's a whole other level. You need to learn sixth level enchantments and... Enough! This is just unnatural. Well, this is who I am. No, it's not. You're choosing to be this way. All you need to do is, I don't know, meet the right girl. Oh, this is all my fault. I should have pushed him into sports. Oh. It gets better, Petey. Trust me, it does not get better. One more score like this and you'll have immigration lawyers coming out your ass! Damn, it's fun being a pirate! It's not meant to be fun. We do it for survival! What about pillaging? That part's fun, right? So are Vikings! <gasps> we should be those next! So what do we do with this scallywag? Make him walk the plank! <laughs> uh. Ooh. Oh. Petey, open up. Go away. Okay, he's in there. Get him! <laughs> Cast out the foul demon, Father. The power of Christ compels you. Ah, lightning bolt! Lightning bolt! See, Father? What did I tell you? He's all wrapped up in the occult. I'm not possessed. I'm a LARPer. That's not a sin. But it's an abomination, isn't it? Tell him, Father. Oh, heavens, not at all. It's not as though he's gay. Get out of here, you intolerant jagoff! I'm still not having this under my roof. Tell your friend to leave! Chetsy's my apprentice, and he's staying. I said scram, Dutchie! <laughs> Chetsy, wait! I don't care what she says, we're a team! <laughs> Free spell! Free spell! Wall of stopping! What is wrong with you? We're not hurting anybody. I can't accept this. A grown boy pretending and make-believing? It's too weird. Too weird? In a family that used to pretend everything was normal while our father was out running a crime syndicate? A family, Italian, mind you, that now lives as Scottish Canadians under an assumed name? Face it, Mom. Our whole life is one big LARP. Double glitter truth bomb. Just stop it, you freak! Hey, that priest dropped his holy water. Ow! It burns! It burns! Oh, oh, oh. Come on! <laughs> Jimmy, stop! The joke's over! <laughs> Take that, you salty dog! <laughs> Ow! Enough! You two are crazy and dangerous! Of course we are! We're pirates, for Christ's sake! No, you're not! You're idiots! Consider yourselves fired! Ha! We just got Jolly Roger! You know, Jimmy, I don't even think them guys was real pirates. <laughs> hey, McCool! Ooh. Casey and Finnegan! What happened to Cheech's hand? Best an accident? But we got it on ice. I knew you shouldn't have gone fishing without me. Hop on, gentlemen. For Canada, where universal health care even covers stupidity. This just feels stupid now. Maybe Mom's right. We're just a bunch of losers in bathrobes tossing paper balls at each other. Whoa, who is that? Red hair and purple robes? Where have I seen that color scheme before? Thunderfist! Eardrum shatter! Dazzle puff! Berserker thumb! Allergy spell! Feel the wrath of Flindor McDougal! <laughs> Go ahead! Do it, Mom! Did you say Mom? No wonder people think we're losers. Oh. <laughs> Thunder purse! Thunder purse! Sanitary napkin! Electric shoe? <laughs> mom! I'm not mom. I'm Cookie the Concubine. <laughs> you mean conqueror. I just picked a word, Petey. <laughs> what?
What the heck is a thunder purse? I don't know, but it just saved your life, you little prick. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. That was great. I thought about what you said, and you were right. But for God's sake, don't let your father know about this. He's not gonna like the idea of his son dressing up in costumes. Avast there! It's a sea gremlin! Get him, Jimmy! Come here! <laughs> Dad, stop! That's my friend! You're next, help! Oh, God! Thank you for knowing what I was. Aye, there be the booty I've been craving. <laughs> Thunder purse, bitch! La 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 How you doing? If you're like me, you could use some time off. In the old life, it was never easy for me to take a vacation. Booking on points is so freaking complicated. Plus, I had to leave Cheech in charge. <sighs> Son of a... Cheech, you better be on fire or dead. And if so, how are you calling? Jimmy, I'm locked out of the club. What are you bothering me for? Call Fats and get the other key. I can't. He's locked inside. What do you mean, you and Fats are both locked in? I was on the roof. There's a skylight. The rest is a blur. But it's not our club. What? Someone's here. I gotta go. Turned out to be the Spamante family's club. Cheech didn't want to pay for the skylight he broke, so he just up and shot everybody. Around the neighborhood, they still call it the Jimmy's Trip to Aruba Massacre. I always called it the Fats is a big fucking crybaby bloodbath. God rest his soul. Now that I'm in witness protection, it's like a permanent vacation. At a two-star resort where everybody says sorry all the time. We've only had one vacation from this apologetic iceberg of a country. And was it worth it? Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Jimmy, get in here! I've got the dirty little bastard cornered! What is it, a mouse? Nah, it's one of Teresa's boyfriends trying to sneak out. <clears throat> no sleepovers, kid. That's it? You're letting him go? Take him out back and explain the rules to his face! Ah, cook, who gives a crap? I'm free! I've been in there since... Ah! My eyes! Ah! Look at him, McCool. He's depressed. Snap out of it! You got nothing to be depressed about, you useless sack of garbage! Pop, if you decide to slit your wrists, have some courtesy and do it in the bathtub. You need a gun, slugger? Take McCool's. I'm not wiping your brains off mine. Nah, Jimmy will go out like a wise guy. Suck in an oxygen tank in prison. Sweet Mitsu's cowboy! Jimmy's under the moon and you're all making morbid jokes. Clearly, Canada's character-building midwinter gloom is affecting all of you. But I have a solution. Please say therapy. Please say therapy. A vacation! Aw, oh, come on! <gasps> you hear that, Jimmy? We're going on vacation! Yeah, right. Knowing McCool, it'll be a day trip to Lake Who Gives a Sh**. Fuck Canada, where everyone needs to get the hell out once in a while. <laughs> Don't move, you capitalist pigs! I'm taking this plane to Cuba! <laughs> Just kidding. Welcome to Cuban Airlines. I'm your pilot, Brad. 
That's just a little thing we do to lighten the mood around here. Enjoy the flight. McCool, you said vacation, not being babysat by a Fed in a communist hellhole. But Cuba's perfect. There's literally no chance you'll be spotted by the mob. Then why are you coming with us? I need a vacation from all things Canuck, or I'm gonna lose my freaking mind! No, of course. I, I just thought we could, you know, hang. The whole point of this was to stop me from hanging. Myself. No, no, no problem, Jimmy. I, I won't get in your hair. For the next week, old Straight McCool's gonna be all about rest, rejuvenation, and relaxation. How can you relax in a country that treats people so bad? Every country has its share of human rights violations. Except Canada, of course. Yeah, no, you guys are awesome. I ain't seen a Cuban since that thing we did not do in Dallas. Excuse me, I gotta kill Kennedy. I mean, take a leak. I can't wait to take in the music, culture, and revolutionary atmosphere of Cuba. The people's paradise. Shut up, Trotsky. Kid, get the waitress to open the door. Bienvenido a Cuba, liberated from American business interests and mafia-controlled casinos since 1959. Tommy sons of bitches. You know, I ran one of them casinos down here back in the day. I banged so many Cuban broads. They gave me a nickname, Don Juan de Gonorrhea. How old were you? I don't know, 20... No, 10. Look around, Jimmy. Cuba's a paradise. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough! You're not leaving my side for the next week! Aw, he's a nice Canadian boy. He's French-Canadian. You'll have your panties off faster than you can say. I think the word you're looking for is wow, huh? <laughs> Give me those back. I should mention, and I know this from experience, do not drink the tap water here lest you get a porcelain-shattering case of Batista's Revenge. Huh? You wanna go for a dip in a pool? Nah, too many German tourists. Oh, it's the Bay of Pigs. <laughs> <sighs> Jimmy, lighten up. Cuba ain't so bad. It ain't so good either. Hey, where's Gina? I'm supposed to watch her in case she drowns. Somebody. She's probably over at the kids' club. <laughs> ah, to be a child again. Quack won't even look at Petey unless I buy a timeshare. Petey's gonna have to ride it out. Scorpion Azul. Scorpion Azul. Ma, I think he's trying to tell us something. Cuba is home to the legendary Blue Scorpion, reputed to cure everything from cancer to diarrhea. <laughs> But, Petey, we can't go into a dangerous jungle just because you got fizzy gravy. Mom's right. I'll be at the pool. How does he do that? On second thought, we're going. Why should Petey suffer? This vacation sucks. So long as you don't. Gina, what are you doing in here? I thought you'd be out selling black market Bibles. You know, there's a swim-up bar. You don't even gotta get up to go to the John. What's this? It's nothing. It's a porno machine, Jimmy. Don't you know anything? Give me that! Mind your business. <laughs> Greetings, fellow Americans. I represent the five families of organized crime who do not exist. We've joined forces with the government to encourage patriotic sociopaths like you to eliminate the communist leader of Cuba. If successful, you'll be granted super maid status and be untouchable by the mob. You'll also get a lifetime presidential pardon from the feds. Ain't that right, Jack? Act fast, and we'll throw in a free lobotomy for your yappy missus. Mm -hmm. How did you know about this? How did you not? It's been around since the 60s. So you are gonna kill Castro? Look who just clued in. Are these guys gonna f or what? 
So once we take out El Presidente, we can go back to New York. No way. I'm doing this alone. When you and Cheech get involved, things always go straight into the crapper. She's got a point, Jimmy. Sometimes you're a real screw-up. <laughs> you can't do this alone. You'll wind up in Cuban jail with all the poets and playwrights. It'll be so boring! I'll cut the act, Pop. If we're gonna get our old life back by killing a guy, let's do it together like a family. Fine. But I'm not taking a backseat on my own caper, capiche? You was saying? One day I'll be taller, but you'll always be a fat ass! Let's go! <laughs> doing here? We're supposed to be on vacation, not out in the sticks hunting down an insect. Keep looking. Extremely rare blue scorpions can't be that hard to find. I see one. Where? On your arm. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Are you kidding me? We had one, and you went and killed it. Oh. Petey, we're not camping here. Get out of the sleeping bag! All right, we only get one shot at this. How do you know he's in there? Cause while you girls were packing your bikinis, I was planning this caper to the letter. Every day after brunch, he comes to that window to feed his pigeon, Lee Harvey Birdswalt. And when he does... I'm gonna turn his head into a mist. Jimmy, that's beautiful. I thought it up on the ride over. Wasn't sure if I'd use it. Well, I for one am glad you did. Give me that! Orphan Castro was my idea. I'm doing the honors. Why wait? I'll go in there right now and blow his head off. I'm the boss. I'll do it. But I am the boss's uncle. Shut up, you mooks. You want the whole country to know what we're doing? She's right. Keep it down. Hey, look, it's McCool. <sighs> Yo, McCool! Jeez, what are you doing? Hide the gun. See what I mean? Right into the crapper. Fancy seeing you three. Come to take in the sights, sounds, and smells of old Havana? Yeah, yeah, sights and smells. We're doing sounds tomorrow. Why are you walking around all alone? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Not now, Cheech. Why? I'm just saying, he looks all lonely and pathetic, like a loser. I'm not lonely. Matter of fact, I'm going to visit my Cuban friend, Ronaldo Garcia. Well then, you better get going. Hey, I knew a Garcia once. He drove an ice cream truck. Here in Havana? No, no, in New York. Oh. You think they're related? Oh my god, Cheech! <laughs> get, give me that! I doubt it. Ronaldo is an orphan. Well, he's probably dying to see you then. Hang on, hang on. It wasn't Garcia. It was Gonzalez. For the love of food! <laughs> so, probably not related. Cool. Okay, well, off to the, um, orphanage. Cheerio! Damn it! Put this in your mouth. What? What did I do? Mm. Ooh. Oh, Esmeralda, your hands are so soft. Mm. Trippin' balls, Ma. When are you gonna give up? When he's dead? You wish. Keep looking. Come on, Petey. Let's go back to the resort. <laughs> Fine. Take your chances with Ma. Teresa, you can't leave me here. Why? Because you're scared I might actually have fun on this vacation? No. Because I'm lost. <laughs> Get out of here! That is not how my son is losing his virginity. <laughs> Our one chance, and you blew it! It's McCool's fault. The guy wouldn't shut up about his stupid friend. You did it to me again. Without you dopes, I'd be toasting Castro's headless cadaver with a Cuba Libre. You know that's just rum and coke. <sighs> Presidential palace, por favor.
And that, mi amigos, is how the Cuba Libre differs from a mere rum and coke. Ah. That is cool. <laughs> I see what you're doing here. Y you do? Don't think I didn't notice. You drove around a little bit. I... Uh... <laughs> it's okay, comrade. But you do that with the tourists, yes? Not with El Jefe. Okay? Okay. Hasta luego! That is one charming motherfucker. What a presence, this guy. I got goosebumps. No wonder he's so hard to kill. <gasps> ah, goddammit. It's like, I just wanted him to like me. I know, I couldn't make a move. You almost forget that man's a bloodthirsty dictator. You think he liked me? Punch it! It's the only road I recognized. But you have to stop for a fare. Gina, this resort ain't cheap. Jimmy! McCool, you been drinking? Oh, yeah, me and Ronaldo Garcia, when we get together, <laughs> I chihuahua. I miss horse. <laughs> I'm in here! Horse? No, it's El Jefe! I'm in the trunk! Oh, God, Jimmy, you didn't! Technically, it was Gina. And the rat comes out! From Heller's dinosaurs! What have you done? Okay, this is fixable. We'll drop him back at the palace and pay the cab! Congratulations, Jimmy. You've liberated Cuba and ruined my life! I trusted you. See, that was your first mistake. <gasps> we can still get through this. Let me do the talking. No, thanks a lot, guys. Come on. Move it. Keep no, going. Get, go. get them. They took El Jefe. Just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, I'm... Halt! You are trespassing on American soil. Do not move or we shoot. American soil? Yeah! <laughs> American soil. Oh, that's better. I cannot believe you assassinated a president to get away from Canada. I thought we were friends. What's friendship got to do with it? Apparently nothing! All right, let's get one thing straight. I'm not offering you weirdos asylum, got it? But we killed Castro! We killed Castro too! Killed him good! Shut up! If I had a dime for every nutjob who hopped that fence claiming to have killed Castro, I'd have a mountain of dimes, and I'd sit on that mountain and declare myself the king of dimes! That sounds amazing. My point is, we're handing you right back to the Cuban authorities. Excuse me, Colonel Korn. I think you'd better see this. Multiple sources confirm Castro has been kidnapped by a red-headed midget posing as a little girl. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Mr. President, it's confirmed. We still wish that the instruments. Yes, sir. I'll do that. Oh, I am so f***ing fired. <gasps> what? I can swear. Oh, Beatty. I'm a terrible mother. I couldn't find one stinking bug. It's an arachnid, and you're a great mother. A great mother wouldn't let this happen. But you can't watch your kids every move. 
right? Well, I should have thought before I drank from that. I just want to keep Teresa from making the same mistakes I did. Oh, we're on Teresa now? You don't got to worry about me, Ma. How did you find us? And what's he doing here? You won't believe this. Jean-Philippe here likes to catch these and stick them up his ass. Keeps down the hemorrhoids. Ah! Get it off! Get it off! Ma, ah, what the hell? Sorry. Those things creep the shit out of me. You got another one up there, JP? <laughs> oh, I'm cured. If you would have trusted me, we could have had fun instead of running around the jungle like Boob Raider. It's Tomb Raider. Shut up, Edie. Oh. Teresa, you're right. Uh, you didn't do anything with Jan Philip here, did you? Not at all. I'm not the one he likes. Anybody else feel a breeze? Holy crap, are you good? <laughs> Ah, Jesus. <laughs> what? No goodbye? All this time, I've gone above and beyond to protect you, and now you lie to me and walk away like it was nothing? What, are we married? You lied to me, too. I did no such thing. Really? What about Ronaldo Garcia? You saw through that? <sighs> I made him up. I felt silly being out all alone while you three were having fun committing a murder. Don't take it so hard, McCool. Of all the cops I've ever known, you're my favorite. That's not saying much. Coming from me, that's saying a lot. Put it there, pal. Hey, where's Air Force One going? Well, Castro was found with third degree burns by three Canadian tourists who revived him with the venom of a blue scorpion. Can you believe that sh This family is a freaking curse. So, no medals? No getting super made? No. Well, what about the free lobotomy? I'll give you a lobotomy. Come here! Yo, Colonel, seeing as we came pretty close to half an hour, Tommy Dante, you think we could get a chopper ride back to the resort? Get the hell off my base. Gorgeous weather in Cuba, huh? Damn shame the American people can't go there. Maybe I ought to do something about that. Can you believe this? Ma and them flew home first class courtesy of El Presidente. And we're rowing a fucking truck. I stand by my choice to sell our passport to those Arabs in Gitmo. I don't even know why we bothered with a vacation. I'm just as depressed as I was before. But Jimmy, you lied to a policeman, stole a taxi cab, and almost whacked someone. What more could you want? You know, you're right. And I made 28 bucks driving that cab. Which you'll have to declare at customs. And you wonder why we didn't want to hang out with you. Keep rowing, Jimmy. Keep rowing. La 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 you can put a gun to my head, but I ain't calling myself McDougal. My pop used to be the capo in a New York crime family. That was great. Everywhere I went, I was treated with respect. Hey, Gina, good to see you, kid. Here's a hundred. Get yourself a lollipop. I talked with that dentist of yours. You won't be getting any more cavities. That was all about the end, because anyway. my uncle Cheech started shooting his mouth off. The Don ordered a hit on him, but my pop didn't have the stones to do it. I so while Pop was begging the Don to spare Cheech's life, I decided to make my bones and take Cheech out. And then Pop had to I go and screw it up. I guess Pop did have stones, just not a lot of brains. 
And that's how we wound up in Lady Part Saskatchewan. It's okay to say it, sweetie. Regina. But if you think I like being here, you can f***ing... Oh, language! What the f***'s wrong with you? Forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. tired at the end of a long day? They are. Are you still dialing the phone by hand? Oh, I am. Do you sometimes not point because you just can't be bothered? That's me. I hate pointing. With Superfinger, you'll never have to lift a finger again. Oh, that's handy. Oh, fingery. <laughs> but wait, there's more. It also scratches, pokes, taps, and picks. It's super. Now 1-800-FINGER-ME now. Welcome to Superfinger. Enter your credit card number now. Wait a minute. We don't have a credit card. Enter your credit card number now. I said I don't have a credit card. Do you take cash? Sure. Really? No. I'll give you a Superfinger. Jimmy, do you know what I do all day when you're at work? That's between you and Dr. Roz. I drive around town paying our bills in cash. I'm tired of living like this, and I'm sick of lugging this around. Don't you think it's time we got a credit card? What are you talking about? You got lots of those. None with my real name on them. Besides, McCool took them away. Like it's a crime to use someone else's credit card. Ah, you don't want one of them. What if someone steals it? Buys an Asian bride off the internet? You bad man! You promised better life! Jimmy, I want to live beyond our means, like normal people. All right, Cook. If you want a credit card so bad, I'll get you one. How the hell do you get a credit card? That's easy. You steal a lady's purse, you take her card. Bada boom, bada bing. I mean legitimately. I got nothing. Oh, for Christ's sake, you open a bank account. Fine, I'll dig up the nest egg and put it in a bank. You don't gotta yell. Cheech, get me a shovel. No problem. Ming, jam what cha. Get your own damn shovel. <laughs> In layman's terms, the annual percentage... Jeez, i never been in a bank for more than three and a half minutes. Boy, I miss those days. So, what do you think, sir? I think I could take this place in about two and a half. I meant in terms of interest. Hey, I'm here, ain't I? So did you want the low risk interest rate of 0.1% or did you want to lock it in at six? So I can have 0.1 or 6%. That's right. I'll take the six and you better have it by Friday. Sorry, old habits. Your deposit slip? My life savings for a piece of paper and they call me a gangster. Holy shit, I'm rich! Cookie! I got you a little something. Yes! A credit card! My favorite piece of plastic that doesn't vibrate. Listen up, everyone. I learned a valuable lesson at the bank today. We're richer than we think. What are you talking about? It's easy. You had the nest egg I dug up from the yard with the money I stashed under the furnace minus the cash I sent to that Nigerian prince, and it equals... We're rich! Jimmy, you gotta try this caviar and truffle sandwich. 
It's 600 bucks every time I take a bite. And it tastes just like chicken. Nah, I'm too full from the narwhal soup. We didn't spend too much yesterday, did we? Not at all. We bought mostly essentials. Ain't that right, Percy? What the hell? My credit card's declined. Last time someone declined me, I put their head in a vice. Run it again. Same thing. What's the problem? What's the problem? I'll tell you the problem. I got some moron up my ass asking what the freaking problem is. I don't believe this. Jimmy, give me some cash. Any chance we could run a tab? A super finger. Oh, I so want one of those. Mr. McDougal, your money is locked in for a period of no less than six months due to the high interest rate. I explain this all to you in great detail. Isn't there anything you can do? How about a loan? You know we're good for it. I'm sorry, Mrs. McDougal, but our records indicate that you recently went on an insane spending spree and are now at significant credit risk. Jimmy, what are we gonna do? What did he say, Cook? Holy crap! We're broke? So now that all my money's locked up, I need you to float me for the next six months. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but it's against witness protection rules. After we set you up with your first job, your financial well-being is your own concern. I would love to offer you a personal loan. That's great! But I'm afraid I'm on a strict budget. Not only do I support Horse, myself, and a village of Bushman orphans, but every remaining dollar goes to my poor aging mother and her insanely expensive Bengay addiction. So you can't do nothing for me? Au contraire, my friend. I can give you something even better than money. More money? No. A money tree? No. A money factory? No. What the hell is better than money? If you see happiness or religion, I'm out of here. A vigorous pep talk. <laughs> At times like this, a man has to reach deep down inside himself to find out what makes him a man. To find wherein lies the root of his true character. Let me read you a letter from one of my orphans. <clears throat> Jimmy? Horse? Back to the zoo with you, mister. All right, everyone, listen up. It looks like we're having a small cash flow problem. If someone ain't paying up, I say go for the knees. Nah, Gina. Your mother thinks we gotta live economical for a while. So we're gonna have to cut back on a few things. Teresa, that means no new clothes. You mean no new clothes today, right? Gina, no betting on long shots. But old glue factory in the fourth is looking real good. And Cheech, no more booze for a while. Well, I had a good run. Someone spot me a bullet, I'll pay you back. This is great! Now we can implement all the green initiatives I've been suggesting. It'll force us to reduce our carbon footprint. We have to buy smaller shoes now, too? Screw this! I know how to make money. Teresa, you will not have sex for money. Mom! This is so unfair! Now you kids listen to your mother. I gotta run. I'm teeing off in an hour. Jimmy, you march right down to that tourism bureau and get your job back. And you can forget about golf. No more golf! Cheech, I'm calling sloppy seconds on that bullet. Hey! Can't believe we have to ride the bus. We're turning into those people who bring bags to the store because they can't afford plastic. Mass transit is good for the environment and reduces CO2 emissions. This is so unfair. How could Daddy expect us to live on zero dollars a day? That's almost nothing. What's the matter with you two? You've been living off a of pop like forever. Me? I've been earning from myself since preschool. You want something in this life? You take it. Simple as that. She's right. Not about the stealing, of course, but there are things we can do to make our own money. Like collecting bottles for recycling. Really? Tell me more. Well, recycling saves resources, reduces smog... T -t 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 the money part. They pay for bottles so we can earn money and save the planet at the same time. Driver? Take me to where we save the planet! Sure! It's one stop past where we end world hunger. Stupid kid. Morning! Um, Jimmy? I, I don't think you... Sorry, can't talk. A lot of work to do. Gotta put the old nose in the grindstone, so... Oh, I'm sorry, Jimmy. But didn't you quit? What? Quit? What are you kidding? I love this job. 
I love whatever it is we uh, do here. I'm sorry, but you were very clear that you wanted to terminate your employment. Toby, that's not my ass. My ass is in color. Jimmy, as much as I'd like to give you your job back, we've already hired someone else. <laughs> so fire him. No can do. Last time I did that, his union was all over me. So, did Toby give you your job back? Yeah, Cheech. My first day back, and he gave me the day off. Well, looks like I gotta find some other job. Good thing you got the day off. You don't know what it's like out there, Jimmy. It's doggy -e dog. People killing each other to climb the corporate ladder. If you look the wrong way, somebody stabs you in the back. Hey, wait a minute. You know exactly what it's like out there. Yeah, I do. Who knows? Maybe I'll get one of them CEO jobs where I can screw up and ask for a bailout. I'm gonna get a job, too. Atta boy, Cheech. You think I got a good voice for phone sex? Yo, Ma, are we poor? No, Gina, we're not poor. We're just a little light right now. That's an actual thing? I thought it was something Deadbeat said when they don't want to pay. No, it's an actual thing. So, if you're not poor, why are you buying all this generic crap? Grumpy green giant, hamburger hindrance, room temperature pockets? Who buys this stuff? Immigrants and hobos, honey. Don't forget the elderly. No one's talking to you, toots. Teresa, just because it's called dumpster diving doesn't mean you actually have to dive. I know. You do. <laughs> How much did we make? Can you believe this is the only job we could get? I got 20 years experience running a family business, but no frickin' references. You know who'd have been a good reference? Don Gambini. He thought the world of you. Till you whacked him. Welcome to Blue Ball Ranch, boys. What we do here is extract bull semen for export. And how exactly do we do that? Same way you do at home. You mean in front of the window? With the neighbors watching? <laughs> oh! Ah, God, my arm is tired. Your arm? Thirty-two bucks, that's it? A broad who does the same job gets at least eighty bucks an hour. A hundred if she does it like Cheech. I still don't understand what your job is, Jimmy. I don't bring my work home, unless it gets on my shirt. Well, you gotta find something else. We're barely scraping by. We can't pay our bills, and now Cheech is eating dog food. It makes my coat shiny. Cook, this is temporary. We'll get through it. Have I ever let you down? Not until now you haven't. What's this? A pawn shop ticket. I hawked my engagement ring to buy groceries. You did what? Well, someone has to provide for this family, and right now that someone ain't you. I can't believe you sold it without talking to me. I was hungry. I couldn't think straight. I know things are bad, but look on the bright side. They can't possibly get worse. And they just got worse. Jesus, Jimmy, I'm blind. This is what we get for messing with them bulls. Are you kidding me? What? I saw candles. I thought romance was in the air. Along with a hint of lavender. That's Cheech, burning furniture to stay warm. And you can forget fooling around. The mortgage company's breathing down our necks. If we don't pay on time, we lose the house. Ten minutes of sweaty groping ain't gonna help. Can't hurt. What, so now you won't sleep with me because I got no money? I won't sleep with you because I got no ring. It'd be a sin. What about our vows? For richer and for poorer. I'm an Italian girl from Brooklyn. I cross my fingers during the poorer part. What about during the obey part? Yeah, I'm sleeping on the couch, ain't I? Hey, where'd you get all that money? Do I ask you about your business? Listen, kid. You think you could loan me a few bucks? I might be able to help you out. You're a lifesaver. At 18%? What? That's crazy! That's highway robbery! That's... That's my girl. If you don't mind my saying, Pop, you're stooping pretty low borrowing money off a kid. Tell me about it, but I don't know what else to do. You can act like a man! Well, I don't know what else to do. Get out there. Pull some jobs. 
There's banks, liquor stores, convenience stores, credit unions. And that's just robberies. You could be out there running numbers, pimping broad, selling protection, but instead you're sitting around like a schmuck. I don't even know you anymore. Jeez, maybe she's right. I got it. Ow! Oh, Jesus! Ah, Jimmy, I've been concerned about your descent into abject poverty. How are things? To be honest, which is hard for me around cops, not too good. You're not considering a return to a life of crime, are you? To be dishonest, which is way more up my alley, no, not at all. Take solace, Jimmy. Sweet Mother Canada stands at the bottom of the abyss, waiting to cradle you in the silky embrace of her social safety net. Say again, in American? Tomorrow, I want you to march down to the Service Canada office and apply for employment insurance. What the hell is that? It's just like unemployment insurance, except they put a positive spin on the name so the indigent don't feel like enormous blood-sucking leeches. Which, of course, they are not. Who sucked what? Trust me, Jimmy, your adopted nation has your back. For Canada, where you can get money for nothing, but the chicks aren't free! <laughs> That didn't work. Next. Go on, Petey. I'm not sure about this. I love experiments. I just don't want to be experimented on. If you don't, Petey, they'll do it on an innocent little animal. Okay, okay, I'll do it. Great. How'd it go? I feel surprisingly fine. At first I was scared, but after the probe, everything went dark That's and- That's great. Where do we get paid? Will there be any side effects from this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. It says here you quit your full-time job, which means you're ineligible for employment insurance. Who, me? I didn't quit. I quit. So you're telling me I don't even qualify for a handout? Next in line. Yeah, but... Next! All right. My wife don't respect me, my daughter thinks I'm a schmuck, and I'm gonna lose my house. Time to go back to work. And by work, I mean crime. Crime? Why didn't you think of that before? The answer was right in front of you. Sometimes I wonder about you, Jimmy. You know, I'm starting to think you care more about money than you do about saving the Earth. That's ridiculous. I totally care about the Earth. I also care about the Russian businessman who lives on the Earth and happens to need your kidney. My what? <gasps> Are you guys gonna take long? Of course not. Now we must take organs while fresh. <laughs> Hey, sleepyhead. <gasps> so, 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 so cold. Yeah, about that. I had a slight miscommunication with these guys. I thought they were just taking a kidney, but they wanted everything. Heart, lungs, even your doodad, which the one guy wanted for a necklace. What? But I couldn't let them do it. Oh, thank God. Petey, I may have been using your dumb infatuation with the Earth to get important things like money, and I'm sorry. I know, it's okay. In the end, you stuck up for your little brother, which warms my frozen heart. Your heart could have got me 10 grand, but I'm glad it's still inside you. Ah! You're freezing, you little freak! You're trying to kill me! Man, I've been keeping a lid on my criminal side so long, I feel rusty. Ah, that's better. I could rob that jewelry store or snatch that lady's purse Hell, I could do both. Rob that jewelry store and then carry the jewels home in the purse. Good thinking, Jimmy boy. Nah, if I'm gonna do this, gotta be something big. Bingo. Oh man, what the hell am I doing? What are you waiting for? Some idiot left the keys in a truck full of money. Don't do it, Jimmy. If you get caught, that will mean the end of your witness protection. I ain't getting caught. But if you do, I can no longer protect you. Like you need this Gavon to protect you. Jimmy, you would be endangering the lives of your family. 
McCool's right, Jimmy. Yeah, Pop, don't do it. It is a lot of money, though. Teresa! I'm just saying. What? You guys took all the good costumes. All right, I made up my mind. I'm pretty sure I can risk it. Jimmy, no! But I won't risk it for my family. I already put them through this once. I ain't gonna do it again. Hurry! For Canada! Hurry up and steal the truck. I need booze money. I just hallucinated loot people crawling all over you. Hey! Some idiot left the keys in this truck! Well, Jimmy, I guess it's back to jerking bulls. Remember the old days when we were short on cash? We'd just throw a junior good fella under a bus and fleece the transit company for the insurance. Oh, yeah. The good old days. Can I wash these down with a little scotch? Nope. Doctor's orders. I'm sorry for everything I put you through, Cook. I got you a little something. Oh, Jimmy. I love you. Jesus Christ. Give me a bottle. I'm hallucinating again. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy Falcone, former good fella currently freezing his ass off in Canada. Back in the old life, I never saw snow. And I don't mean drugs. I delegated that to Big Blow Bellucci. I'm talking real snow. Jimmy complained about the cold. I want you guys to make it summer around here. Thought it was calling for a huge snowstorm. Not that I'm complaining. It worked. From now on, it's gonna be summer all the time. Except Christmas. I like a white Christmas, but warm. Capiche? I love New York in November. I look dolphin! <laughs> Palm trees in New York? If global warming means the end of the world, so be it. Hey, Rocco, that counts as a break. Now I live in Regina, where global warming ain't hit yet. It snows all the freaking time here. I mean, it never stops! Don't worry, Jimmy. I got your back. Cheech, what the hell are you doing? There's too many snowflakes. I can't get them all. Tell them all I went down fighting. If you think I can even remember what summer feels like, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went in dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped that they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. What's her name? I don't know what you're talking about. What? <coughs> hey! Oh, you've been working out? Oh. Oh. Say hello to the devil when you meet him, you two time and grease ball. <coughs> I just took the last soda. What? Ah. Jimmy, Cookie, for God's sake, the entire neighborhood can hear this hullabaloo. Jimmy's cheating on me, McCool. Let me shoot him. Cookie, I surveil Jimmy regularly, and I can assure you he's doing nothing of the sort. Though he did glance at a copy of Jug Lover's Quarterly at the gas station. Shame, shame. The feds won't forward my subscription. Don't you see? Cookie's busy with the kids, you're busy with your job. When's the last time you two spent some quality time together? Does drunk angry sex at 3 a.m. count as quality? It barely even counts as sex. Heed my words, quality time is the key to a happy marriage. This, from a bachelor whose best friend is a fucking horse. Cook, why would you think I'm cheating on you? Because you snuck out last night. 
I would have chased you, but the ambient was kicking in. I swear on the soul of my mother, that wasn't me. Then who was it? I don't know, but we're gonna find out. Wanna grill the kids? I'll get the waterboard. No, we gotta catch them in the act. Like when Gina stole money from my wallet. She won't be doing that again. <laughs> You for this. Five bucks. Five bucks? You're getting screwed by the man. He's inside, nice and warm, and you're out here freezing your ass off for no money like a sucker. I like helping out. You're getting exploited. And so are all these other kids. <laughs> Sounds like you're developing a social conscience, Gina. Yeah, I don't know what that is. But I'll tell you, if anyone's doing any exploiting around here, it's me. <laughs> So it's Cheech sneaking around. Sorry I punched you in the face, Jimmy. I don't remember that. You were sleeping. That explains the loose tooth. Look at Cheech's clothes. In the old days, he only ever dressed up to pull a job. That knucklehead's gonna get us all in trouble. We better follow him. How are we supposed to do that if he's got the car? I know we're probably following Cheech on some depraved crime spree, but this is fun. This is what McCool was talking about. I got a bicycle seat up my ass. How exactly is this fun? Why didn't you just take Petey's bike? I thought this was Petey's bike. It's worse than we thought. Cheech is going into a crack den. Nah, nobody dresses up for a crack den. It's probably just a whorehouse. We gotta get Cheech out of there before he gets pinched. Let's do this nice and quiet. Ah, screw it. Let's just do it loud and mean. Yeah! Jimmy, what are you doing here? Me? What about you? You sneaking around for a dance class? Why didn't you just tell me? No offense, Jimmy, but I got a life outside of you, you know. This looks like fun. Jimmy, maybe ballroom dancing is just what we need to spend some quality time together. Why not? Beats riding bikes. May I have this dance? No, no, no. You cannot dance together. Your bodies are, how you say, incompatible. You are built like pickle barrel, and you are bag of oatmeal. Hey! You more suited to Juan Carlos. Nice to meet you, Juan Carlos. <laughs> oh, someone's a smooth talker. <laughs> you, what's his name? Name is Jimmy. I, Svetenka. Now dance me. Dance me long and hard. Please don't hurt me. So, Gina, what is this union of yours going to do for us? Suppose you hurt yourself shoveling, huh? Who looks after you? If your shovel breaks, who buys your new one? Our parents? They're the ones who sent you out in minus 20 weather in the first place. Them grown-ups are playing you for stooges. Yeah! I shoveled Mrs. Wilson's place, and she didn't pay! Sign up with the Brotherhood of Snow Shoveling Youth, and she'll definitely pay. They'll all pay. Who's with me? Union! 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 Jackets are mandatory for members. Fifty bucks a pop. What? Fifty bucks? Gina, are you serious about organized labor, or is this just a cash grab? Don't worry, Petey. The jacket money comes out of wages. You won't even notice. And if I hear any more of that scab talk, I'll cut your fucking eyes out. That was freaking amazing! It was like I was on that show, dancing with the people who used to be stars. With Juan Carlos, I was dancing on a cloud of tacos and vending machine cologne. McCool was right about us spending time together. Except we didn't really spend any time together, because our bodies are... How you say incompatible? Ah, she don't know what she's talking about. I'll prove it to you. Oh! Jesus, when's the last time we danced? Sorry. No problem. Let me think. Was it at a wedding? Ow! Oops. Nah, I got nabbed for that diamond ring robbery before our first dance, remember? What? Ah! My bad. Did you guys get electrocuted or something? Maybe oh. ballroom dancing ain't our thing. Well, if we can't dance together, there's no point doing it at all. I agree. Ballroom dancing is out. Good call. You look like a couple of seagulls fighting over a french fry. 
Jimmy. Ah! I need you ride me, Jimmy. Ride me right now. Svetanka, no. I'm married. Ride me to dance studio. I am late. Oh, you mean drive you. Sure. You know, every time you talk, it sounds like a come on. It's Svetanka's accent. You know, Jimmy, dancing with you last night made me so wet. Okay, you really should stop talking now. What? You are sweaty man. Come in for one dance. I don't think my wife would like that. You know you want to. We keep forbidden dance a secret. Come, Yemi. Again with the sexy talk. Jimmy? Care to tell me what you're doing here? <laughs> you're sneaking around behind my back, ain't ya? What are you flipping out for? I just came in for a quickie with Svetanka. Dance! Quickie dance! I thought we agreed ballroom dancing wasn't for us. Says the broad who's standing in a dance studio. I had to double cheech down here on Petey's bike. I popped in to use the washroom. You know what? Juan Carlos asked me to be his partner for the Golden Bollies. Well, you ain't touching no one else's Golden Bollies. It's a dance contest, you moron. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, I'm going to enter, too. I just need to find me a dance partner. That's right. I'm gonna win them golden balls with Swatanka here. Oh, Jimmy, it is so on. It couldn't be honor. Jimmy, can I get a ride home? Cookie broke Petey's bike. <laughs> Where do you think you're going? I got rehearsal. These tap shoes ain't gonna tap themselves. Well, I got rehearsal too, mister. Who's gonna stay home and watch Gina? Gina? She ain't even home. I ain't seen her in days. In that case, dibs on the car! I got no time for this. I gotta pick up sequins for my fancy pants. Wait, I just heard that. Catch you later, sucker! You come back here. Oh, oh man. All this dance is really... <sighs> whip me into shape. How you doing? I'm Gina. Business agent for Bossy Local One. My comrade here says he performed snow-related labor for you, and you didn't pay. What gifts? I didn't know he was doing it. Didn't know? What, are you blind? Legally, yes. Can you see good enough to fish a freaking 50 out of your purse? I'm on a fixed income. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things are tough all over. Now make with the money. In my day, we didn't... Well, your day's done, Stegosaurus. Give it a snow job, boys. You want it cleared? That's another 50 bucks. <laughs> Ow! Ouch! I don't know how those ice dances sew these sequins on. By using a double top stitch. How many times I gotta tell you? I can't focus. Cookie's so competitive about this dance contest, she's driving me crazy! You want me to pull a Tonya Harding, take out a knee? Say the word, she'll never walk again. That's my wife you're talking about! Besides, I'm way ahead of you. I slashed the tire so she can't get to rehearsal. Isn't that your car, Jimmy? Yeah, but it's also her car. That's why you're the boss, Jimmy. Always thinking. Now give me some change for the bus. Uh, I entered this contest to stick it to your father, but... He's really giving me a run for my money. You really want to win? You're gonna need an edge. Oh! Teresa Maria Falcone. This is just lewd, crass, and totally hot. Nice work. <laughs> this shouldn't bother me, because I grew up around Italians. But your dance partner is really greasy. He drinks olive oil. Says it keeps him young. He's actually 72. <laughs> oh, I ain't paying you jagoffs to stand around gawking. Get back to work. Gina, I've been elected shop steward, and as such must tell you, the bossy membership feels they're not getting a fair shake. That's crazy. I'm paying five bucks a house. It's market rate. But you're charging our customers 50. What happens to the other 45? You think them fancy jackets pay for themselves? Teresa bought them, and you still haven't paid her back. 
I got a, a health and retirement plan to pay for. Them things don't come cheap. You know what else don't come cheap? Us. On behalf of the members of Bossy Local One, I hereby declare a strike. Yay! Yay! Just as soon as Brother Oliver has his potty break. Whoa, look at the balls on this room. I suddenly feel inadequate. I, I feel nervous. You nervous, Juan Carlos? <laughs> Do you even speak English? <laughs> hey, Cook, geez, you look great. Just like one of them old-timey prostitutes. Aw, oh, Jimmy, thanks. Look at you. That costume makes me want to say, Olay. Jimmy, why you talk to old whore? <clears throat> oh, sorry. Old whore is kooky. I don't listen to her. I just wanted to wish you luck in the contest. And sorry I saw the heels off your dancing shoes. Thanks, babe. And I'm sorry I put horse laxative in your dinner. When'd you do that? I gotta go! <laughs> Face, Jimmy. Way to go, Cheech. Wait, what did he say? Yimmy, we won second place. Uh, hey, get your Chernobyl licking tongue out of my husband's mouth. Is that what I think it is? It's these pants. They make me look huge, and like I'm pointing up. Listen, slut anchor. You boinking my husband? Da. Oh, da means yes. What's the Ruski word for no? Yet. That's it. I haven't boinked her. Yet. You haven't boinked her yet? <laughs> well, have fun with your Russian floozy, you pig. What's wrong with you? You're gonna get me killed. Oh, you die for me. So romantic. No, I die because of you. You and I got no future, you understand? Forget future. Taste present. Ah. Yeah. Present tastes like vodka and lip gloss. Look, get it through your skull. I ain't interested. Svetenka, no believe you. All right, then, I'm gay. Ooh, it's hot. I bring man to bedroom for Yimmy. How about Juan Carlos? <laughs> I watch. Yeah, my answer to that is... <laughs> Would you guys just get out of here? I don't need this crap. We are not leaving until our demands are met. Fine, let's just settle this thing. You're willing to negotiate? Wow, I thought you'd just hire a bunch of scabs from the hobo jungle. Yeah, I tried that. Didn't turn out so good. It's cold. You want to have sex? So, there it is. I accounted for every day right down to the minute. You tell me, when could I have possibly slept with Svetanka? I know what I saw, Yimmy. Okay, fine. You got me. I've been riding it like a freaking tilt-a-whirl. I knew it! Wait a second. You'd never admit to something like that unless you're lying. And if you're lying, it means you didn't do it. Aw, oh, come here, you big lug. It's official. I will never understand women. <laughs> I vant you, Saint Svetanka, Gabadana Velianovich. Who was that? <gasps> Is that for me, you big sweetheart? Let's do that right now. Bring the bear. What are you doing out there, you wacko? No more wait. It's time for sexy. <laughs> I told you before, I don't fool around on my wife, ever. Maybe this changed your mind. Oh! Swatanka, for the last time, get out of here! <laughs> and take your two perky friends with you. 
If Cookie finds out this broad stalking me, she's gonna go ballistic! She'll kill Svetanka, I'll be next, and a couple of the kids might get clipped in the crossfire. It'll be a bloodbath! But surely she won't blame you. You're an innocent victim here. Clearly you've never been married. And don't call me a victim. It makes me sound like a candy ass. Jimmy, don't you see? You're keeping a secret from your wife. That's just as bad as cheating. Again, clearly, you've never been married. Cookie's your partner for life. Are you gonna start with that quality time crap again? Cause that's what got me into this shit show. I know this is highly implausible considering your background, but I think you should tell the truth. You think? All right, today's as good a day to die as any. But just to be safe, I'll take Svetanka into protective custody in the morning. For Canada, where most men would pay to be stalked by hot Russian girls. Where have you been? Seeing McCool. Don't worry, he'll corroborate. Look, you and me gotta talk. What's up? You know Swatanka. Yeah? What about her? She's been stalking me. Here we go. Oh boy, thanks for the crappy advice, McCool. Well, I can't say I blame her. You're not mad? Oh, I'm gonna slice her up later. But I ain't mad at you. You didn't do nothing. What was that? Whoa, this is just like that movie where the crazy stalker broad cooks the rabbit. Oh, God. You, you think she's in the house? Hell, I bet she's right behind us. Yeah. What? I'm making beans. Oh. Won't you budge on anything? Hey, hey, hey. I gave you a 2% wage increase over 10 years, didn't I? What's taking so long? Those kids are still on the picket line. Mary's got frostbite, all of us crying for his blankie, and I don't even know why I'm still there. You know what? Running a union is too much hassle. I'm out! Oh, no, you're not. You have a responsibility to those kids. Don't make me sick the labor board on you. Oh, uh, Petey, I already paid him off. Speaking of which... What's this? You and Teresa's cut of the money I made off the scam. Count me in! Um, I don't know. I don't think I can... And I just sold out. Hey, Petey broke his cherry! Is Fetanka can't have Yimmy? No one can. I never understood that about stalkers. You love the guy, so why kill him? It's stupid. So, I kill you first? Did I say stupid? Let me rephrase that. Svetanka, you're never gonna have me, so you might as well just kill us. <gasps> but before you do, can I have one last dance with my wife? Da, one more time you flop around like puppets, then I shoot you. <laughs> you look like circus bear box and kangaroo! <laughs> Now that's what I call dancing. Jimmy, you're a genius. Well, I got my moments. Yeah! Jimmy, look out! Gina, good job. Beat! Why'd you hit Cheech? Yeah, I was on a roll. Pop, you get the quick line, I'll chop her up. See, isn't this nice? We're doing stuff together. It's quality time, just like McCool said. Good news, Jimmy. Svetanka's visa has expired. We can deport. Oh, God, is she dead? Nah, but give us five minutes. Saskatchewan, la 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 How you doing? Actually, who cares? Shut up and let me talk. To me, crime is like any other business, except with more killing and less resumes. Yet both use an equal amount of paper clips. It don't matter if you're a banker or a good fella. You still gotta climb the corporate ladder. Jimmy, give me a ride to the track. I'm feeling lucky. Ah! And can I borrow your pants? 
Unless you're Cheech. He always had a different career philosophy. I'm telling you, Jimmy, the key to success is aiming for the middle. You mean like a gut shot? I mean your career. If you're on the bottom, you're always gonna get stepped on. Ain't that right, Mario? Did you have to wear cleats? I can't find my regular face stepping shoes. Anyhow, if you aim for the top, you got a long way to fall. Like that time I tried doing it on a Ferris wheel? That was a fall from Grace. <laughs> Remember Grace, Jimmy? With the cans? Later, I saw what Cheech meant. <laughs> How'd it go? See? Gambini'd still be alive if he just aimed a little lower in life. Or if Jimmy aimed for the wall instead of the window. You do understand, Mr. Middleman, that you're the reason I had to kill him. Understanding is for overachievers. Well, you aimed us to the middle of nowhere, you stinking mook! <laughs> you stupid! If you think I'd kill Gambini all over again to save Cheech's half-assed ass, <laughs> forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the Gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all went him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds will say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Only four weeks left of summer break. You can do this, Cookie. You can totally do this. Yo, Ma, we're out of pork rinds. So what? Get up off your butts and go buy some more. But we want to find out if this broad says yes to the dress. Y'all got anything more see-through? What a day. I'm running out of ways to look busy at work. Nice example, Jimmy. No wonder the kids laze around all day. Take it easy. Lazing around is what summer break is for. Now, how about some pork rinds for Daddy? We ate them all. You kids bum around all day on my sofa, watching my TV, eating my pork rinds, and you can't even bother to tell your mother to go and buy more? That's it! You're all getting summer jobs! Hey, where'd they go? You! Get your resume together! <laughs> I can't get a job. I've been fired from everyone I've ever had. Welcome to the meat pit. Before you order, here's a video of where your hamburger came from. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Would you care for fries with your massacre? The only place I'm fit to work is in a science lab, or perhaps some sort of theoretical think tank. So, if you'll excuse me. Not so fast. You're coming with me, Steve No Jobs. Congratulations, Petey. You had the best and only application in our summer hiring spree. Agnes, bring Nemo around. You're going to be pointing out all the exciting Regina landmarks as our summer tour bus barker. Go put all them acting classes to work, kid. Teresa took the acting classes. Don't you know me at all? Whoopee! Summer's officially begun! You're a tour buff, McCool? Ah, there's nothing like being regaled with Regina's tantalizing history in an open-top bus whilst the wind tickles your scalp. Welcome to showbiz, Petey! No stop, so here's a travel mug to pee in. <laughs> And if you look to your left, you'll see one of Regina's most, um, prestigious grain elevators. Imagine the grain that's been elevated here. And this one is... red. Sexy. And now we will end with a dip in Regina's historical municipal outdoor pool. <laughs> that's the whole tour? Two grain elevators in a swimming pool? Look, everyone, there's a jellyfish in the pool. No, that's a tampon. So, how was the job hunt? Oh, it was, uh, brutal. Yeah, yeah, we had to fill out applications in, like, triplication. <laughs> Do I smell fake butter topping? Are those popcorn crumbs? Aha! Movie tickets! You weren't out looking for jobs. You were out seeing Paranormal Activity 10, same shit, different house. It was a scary documentary. That wasn't real, Teresa. You're such a sucker. Oh, there's tons of suckers out there who want to connect with the spirit world. Uh, here we go. Back in my Madam Scamia days, I fleeced marks every which way from Sunday. I got an idea how we can make money off of that paranormal crap. Ew, no 
way I'm touching ghost poo. How are you not in summer school right now? I slip my homework in with Petey's. He does it without even noticing. Does anyone know how many pounds of grain one of these elevators can hold? Anyone? Would you keep it down? Thank you, sir. He was talking to you. Oh. I could say just about anything and it wouldn't matter. This park on your right is where a real Bigfoot was seen drunk. Snacking on a number of small dogs. And uh, this wheat field is known as Area 55 huh? because a UFO crashed here back in the 50s. The aliens were buried, and the next year, the crop was blue. Next up, we're heading to Regina's most deadly deciduous, otherwise known as the Murder Tree. Ooh, can we have a picnic there? Sure, but it might make a picnic of you. <gasps> Sorry, folks, this tour is full, but there will be another one tomorrow. Wowzers, Petey's really turned the tour around. People actually care what my know-it-all kid has to say? We can finally crack open the I Heart Regina shirts and wear them without people laughing at us. <laughs> it's like being attacked by a thousand velvet brushes! Mademoiselle Konya, at your service. Oh, thank God. It started yesterday, just after your pamphlet conveniently appeared in our mailbox. Please, help us. Silence! Spirits, announce yourselves. <laughs> ah! Ah! The spirit is really pissed about something you did in your past. Oh, God. Is this about the elderly man I ran over in college and blamed on my boyfriend who then committed suicide in prison? Uh, yes. And it'll be 300 bucks to bust this ghost. Double it. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant 600. Great news, everyone. This has all been a terrible dream. Regina tourism numbers are through the roof thanks to the initiative of one particular employee. Premier O'Shea has commissioned yours truly to announce a promotion for the aforementioned go-getter. I owe it all to the Executive Success Self-Awareness Rodeo at Lake Waskasu. Introducing the new staff supervisor of Regina Tourism, Petey McDougal! Huh? Petey? I knew I should have signed up for the self-esteem booster derby! Stupid Toby! Stupid, stupid, stupid! Now that you're running the office, Petey, you may want some help running the tours. Boo! Someone with a deep passion for Regina history and 96 vacation days saved up. Hint, hint. No, no! I'm still running the tours. I wouldn't want you exposing my lies. I mean, wasting your time. You might be my boss, but you're not the boss of me. <laughs> oh, look. It's time for me to avoid confrontation. <laughs> Agnes, you ready for another bus tour? Look at you, rising to the top of Regina tourism. For once, my pride in you outweighs my shame. Thanks, but the other employees seem a bit disgruntled. Could you smooth things over for me? Sure thing. And you know what's great about you being my boss? I don't have to call in sick no more. I can just shout from the couch. <laughs> You're funny. Thanks, Pop. Who's joking? Yo, Topes, I know my family taking over the business comes as a shock. Very perceptive, Percepticon. Give the kid a chance, will ya? You were once the guy on top. It's not his fault you blew it. Well, now that I'm not the boss anymore, I guess I can finally let my hair down. Schnapps, it's Peach. To Petey. Whatever. Look at all this money. I can finally buy myself a unicorn. Those things are extremely rare. You ain't buying nothing. We gotta keep Ma in the dark about this or she'll try and horn in. So keep your yap shut. I won't say nothing, as long as you cut me in. The only thing I'll be cutting is your tongue out. Oh, cookie. All right, fine, but you better pull your weight. I'm already carrying one useless moron on this caper. Yeah! 
Oh, Cookie! I said all right. What are you doing? Nothing. It's time for my bed. We was just talking about your best son, who's my boss I ever had. <laughs> Is this what you meant by getting Toby on my side? You're drunk! You're drunk! <laughs> <laughs> it smells like peaches, beans, and insubordination in here. Knock, knock. Who's there? How? <laughs> I'm writing you both up for drinking on the job. That's an Article 48. And breaking wind in front of a superior. That is a 22. We were just toasting to celebrate your promotion. Tell it to the naughty corner, McDougal. I ain't sitting in no naughty corner. And since when do we have a naughty corner? Shut it. Things better change around here or the staff will. <sighs> I... Agnes, I just article 26 in your purse. I'm sorry, Pop, but I had to make an example of someone. You humiliated me in front of everybody. Go to your room. You're grounded. You can't ground me. I'm your boss. At work, you are the boss. At home, I'm the boss. Oh, yeah? Well, just you wait till we get to work tomorrow. Yeah? You just wait till we get home from work tomorrow! Which will be around midnight, because you'll be working late. Boost. I'm already paying for myself. Ow. You can make scarier noises than that. You sound like Pop putting on his shoes. I'm stuck. Get me out of here. Go on. Bring back our little butterball. <laughs> Easy. You're going to pull my arm off. This is ruining my hair. <laughs> what the hell are you doing in here? I got scared out there alone. I hear this house is haunted. Just back out so we can start the scam. <sighs> I'm stuck. Uh, <laughs> I'm calling the psychic. Happy birthday, former subordinate. Jesus, that thing's more fireball than cake. How old are you? What's this? An office birthday party? Why wasn't I invited? I like cake. I like singing. You know what? Regina tourism includes everyone in birthday celebrations. Everyone or no one. I fucking hate that guy. I gotta live with him. That must be about as fun as a chapped ass on a long bike ride. Let me tell you something about Boss Man. He once created an app named Roxy to call his phone every day so people would think he had a girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Big Shot's too good for blow-up dolls. And get this, he still sleeps with plastic sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I stopped wetting the bed in my 20s. Oh, it gets better. Whenever he watches scary movies, he has to sleep in our bed. <laughs> All right, McDougal, I've had it with your attitude. You're fired! What? Oh, hey, Roxy. Now's not a good time. Can I call you back, babe? <laughs> Cook! We're out of pork rinds! So go to the store and get some! But I want to see if she says yes to the dress! The dad's a cheapo and I think he's about to have a stroke. Huh? There he goes. What a day. Someone pooped in my desk. Guess I owe Toby five bucks. Can you turn on the news, please? I get your feet off the couch. But my big fat Alaskan gypsy lumberjack wedding is on next. When you work all day, you can watch whatever moronic show you want. That's not fair! Petey, for Christ's sake, just hire your father back. 
Why would I hire a guy who thinks the photocopier is an ass camera? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go back even if you paid me. And by the way, I'm still getting paid. Of course you are. It's a Canadian government job. How do you drink this stuff? Where's Mademoiselle Kanya? I left her a message hours ago. I'm calling again. I told you we shouldn't have left our phones in the car. The last thing we need is you texting some meathead boy toy while we're working. Don't be stupid. Big Mike can't read. Ah, oh, I'm starving. Help! Get us out of here! Shut up! Why should he? Aside from losing a little weight, there's no plus side to being trapped in here. have so much character. If these walls could talk... Well, they're talking now, Dan! Happy! You hear that? <clears throat> you had your freaking phone the whole time? I was saving the battery for selfies. Quick, the battery's dying. Who are you calling? I'm calling Ma to come and get us. Crook, before you do anything, bring us a jumbo cheese and answer me. Agnes, I need us to pull together as a team, okay? There is no I in team. But you can spell me with part of it and Ta with the other part. Great news, Petey. Premier O'Shea wants the tours bumped up to 12 a day. What? I suppose this means a few Regina After Dark tours. Sounds positively tantalizing. For Canada! We're lusting over a moonlit grain elevator is about to become a thing! Is he kidding? You guys are really gonna have to pull up your socks. Wait! Where are you going? To the liquor store to pull up her socks, you dick! Jeez, kid, you look terrible. Don't start. I'm not in the mood. Look, I'm not saying this as a disgruntled former employee that you totally screwed over. I'm saying this as your pop. You gotta quit. I can't. I just can't. Sure you can. You walk into your own office, you drop a deuce on the desk, and you strut out like a man. What's so hot about- Because I lied! I made up fake Regina history, so the tour would be more exciting. You bullcrap the whole thing? I'm impressed. If my lies are exposed, I'll be a laughing stock. I'm just gonna have to run the tour for the rest of my life. You're being a little dramatic. I'm glad to see them acting lessons paid off. That was Teresa! <sighs> Goodbye Ivy League PhD scholarship, hello basement apartment and TV dinners in my dirty underwear. That reminds me, where's Cheech? Look. I'm proud of you, son. You rose to the top on lies, and you'll do anything to protect a scam. Just like a true falcon. But... <sighs> oh, poor kid. Seriously, though, where the hell's Cheech? Where the hell's everybody? Ah, oh, yes. The spirits are present, and they are... Stalling! Poor things don't know they crossed over. Probably died because they cut the wrong person out of a job. Can you get rid of them? Yes. But you must leave this place so I have a clear channel with the little shits. I mean spirits. You know, I should leave you three up there to rot for not cutting me in on this. It was them, Cook. I begged. I pleaded. But they wouldn't have you. Nice impression of Pop, you rat. I've been running spirit scams longer than all of you. Fine, sorry. Now get us out of here and we'll give you... 30%! 70! 50! Have a nice afterlife! Wait! Don't go! 80% we got a deal! Deal! Cheech! Get ready to cross over to the other side! <laughs> you hit Cheech in the face! Rumor has it... <gasps> Ooh, that's where the wheat pirates buried their treasure before sailing back to Alberta. What is it, Pop? Too bad the bus didn't start, huh, son? You're welcome. What are you talking about? I cut the starter cable so you wouldn't have to do the tour. No bus, no tour. Bingo, bango, you're off the hook. I'm driving the bus right now with a bunch of tourists. In fact, 
I just drove through a red light. Pop, you cut the brake line. Well, I cut something and would appreciate a thank you. I can't stop. I can't stop. <laughs> The shot Titanic. Gordon Life, I gotta hop it on that bed. That silo's full of candy. There's a bunch of zombies in that house. Ooh, zombies. You're headed right for the lake! It's okay, Pop. This is an amphibious bus. I don't know what that means. It's a bus and a boat. <laughs> yeah, right. Ah! Oh. You right, kid? Better than the bus. <laughs> Oh my god! Zombies! <sighs> so hungry. Best tour ever! I suppose the lesson here is that one should never lie to get ahead in a work situation. Nah, the lesson is you should always have a fool guy to blame in case you get caught. No, it's that you should never cut your mother out of a good scam. Would you guys shut up? We can't hear the TV. Pick a fucking dress already. They're all the same. This dress is so tight. Can you help me take it off? Oh! Wow. What the hell are we watching? Say yes. Oh, God, yes, yes to the dress. I promised myself I wouldn't cry. But it's so beautiful. La 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 how you doing? I'm Jimmy McDougal, formerly Jimmy Falcone. I used to be a big shot in the New York Mafia until I turned rat to keep from being whacked. It wasn't easy turning on my old friends, but them turning on me first made it a little easier. But the hardest thing I ever had to do was to tell my family we had to go into witness protection. So, guys, I got something important to say. You know how all my friends are trying to kill me? Yes, Daddy. It's all you ever talk about. You really shouldn't bring your work home with you. Well, I was thinking, to fix the problem, maybe we should leave town. What? I hate you! But I'm Blas Campo! We love it here! No freaking way! For once, I agree with your idiot uncle! No freaking way! <laughs> okay, let's move. And that's how we came to be living here in Vagina... Regina... Saskatchewan. But if you think it's going to keep this family from sticking together, forget about it. Let me tell you something about a friend of ours named Jimmy. I made the wise guy and the capo with the gambini. But when he found out that they'd be whacking Uncle Cheech, he'd take the boss, he threw him from the 19th floor suite. Wasn't much along till the mob all wants him dead. So Jimmy had no choice but to talk to all the feds. The feds would say they helped if they could use him as a pawn. So he ratted out his friends and moved to Saskatchewan. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Oh, forget about it. Okay, you, Elephant Man, your pony didn't come in, you're into me for 500. Dollface, you done all right, you got three big ones coming. This ain't been your week, Randy. Your no-show puts you in a hole for 10 large, and I want something now. This just ain't satisfying. But in for a penny, in for a pound. I see. No, thank you for calling Principal Pistagas. Do you know what your daughter did? I just got off with the principal. Got off with the principal. <laughs> this is serious. Gina's suspended for a week. Apparently, she's been selling candy to other kids, which is forbidden on school property. Look, I'm sure she has a good reason. It was probably just to make money. Hey, Ma, guess what? I was sent home early for good behavior. Oh, and how do you plan to explain the rest of the week, young lady? Busted. Damn straight you busted. Your principal called. No TV for a week. Pissed again! You done? Uh-huh. <sighs> Teresa, can we have a girl talk? Of course. I'm just glad
glad you're finally admitting that you're a girl. A guy starts one Twilight fan club and he's branded for life. I need help with a girl. That girl. <laughs> now, if she has bad taste too, you got it made. I can't even bring myself to talk to her. Aw, that's so sweet. Coming to your big sister for advice on love. All right, Petey. I'll have you banging her in no time. I was hoping to carry her books, but whatever works. First thing we need to do is get this girl to know who you are. But she can't know the real you or she'd set herself on fire. You've got to be strong, confident, sure of yourself. Okay, strong, confident, sure of myself. You think she'd like that? Petey, women don't like wimps. They want to be swept off their feet by a dominant, rock-hard son of an oil baron. What? Just go over there and be aggressive. She's yours for the taking. I'm strong, tough, alpha. Strong, tough, alpha. Hey! What? Uh, love me? Wow. Just, wow. That's it. My entire stash. You clean me out. No TV for a week, young lady. Never do something like this again. You've embarrassed the whole family. Come on, no one's really embarrassed. It's just a figment of speech. It's not that. How am I ever going to learn to be a no-good hustler if I ain't got no role models? <laughs> you got me, don't you? But you're all washed up. Washed up? You know, I still got a thing or two I can teach you. For example, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Whoa, whoa, this Canadian candy is primo stuff. You can't even get this in the States. Try it. First taste is free. It's all free. We just took it from you. My God, he's choking. Someone call an ambulance. What's 911 in Canadian? Holy mother of God, that is good. It's better than good. It's, what's a word that means better than good? Oh, what's all this racket about? A man can't hear his own pornography. Try this. It's Canadian candy. I thought Pam Anderson was Canadian candy. Maron, this stuff's better than anything we got back home. Fat Americans are paid through the nose for this stuff. Hold it, hold it. I'm getting an idea. It's coming. It's percolating. It's percolating. It's dripping. Dripping. Got it! We'll smuggle this stuff into the States and make a fortune. We'll take prohibition to a whole new level. All right, boys, you're off the hook. This is the thing I've been looking for. Something to get my blood flowing. What do you think, Cook? Mm. Oh. Passport. See, Jimmy? I told you bribing a border guard would be a snap. Some suspicious looking boxes, but there's nothing we can do. They're taped shut. <laughs> Great to be back in the old U.S. of A. Hey, everyone. I'm Captain Candy Pants. Come and get your candy in my pants. <laughs> yes, yes, keep going. Dig deeper. Scram, we're taking over. This is our turf now. But I always work here. I'll give you a free taffy pull. I got your taffy pull right here. <laughs> me now. You got a problem with that? Like taking candy from a baby. And then selling it to another baby. Here's your taste, boss. The hell you doing in fur coats? I told you to keep a low profile. You're gonna get us all pinched. It's in my wife's name. What did I just tell you? Not too bright, but the good little learners. You know, I haven't felt this alive since that day I got stabbed at the racetrack. Yeah, those were good times. Mister, I'd like four of everything. Looks good. Cheech, give me stuff. There you go, kid. The finest uncut cocoa solids Canada has to offer. Don't do them all at once. Thanks, but I'm not the one who needs advice. We're shutting you dirtbags down! Freeze! Food and Delicious Candy Administration! 
You're under arrest for supplying a weak-willed American populace with treats from a different and therefore inferior country. I was framed! I'll wait for you, Jimmy! I can't believe how much this thing vibrates. Take your time, Jimmy! What in God's name is wrong with you? Uh, hello. I try and I try and I try. I play the bad guy, I play the good guy. Every day, I wake up and I say, today's the day they'll get it. But do you? No, we don't know. What more do I have to do? I mean, really, you tell me. What more must I do for you to at long last get it? I don't know. I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Maybe if I can just understand what goes on in those warped little minds of yours. Why would you risk everything for just a few hundred dollars? Jimmy told me to! McCool, you wouldn't understand. Try me. I miss the action. I sit around the house being a dad. I go to work and have a job. What kind of life is that? But something like this, it gave me that adrenaline rush I used to get every day in the old life. Is that all? Well, why didn't you say so? Jimmy, if you want an adrenaline rush, I know just the thing. You gotta be shitting me. This, my friend, is action. Looks more like a bunch of dusty guys trying to put the moves on farm animals. On the surface, perhaps. But look deeper, Jimmy. Imagine it. You're on top of a bull, hanging on for dear life. Your blood is boiling in your veins, adrenaline flooding your brain. Your only thought, to best the beast before he takes your life. You don't hear the roar of the crowd flowering their adulation upon you. You can't hear them chanting. Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. No, they're chanting McCool. McCool, McCool. Jimmy, Jimmy. McCool, McCool. A hundred bucks says Jimmy, Jimmy. Another hundred says I kick your ass. Jimmy, I don't gamble for money. That's what gambling is. But if you insist on humiliating yourself, I will wager you for honor. Great. How much is that in American? The loser must, in a clear baritone, extending from the diaphragm, declare that the other is a better man than himself. You're on. I got one question. If a man does it to a girl sheep, that's not gay, right? I mean, the church is okay with that. I don't know. I'm not Catholic. Hello? What do you mean, hello? I've been trying to reach you for two days. I figured I'd be your one phone call. Cookie, calm down. McCool was my one phone call. They took my cell phone, and by the time I got it back, I forgot. What? Oh, you forgot. I already told the kids you were dead. Gina, your father's alive. Put his cigars back where you found him. I just can't catch a break. Hello? Is this the guy who said, and I quote, I never would have got caught for moving cheap loot like this. Well, you did get caught, and now I'm smoking all your cigars. And that's what you get for cutting me out of my own scam. Cookie, who was that? Jimmy, the whole family's going to hell in a handbasket because of you. Look, Cook, I'm sorry. I'll be home as soon as I can. But I'm at a rodeo, and I gotta prove to McCool that I'm a better man than myself. Could you just say you're at a strip joint, you fat f What did she say? The usual. I'm not sure about this, Teresa. Petey, really? This is how you have to dress if you want girls to notice you. It just feels a little busy. Listen, Dum Dum, I watch a show called The Way of the Pickup, and the guy who hosts it, Enigma, Says if you want to get the girls, you gotta dress like a schizo freak. It's called peacocking. Well, I refuse to follow the advice of some perverted charlatan. My dignity is too important. He's been with 482 different women. Should I add a top hat? Okay, Petey. Enigma says that 90% of becoming a successful pickup artist is learning to overcome your fear of rejection. And to do that, you need to get rejected a lot. Teresa, I could write a book about being rejected. In fact, I have. But it was rejected. You're gonna ask out every girl who walks past you, and you're gonna get rejected so many times, you'll never care about it again. But what if one of them accepts? Petey, if you're not gonna take this seriously... Back off, bitch! Those shoes are mine! <sighs> Excuse me, ma'am, would you like to go on a date? Hello there, miss. You look lovely today. Excuse me, but I, I couldn't help but notice. Oh, 
Teresa's right. This isn't so bad. Who cares if they don't like me? It's very freeing. I'm a bedwetter. Do you think I have pretty eyes? I masturbate all the time. All the time. Hey, you want to play with my boa? Why, yes, I would, young man. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. It's okay, honey. I saw you. It's very sexy. Ah, sh You sure you want to go through with this, McCool? I'm not gonna go easy on you. It's not my style. So I'll give you one last chance to back out. McCools don't back out, Jimmy. They thrust in. Okay, it's your funeral. I just got one question. What's with these freaking pants? Me? I like them. I enjoy the draft. Woo! <laughs> Yee-haw! Yee-haw! Yeah! 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 Woo! Yeah! <laughs> Yee-haw! <laughs> oh, ah, ah. Okay? I can't take it no more, Cheech. My face is cut, my muscles are torn, my ribs are cracked, and there's no skin left on my ass. You saying you're giving up? Jimmy, you can't. You'd have to tell McCool he's a better man. Plus, you can still win, because a bull riding's worth more points than all the other events combined. How's that for exposition? I don't know. Maybe I can pull it together for one more event. Watch this, Jimmy! No hands! <laughs> Straight McCool is the toughest, most manliest man in the whole wide world! McCool? Yes? I can't watch this. You are a better man than I. Thank you, Jimmy. It takes a big man to say that. And I think it's safe to say you found the action you were looking for. Oh, and one more thing. I found something I believe is yours. Hey, Jimmy. He just handed you your ass. I clob at him! Pops, Pops, what was the rodeo like, huh? What did that copper stupid face look like when he saw you're the biggest, baddest guy out there? Did you ride the horse like this? Huh? Or like this? <laughs> oh, well, you know, I pretty much just rode the horse the normal horse riding way. Wow. I started to think that maybe you'd lost all your moves, that you'd gone soft, you know? But you sure showed McCool, didn't you, Pops? Yeah, I sure did. Too bad you couldn't have been there to see it, because turns out I did so well, so perfected it, that they decided there will never have to be another rodeo ever again anywhere. Ever. <laughs> so much for walking me home, Petey. It's become such a dangerous neighborhood. You live between a church and a police station. Well, you never know. Well, I guess I should be heading off. No, no, stay. I'll make some cocoa. Um, I'm not sure this is appropriate. Well, why wouldn't it be appropriate? I suppose it wouldn't be if something untoward were to happen. Are you thinking about something untoward? No, 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 of course not. Well, good. Coco it is. Hot? Creamy? <gasps> Coco. You know, I like talking to you, Petey. People are so hung up with age, but really, it's just a number. But yours is so much higher than mine. You seem nervous, Petey. Are you nervous, Petey? I mean, I guess so. I know. It must be so hard to be a young man these days. All the rules are changing. The pressures, the contradictions, the confusion. Yeah, I'm pretty confused right about now. I know. And I want to hear all about it. There, there. 
there, there, there. <laughs> Quite the day you've had. You must be exhausted becoming a rodeo champion. Nah, it wasn't too bad. Kind of invigorating, actually. You're lying. Why do you say that? Because I found this. It's not mine. Oh, please. You didn't beat McCool. Odds are he mopped the floor with you. The man is practically built for horse wrangling. Or lassoing, or caressing the body of a middle-aged woman. Why is your upper lip sweating? It's not! And why'd you lie to me? You know I don't care if you win a stupid rodeo or not. It's not the rodeo. It's everything. I used to be someone. I used to be the big man in town. And now, I'm not even a man. I'm just some poor schnook who has to tell a Mountie he's a better man than me. It's demobilizing. You shut your mouth. You're Jimmy Falcone, and Jimmy Falcone's a fighter, not a quitter. I don't give a damn about a rodeo or losing it to some Mountie, but y you do. So suck it up and be the man I fell in love with. You're right. I'm gonna take that Mountie down. Hand me my ass. Jimmy, the other way. Ass backwards. That's where the expression comes from. Manure. Jimmy, what are you doing here? You already conceded. Yeah? Well, I'm unconceited. You know when I said you're a better man than me? Well, I'm taking it back. As you wish, but I do advise against it. There's a reason bull riding is worth more than half the points. It's one of the most dangerous sports in the world. So is cheerleading, but I still do it. Now, out of my way. Where the hell have you been? So unclean. Oh my god! No effing way! You did it! Congratulations! Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh, no more touching! I don't ever want to be touched again! Or smell mothballs! Or see a doily! Or eat a hard candy! Or see dentures come out! Or see weird stockings that go just below the knee! Or see breasts that go just below the knee! He just completely ignored me. That is so hot. Petey! Petey, wait up! All right, Bull. I've got a lot riding on this. So like I told my wife on our wedding night, give me eight seconds and I'll be on my way. Whoa! Ow! Oh! Okay, I asked nicely. Now we do it my way. Oh! Italian guy. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. Stay down, Jimmy! Don't get up, Daddy! You can't do it, Pop! Stop it, Pop! It's embarrassing! Jimmy, enough! <laughs> ah. Jimmy, stop! You're killing yourself! You have heart. Tremendous heart, I admit it, but no bet is worth this! It is to me. All right, if it will make you end this madness, fine. You're a better man than I, Jimmy McDougal. A better man than I. Tell me something I don't know. Jimmy, you did it! He said it! You won! Way to hang in there, Pops! It was amazing, Daddy! Jimmy, can you do it again? I was in the john. I began the day as a schnook. But now, I am a man! Me too. La 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 la
I'm Jimmy Falcone, alias McDougal. Before I moved to the not-so-great white north, I was a capo in the mob. Crime's been in my family for generations. It all started with my grandpa's, Giuseppe. He was a shoemaker in the old country. Real handsome devil. Anyway, one day the village Don asked him to make a pair of shoes. The Don believed shoe size was a reflection of his manhood. His size for manhood. He could have drove a big car or bought a frickin' boat or something, but the guy wanted big shoes. What are you gonna do? Personally, I'd have blamed the whole thing on gravity, but gravity wasn't invented back then, so Giuseppe had to skip town. By the time he got to the next village, he was met by fear and respect. Dante Respect and Luciano Fear had a family that needed some muscle. Giuseppe just whacked at dawn, so he seemed like a good fit. <laughs> All those years dealing with feet made him kinda homicidal, so Grandpops moved up the ranks pretty fast. Then, one day, he came to America. You mean he got run out of Italy? Point is, even though I'm living like a schmuck in Regina, I like to think he's looking down on me and smiling. And wondering why the hell you threw his family business down the crapper. You know what? Just forget!